The story begins with Chin Yu sleeping on a bed covered by a blue blanket, with only his legs exposed. He slept sweetly with his head on his pillow and pulled his blanket up to his chin. Soon he felt that he should have somehow slept tightly on that bed, and little horns appeared between the hairs on his head. Chin Yu half thought that his 130 centimeter legs were very poor, and added that for sure since he couldn't align them in bed. The sun was shining outside, its rays falling through the window into the room. And still dozing, I thought I'd been through it all. He continued that he ended up, but before he could finish thinking about it, someone called out to him and he woke up. And then he finished the thought with words in this world of riders. They started shouting at him whether he had seen the time and why he was still in bed. In front of him stood Yu Li, a third grade high school student and a second ranked martial artist. She angrily asked about whether he needed his aunt's personal invitation. Chin Yu gazed at her bust and thought, now that's a real horse. Yu Li became very angry at him, and angrily shouted his name very loudly. A fight broke out in the room. You could hear yelling about someone thinking she was the devil's child, that she had gone in to consider why those flowers were so red, that someone was being screamed at to die. At this time, a beautiful young woman was wielding a knife in the kitchen, chopping vegetables quickly. It was Yu Na, her 34 years old, a former wild horse of the emperor, a knight of the centurion order, a fourth-ranked fighter. She was enjoying a perfect day. While waiting for the food to cool down, Yu Na turned to Yu Li, asking her to be more affectionate. While having breakfast, Yu Na reminded her daughter that Qin Yu was her brother after all. But she sharply told her that he was not her brother. Qin Yu joined them for breakfast and at that moment, Yu Li said that he was their enemy. Yu Na asked her not to say that again. Yu Na said that as soon as Yu Li eats, she can go to her extra classes. She agreed with her mom. Qin Yu, while eating breakfast, thought about the fact that Yu Li was right. According to the memories of the first owner, he is not only their enemy, but he was also the murderer of Yu Na's husband. Chin Yu recalled that eleven years ago the Devil's Gate had opened. Through it all the demons came out. The whole empire united to drive out the demons. Everyone armed themselves and went into battle against the devils. But though the devil retreated in the end, he left behind descendants. Chin Yu said as he ate. He is sixteen years old, a son of a devil, a first-rank warrior. He stood up from the table he had just been eating at and abruptly twisted his head around. With his horn he caught the glass on purpose and it naturally shattered. Yu Li angrily shouted that the Empire shouldn't have welcomed them with open arms. He only glanced at her. Yu Li couldn't calm down and continued that everyone should die. Yu Na tried to comfort her, and Qin Yu silently left the room. The sun was shining brightly outside the house, and the leaves on the trees were rustling quietly. It was warm, and Qin Yu sat at home, alone in his room, and pondered over what was said to him. He understood that Yu Li's aggression was revenge for killing his father, but he couldn't understand why she called him a bastard. He spent the whole of the next time he was in the room thinking about all of this. And he came to the following conclusion, that whatever hatred people had for him, no one tried to deal with him directly. That's what he thought as he lay in bed. He closed his eyes with his hands and asked himself what he should do next. It was this time that interested him. Chin Yu thought that maybe some system should awaken. He was still lying on the bed with his hands covering his eyes. His palm still covered his eyes and part of his face the same way, but something was happening to his horn at that moment. He opened his eyes. They were red. He tried to figure out what was going on. This was the activation of the system. This really surprised Chin Yu and he could barely recover. An imaginary scoreboard appeared in front of him, informing him that the host could improve his skills using his opponent's energy. There were no opponents at the moment. After reading the information, he said it was awesome and asked the coach if that was his ability. As he left the room, he smiled wryly. Wondering to himself, so why was he doing housekeeping? The cause of death in his past life was a fight that led to hypoxia. Chin Yu looked around in the room, surprised that no one was home. Only one Aunt Yu Na who was in the kitchen was left. He was glad that only Aunt Yu Na was there because if Yu Li was at home, she would definitely beat him up. Auntie would just be reprimanded. He would sneak up on his auntie unnoticed to try to scare her and try out the system at the same time. Chin Yu raised both his hands up, made some furious sounds so that Aunt Yu Na swung the knife she was wielding in the kitchen. In the next second, that big knife of Aunt Yu Ning was under the chin on Chin Yu's neck, and he looked at her with fright. She addressed him by name and asked him again what he was doing there at that moment. Auntie Yu Na smiled at him and told him that his help was not needed there. Therefore, he should go and have a good rest. He saw the messages of extreme hatred for the host again. Energy 103. Further, the energy was climbing higher. So this was what the system was all about, he thought. Now he realized that Aunt Yu hated him so much. She was ready to stab him to death so that the knife was covered in blood. He looked at his auntie Yu Nu and was covered in fine cold sweat at that moment. She stood holding a large knife in her hand, facing him. His energy was slowly running out. 
Cold sweat was pouring off him. He was very angry and trying to pull himself together. Next, Chin Yu quickly ran to his room as far away from Aunt Yu Know as possible. He stood outside the door and realized the fact that she was insane and completely out of it. It was such a high energy reading. Could it be because of him? The devil wanted to figure out who she was. Maybe a two-faced person, a madwoman, or a wolf in sheep's clothing. It wasn't that important, though. Who he was. Once again, he saw the scoreboard. Name Chin Yu. Physical strength, 12. Mental strength, 5. Accumulated energy, 1,315. And according to Yu Li, was an average punching bag. Was pleased that he had gotten so much. He wanted to add his physical strength points. Three editions later, the system was booting up. He was upset because he had miscalculated. Going from level 22 to level 23 cost a thousand points, and the cost of improvement increased with each level. Now he wondered where he could get so much energy, and he thought he should show up in front of his aunt more often. In a cold sweat, he thought it was a good idea if he decided to die. He felt scared. Chin Yu was still in his room under the stairs, and realized that he had nothing else to do but retreat. Yu Li was in her room and undressed, sitting on the bed, taking off her stockings. Suddenly, Chin Yu entered the room and called Yu Li by name, saying that he had come to talk to her. Yu Li was startled by the sudden intrusion and barely had time to cover herself with her clothes. He was greatly embarrassed and turned purple when he saw the half-naked Yu Li in front of him. Then he smiled cheerfully and said she had nothing to hide from him at the moment. For in fact he had everything she had as well. Now a blush appeared on her face. She continued to cover her breasts with her clothes. Yu Li quickly turned away and pulled up her shirt, and he went on about how his pecs weren't like hers, and showed his muscles. Chin Yu looked at the half-naked girl who was quickly trying to get dressed. After that, the already clothed Yu Li abruptly and very forcefully struck Chin Yu with the words for him to die. She beat him and beat him with all her fierce anger. He used her anger and consumed it. When she stopped hitting him, he lightly touched his busted lip. Blood was pouring from it. He began to tease her that it was too little. Maybe she hadn't eaten enough porridge. But in fact, he was pleased with himself, because it was not for nothing that he was waiting at the door for her to change. Yu Li shouted in rage that he was finished because he was laughing at her and his used anger indicators were only increasing. She was beating him as hard as she could and at that point kicked him in the face. She asked him if he was ready to die. Chin Yu was lying on the floor, bleeding and Yu Li was screaming, finishing him off that this would help him so much. He noticed that 500 units of accumulated anger had been consumed. Lying battered on the floor, he was pleased, thinking that was power. The door to the room in front of his face opened slightly. He was still lying there with blood on his face. Auntie Yuna called him by name. Chin Yu, covered in cold sweat, raised his tired and lined eyes at her. And the aunt said it was getting late. What on earth was he doing in her daughter's room? The index indicated extreme hatred for the host. Energy that 14. All he had time to notice was a message of extreme hatred for the host. Energy 444. While his aunt stared in the doorway at him in her daughter's bedroom. Chin Yu gathered his strength, raised himself up and said that he would probably still go to his room. As he left, he took one more look at the half-dressed Yu Li and said goodnight to her and her aunt. He thought to himself that he should get out of there as soon as possible. Yu Li stayed in the room with her mother and asked her if Chin Yu wanted to joke on her like that. Farther away, a frightening shadow could be seen. Then a hand with a large and sharp knife appeared. The little angry boy holding a knife in one hand was stabbing himself in the stomach with it. Chin Yu decided that this was the easiest thing to do. Taking out a knife, he stabbed several blows to his abdomen. With this, the stats became higher. Physical strength 24, mental strength 15, and war level 11. The next day, Chin Yu came to school following Yu Li and thought that the little bird woke up early in the morning and here she was with a backpack behind her back walking. His inner demon came to life in the middle of the school and ran in search of power. He stopped in the middle of the corridor, thinking that this was great, because this was the epicenter of the energy. People were walking past him. Chin Yun hoped that his cultivated loyal companions would not suppress their feelings, and gathering the crowd, he began to tell them to look this way. Raising his middle fingers up for those around him, he noticed their anger and noticed that this was not a school, but an actual energy field. Yuli couldn't understand what was wrong with him. After all, he didn't like going to school before, but here he was going with interest. Chin Yu met his comrade in the corridor of the school and started talking to him about something. But he glared at the girl across from him, who was standing with her back to him. A friend had called him. A girl in a miniskirt noticed him and asked him about finally coming to school. It was Zhao Yujan, his class teacher, a middle school goddess teacher. She asked how he was feeling, as she had heard that he was a little sick. He only opened his mouth to say something back to her, but mumbled only I don't. Saw the energy readings. Hostility. Energy increased by 55. Thought maybe she was faking it. 
he looked around carefully and saw the offended boys. Now he realized that it was a matter of male jealousy, and then he thought of doing something interesting just for himself, to test the level of energy he received. Chin Yu suddenly accelerated and his face hit the class teacher's chest precisely. He said, lying on her chest, that he was still not really well. She said excitedly that she would take him to the infirmary. Chin Yu mumbled that he didn't want to, without taking his eyes off her. She, on the other hand, was curious as to why he didn't want to go. All around, the other boys were barely restraining themselves from getting angry. Next, he whispered in her ear that the thing was that he was withering away from love. She angrily said, you. His screen showed increased hostility. Energy increased by 55. His little demon was pleased at the anger of those around him. After all, it had worked for him. All around, the devils were very upset and angry as they were provoked by Chin Yu. Toward the end of the school day, the school finally heard the cherished phrase that classes were over. Chin Yu sat on the bench waiting for the rogue Yu Li. As it turned out, the school wasn't too bad, as he had gathered a lot of energy today. Suddenly, he heard shouts of brothers, grab him. The other disciples ran out from behind the bushes, armed with bats, and attacked Chin Yu. The guys running up to Chin Yu sitting on the bench were dragging some kind of sack with them. Chin Yu quickly threw a small brown bag over his head. The one shouted who turned off the lights for him. It was heard that he was being held, and he thought that the shaving pairs had come to him by themselves. In the bushes behind the bench, someone was watching the fight. As Chin Yu was being beaten up by the other disciples, with a bag over his head he began to fight back, scattering his attackers around. He hit one of the attackers with his head. Watching it all from the side was Chin Yu's sister, whose name was Yu Li. She saw Chin Yu being beaten from afar. He was wearing a big sack on his head. Yu Li started to get angry and shouted that except for her, and ran to them to help him in any way. That's when Yu Li finally finished her sentence by shouting that no one could hit him. She ran up to the guys who were beating up Chin Yu. He couldn't understand what it was at first. Then he heard her voice and recognized her. Chin Yu thought that she had decided to help him after all. But among the young men, she was clearly the weaker one. She was thrown aside with her face on the ground. He also, encouraged by Yu Li's support, punched one of the attackers with his fist. Then he kicked the other one and managed to deal with anyone who wanted to beat him up. After that, Chin Yu removed the bag from his head and looked at the result of his work. The attackers were lying on the ground with blood on their faces. A little further away, he saw Yu Li who was trying to move away from the blow and get up. He thought that it was really her. She's beating him, but she doesn't let others do it. He thought fearfully about making sure his aunt didn't find out what had happened. She would kill him. Chin Yu walked up to Bi Li and saw that she was very swollen. He asked her who had beaten her so badly and he would take revenge on her. Just then, he heard Yu Li make at least some sound and exhaled in relief. He noticed that the energy from the hostility only replenished by five. She didn't seem to hate him as much as he thought she did. After all, not only had she saved him, but there was less hate coming from her than from her classmates. Chin Yu sighed heavily as he looked at the battered Yu Li. She was feeling very bad at that moment. The guy loaded Yu Li on his back and slowly walked home with the valuable burden. Thought she was a strange girl. In the days that followed, his life became much calmer. At lunch, Yuna saw Yu Li's abrasions, but she said that she was a little distracted in training. This answer surprised Chin Yu. He almost choked. He also worked hard at school to get extra energy points. He provoked the class teacher, made other students angry. He did his best to stir up hatred among the other guys, framing the girls by asking if she was the one this morning. Even provoked the director by saying that his hair loss ointment was delivered, and he kindly took it away. No need to thank him. Running away from the angry crowd, he smiled. What could be better than an evening jog? After all, he was full of energy. He was replenishing his energy from the hostility of others. One day, the North County High School League was held at his school and the high school competitors were competing. He came to class, but he didn't see anyone and couldn't understand why there was no class. Suddenly, Chin Yu heard some strange sounds coming from the school. He wondered what the other students were doing in the empty school. There was no one around. Onward he went, smiling slightly, for he believed they were all at his disposal now. Chin Yu went towards the sounds coming from the room. He was curious as to what was going on there. The angry crowd shouted, supporting Yu Li, go ahead, make him now, Bai Xiao is doomed. Chin Yu tried to understand why they were only supporting Yu Li. Suddenly the girl cried out and fell down, struck down by Bai Xiao. He didn't see exactly who had fallen, and thought he should see who the unfortunate person was. And then he realized that it was Yu Li who had fallen and not someone else. He rushed over to the girl. A girl in a military outfit and with a sword on her back fell to the floor. Chin Yu lifted the girl in his arms and shouted her name. She only sighed in response. Bai Xiao stood joyful in the middle of the ring victorious, and shouted the devil out when he saw Chin Yu. Yu Li's rival began to mock her, saying that she was weak, 
and she was the daughter of a centurion knight. He then approached the teacher to declare him henceforth as the third-class representative of the high school. Chin Yu couldn't calm down, for he wanted to know what had happened, and how strong woman Yu Li had gotten such a serious injury from a peer. In the morning, a voice was heard in the house addressing my mom and saying they were leaving. Chin Yu looked around at how the girl was dressed and questioned if today was a special day. He looked at her clothes and added something that apparently she wanted to raise a fuss at school. The girl answered him sharply to keep his nose out of her business, for he seemed to be the only one in the whole school who didn't know anything. It hurt him what she was talking about. She said to forget it, and that she would join the night soon. The boy wondered if the aunt had set an age limit, or why she had suddenly given her consent. The school was in the middle of the final round of choosing a class representative. The class teacher told them not to forget that friendship comes first, and competition comes second. And the tournament among North County High School students began at the school at this time. In the final duel for the title of representative of her class, the heiress to the head knight, a sophomore at the high school. Her opponent is the heir of White Dog Company, a second grade student of Bai Xiao Middle School. The class teacher wished them good luck. Yu Li swung her sword and shouted beware with anger. She was very angry with him. Her sword Bai Xiao quickly intercepted with his shield to prevent it from hitting his body. Yu Li skillfully wielded her sword, forcing Bai Xiao to retreat and defend himself. He hissed the word devil. Next, he leveled off and began to gather his strength for the next strike. Standing straight at full height and raising his spear, he shouted out magic armor. A second later, Yu Li was making an attack on Bai Xiao, but he was already protected by the magic armor. She gathered herself to strike again, drew back her sword arm to swing. Bai Xiao at this moment realized that this was the perfect opportunity to attack his opponent. She was still taking a swing with her hand, clenching her teeth hard to make the blow harder. Bai Xiao asked Yu Li if she wanted to surpass the future knight in his speed. She wielded her sword skillfully, making some combination she knew to strike. Lifting her foot, Yu Li said that he hoped in vain that she would lose in this battle. Bai Xiao with his side vision saw the raised leg and said that one was cheating, and she gave him a mounted knight's crowning blow that not everyone could do. Bai Xiao fell to the ground with a loud noise and a pile of dust, struck down by Yu Li. The rays brightly illuminated the ring, where Yu Li, the class teacher, and Bai Xiao, who had been struck down by a girl, were. At this moment, Bai Xiao was greatly startled, lying on the floor. Yu Li placed her sword in front of his face and said that the winner had been decided. That's right, Bai Xiao. The class teacher started talking about what she was announcing. At this time, Yu Li was slinging her sword behind her back. The class teacher continued her winning phrase and took Yu Li's hand. And behind them, Bai Xiao started to get up from the floor. Yu Li only managed to hear the edge of her ear a haughty chuckle ha from Bai Xiao who was behind her. And the next moment he had already stabbed her in the back with his sword. She fell to the front of the ring, wounded. Bai Xiao happily and gloatingly shouted to everyone that he had just won. The door to the room was ajar, through which a strip of light fell on the stairs. A white cat was sitting on the stairs. In the room, Yu Na and the class teacher were talking, saying that she wanted to take Bai Xiao out of the fight, but the competition would take place the day after tomorrow. She went on to say that she was not allowed to do that, and the only thing she could do was to transfer Yu Li to another school of her choice. She's very sorry, but got the answer that Yu Li should win this fight. They began to argue amongst themselves, calling each other by their names, Teacher Zhao, and in response, Centurion. Yu Na lit a cigarette and said that this glorious title was forbidden to be uttered ten years ago, and she went back to talking about her daughter. Yu Na believed that Teacher Zhao had done her best to help Yu Li. Teacher Zhao couldn't understand what she was talking about. It was all the school's fault. Ten years ago, if it wasn't for Yu Ning's regiment fighting on the battlefield, would they have been able to count on peaceful skies? She went on to say that those times are long gone, but this child remembers everything. She promised that if the girl took the position of class representative, she would do everything she could to make that girl part of the order. But Yu Li was now sitting with a broken leg and grieving, and Yu Na continued to teach her Zhao that her daughter had lost. Yu Na thanked teacher Zhao for telling her everything. It was already quite late and she should go home. She said, Okay, Centurion. Teacher Zhao left the room and was already walking towards the exit of the house. Suddenly, someone called her by name. It was Qin Yu who told her that he would escort her to the exit. She was a little surprised at the offer, but she agreed. Walking down the stairs, she thanked Qin Yu for seeing her off. The white cat ran away from under her feet. Qin Yu asked Teacher Zhao if Bai Xiao would now be the representative of the seniors. Teacher Zhao looked at him upset and said that if no one defeated him before tomorrow noon, he would become the representative. She asked why he was asking to which she heard that it was just because he was worried about his comrades. He remembered how Yu Li had been struck with the sword, but mouthed that he hoped it would help their classes unite. Teacher Zhao had no way of knowing what it was that Qin Yu was talking about at this moment. The next day in the second grade of school, Bai Xiao laughed loudly and thought that everyone could stare at him all they wanted. 
After the competition takes place, the top universities will want to get their hands on him. Bai Xiao dreamed, drooling with happiness, that the day would come and he would be at the very top and have everything he wished for. He doesn't care about his classmates, after all, they were never his competitors. Suddenly, the door to the classroom opened abruptly from a fist strike. Chin Yu immediately began to receive an energy charge from the hostility of the people around him. He started to speak. Let me ask you something. Chin Yu, smiling, continued that our air is in place. Hearing this, Bai Xiao sat frightened at his desk. He pounded his fists on the table with anger, shouting what a damn loser. Meanwhile, Chin Yu's energy from hostility increased by 120. He calmly replied that he could call him whatever he wanted. Everyone looked at Chin Yu, but he only replenished his energy reserves. All around, no one could figure out what this pepper was. Chin Yu smilingly narrated that he had come to challenge him to accept. Bai Xiao was surprised. Him. A level 1 and 1. A level 2 and 7 warrior. He looked at his opponent with mockery. But with a snide smile on his face, he said it was a deal. Chin Yu abruptly grabbed the one by his hair. He pulled Bai Xiao by his hair towards the tabletop so sharply that he bumped. And Chin Yu noticed that this was a formal agreement, meaning Bai Xiao should bow to him politely. And walking away from him, Chin Yu added that that one was a good dog, so obedient. Immediately, his energy was replenished with hostility once again. There were many disciples gathered at the training ground. Teacher Zhao asked what was wrong with Chin Yu. How could he with level 1 and 1 challenge a disciple with level 2 and 7? After all, he might die. She was told that those had already entered the ring. She's upset because once the fighters are in the ring, she has no right to stop them. And she can only help when the situation is dire. There were two men standing in the ring. They regarded each other with anger. Bai Xiao started to say that it would be too late to fall on his knees later and beg his dad to help. Bai Xiao continued to throw insulting phrases at his opponent. He said that he didn't even have a combat uniform because he couldn't afford it and that he was a beggar. He pointed his finger at Chin Yu. Chin Yu replied that the latter was too talkative and not worthy of being treated respectfully with all the rules of decency. After saying that, the energy from the hostility rose several times. Bai Xiao laughed, saying that one with their tongue and pointed his spear towards Chin Yu's side. Bai Xiao continued to threaten Chin Yu must remember that from the moment he hits him, he... He held his spear in front of Chin Yu and continued that the latter would be a corpse at the end of the battle. Bai Xiao pondered, smirking before fighting. He had both attacking and defense skills. He had stood up to even Yu Li, and this sucker would do it in no time. Chin Yu started attacking, and the first thing he did was break his opponent's spear. Bai Xiao was astonished and didn't understand what had happened. Next, he delivered a fist strike to the chest of the frightened Bai Xiao. Chin Yu struck again, but it was to the jaw and one of his teeth embedded into his arm. The crowd around was shocked. They didn't think that Chin Yu was so strong. Teacher Zhao thought with horror that this wasn't the end. Chin Yu struck his opponent hard with his fist and said to that next life, was more human. He finished the phrase and punched Bai Xiao with all his might many times, striking with his fist. Teacher Zhao watched Chin Yu beating up his opponent. She was worried about the latter. After another series of blows, she whispered enough. She pulled up beside the ring and shouted that Chin Yu had won so he would stop. But he continued to punch and kick his opponent. Until Teacher Zhao started shouting for him to stop after all, or his aunt and sister would be court-martialed. She came up to the ring and put her hand on his shoulder. And then she said she'd handle it. Chin Yu roughly grabbed the teacher's arm and twisted it, removing it from her shoulder. She cried out in pain. He was about to swing to hit her with his fist. But he recognized her by asking her if it was Teacher Zhao. She said to make him believe her. Chin Yu turned his head back, looking at the Bai Xiao lying on the floor who had been badly beaten by him, and said, Well, Teacher Zhao smiled and said that she thanked him for his trust. She ordered the beaten man to be taken quickly to the infirmary. And in her mind, she was already thinking that the white dogs would definitely want to deal with it. And considering who Chin Yu was, it wouldn't be easy. Teacher Zhao looked around slyly, and then she thought of a cunning combination. Since that's the case, why not? She approached Chin Yu and offered to be his senior class representative. He couldn't believe what he heard. Next, the story continues in the principal's office. Teacher Zhao stood in front of the headmaster and two others from the school's leadership sitting at the table. Director Li, Tiger, asked Xiao Zhao what she thought of Chin Yu's action. She replied that she thought he was right, because it was student Bai, who was the first to break the rules and attack Yu Li. Deputy Director Lu, dear, sitting with his arms crossed, inquired about whether this circumstance gave him the right to beat up a person. Deputy Director Yang, Baran, smoked a cigarette and raised his hands so that his tattoos were visible, and asked what the problem was. Why Bai Xiao himself can beat someone up and he can't? What a double standard. The principal reminded that it should not be forgotten that Qin Yu is a special student, 
and if he is found innocent, it could cause a public outcry. The teacher indicated that she had a suggestion for this. However, while doing so, she hit her hand with stripped marks. She voiced a suggestion. Chin Yu should become the representative of the senior classes. Vice Principal Yang flared up when he saw the injured arm. Xiao Zhao is an excellent warrior, he asked. Maybe she was threatened by other teachers. Xiao Zhao explained how she got those marks. When she tried to stop him, he clung to her arm so hard that it left a mark. How on earth could an ordinary warrior overcome her defenses? Teacher Zhao continued that the one was special, and he was well worthy of representing the school. The principal and his two deputies thought about what they had said. The deputy director taking a drag on his cigar advised making it official before the dogs caused further problems. The matter is closed. She smiled, turned sideways to them, and added that defeating Bai Xiao couldn't be undone. They would still come and wish them good luck. The principal sat still in his chair, wondering if she was using them for her own purposes. Further events also took place in the principal's office a few hours later. In the principal's office, Yu Li and her mother and Bai Xiao and her father were sitting opposite each other on the sofas. In front of them sat the principal and his two deputies. He greeted the people who had come. The director started the conversation saying that the reason he had gathered everyone together was known to them, so he decided to get straight to the point. Yuli sat together with her mom on the couch and watched quietly across the room. She was laughing quietly. Across from them sat Bai Xiao, badly beaten with his arm and leg in a cast. Next to him sat his father, who had a bird on his shoulder. Yuli barely held back a smile and asked Bai Xiao why Qin Yu was the one who got him so beaten up. The latter hissed something similar to that little bastard since he couldn't speak normally. The president of White Dogs indicated that he respected Yu Ni's contribution on the battlefield and that his son wanted to ask for forgiveness so they would ask for anything but to give that asshole to him. Yuna smiled back at him, saying that she couldn't give him back because she needed him for herself. He looked intently at her, continuing that she didn't want to settle, and he's only treating her with respect because of her old exploits on the battlefield. She listened silently to what the director of White Dogs was saying and looked at him. Both the president and his bird stared at her intently and threateningly adding that if they didn't give him Chin Yu willingly, they would hire a man to kill him. And Ego wondered how it was that ten years ago, she had only managed to survive alone, and her order had become merely nominal. Yu Li was very angry at his words, and she blurted out back to him what he was saying, uncle. She clenched her fingers into fists with force, and the next moment she was already yelling for the old man to shut his mouth. She was very angry. But suddenly she felt Jamaica's hand on her shoulder. She stopped her from saying anything further. Next. Yuna entered the conversation. She asked President Bai if she could see his words as a direct threat to her family. The director and his two deputies sat covered in cold sweat from the tension in the office. President Bai started to object to Yu Yang that Qin Yu was a demon and not a member of her family. But she stood there without moving. Looks like she really cares for him, thought one of the deputy directors sipping a cigarette. He voiced that everyone knows what the Knights of the Order are, for they can kill even the king himself if their relatives are in danger. He thought about it further but he didn't dare to voice it out. Especially Raymond, the deputy head of the Storm Knights. He also heard that he had heard that they were with Yuna in the past. Yuna turned to President Bai muttered that since he had no other alternative, they went. The one was yelling at her to remember that the one wasn't so simple. And he wasn't a member of her family. He was the devil. One day he's gonna go crazy and kill them. She tapped her heels confidently and quickly on the floor as she left the principal's office. On her way out of the office, she added that she had made a bet with a man. They were betting on whether he would awaken his true nature and become a monster. Deputy director with a cigar in his mouth compliment her that this man bet that he would go crazy. She smiled and said no, that was her bet. But if it happened, she'd work it out. Chin Yun sneezed heavily. He wondered what kind of asshole was bringing him up right now. His teacher sent him there without saying a word and he didn't even give his consent to participate. The buses travel on a road that lies near a beautiful forest. But there was boredom on the bus. Chin Yu looked through the window of a passing bus. There, he saw a girl. She was rubbing her sword. Turning her head, she saw Chin Yu looking at her. Turning her head to the side, she excitedly blurted out. He laughed to himself, after all, not long ago. Many people thought he was a bull. After all, one of his horns was broken. Though he calls himself a child of war. He looked at her again, and thought he should tease her a little now. He put his hand to the window and began to say that he was a demon hiding his true power for a long time to destroy everyone one day. The girl sat in a cold sweat of fear. He continued, Long live the demon race, and started laughing. The girl was already hysterical, tears pouring from her eyes. 
She ran through the interior of the bus shouting, Stop! There are demons following us. They want to destroy us. All the passengers and the driver were very surprised and frightened. Chaos ensued on the bus. It swayed and lurched past a passing building. Chin Yu was receiving energy charges from the hostility from the neighboring bus at this time and was pleased with himself. He felt good. It would be good to harvest this kind of energy every time. After a while of riding the bus, the bus slowed down and stopped, reaching its destination. Chin Yu got off the bus and stopped, surprised by what he saw. There were a lot of people around him, balloons with flags floating in the sky, and some voice urged to take their seats as the competition would soon begin. He walked amongst the cheering crowd, noticing that there were quite a few people around. Chin Yu was satisfied, considering around he liked it there. To himself, he resembled a handsome boy picking wild onions in his wicker basket. He was amused and interested. He noticed his energy replenishing from the hostility again, but this energy was familiar. Chin Yu saw Aunt Yu Nu in the distance, and Yu Li was standing with her. The two of them smiled and showed him class, cheering him on. It looked like Auntie had recognized what Bai Xiao had done and decided to show him kindness. He should repay such a gift properly. Chin Yu stood in the middle of the crowd, with his aunt and Yu Li looking at him, his hands in his pockets. Just as suddenly, he extended his right hand and showed them his middle finger. Yu Li immediately flared up. She angrily shrieked that Chin Yu was an asshole, and his energy once again increased with hostility. He walked among the others and thought to keep everyone angry, for then he would be made stronger. There was a ring in the middle of the stadium, where the announcer began telling the ladies and gentlemen that the high school league competition had officially begun. He went on to say that these competitions are supported by 123 companies and honorable orders of knighthoods. 24 regiments of knights had arrived as honorary observers. All the observers stared sternly at the ring without taking their eyes off the ring. They stood up and began chanting their slogans of valor and justice. The next regiment shouted harmony loudly. The crowd was buzzing furiously in anticipation of the start of the competition. Chin Yu stood among the others and looked at them skeptically. The host continued that humans and werewolves are united, because together they are a force, and their strength is in their unity. He hoped that the participants would lead the country to a brilliant future. He asked for more applause and welcomed the best students. Chin Yu stood on the podium with his arms crossed and thought that someone else would come after all. This was a great opportunity to earn more energy. An electronic scoreboard appeared in the middle of the stadium. The announcer announced that each participant would have five minutes to introduce themselves. All the contestants lined up for the performance, and the host reminded them that the entire continent would be watching. Participants came out, saluted, and said something about themselves and their plans for life. One said that he wanted to become famous, while the other said that the human race was invincible and everyone would witness it. Chin Yu wondered how he should introduce himself. In front of him, the participant had already introduced himself and walked off the stage. Now it was his turn. He walked leisurely to the middle of the stage. There were lanterns shining all around. He was still thinking about what to say that would be memorable to everyone. Then he smiled. He had come up with an unforgettable greeting. Chin Yu called out to everyone with a note of arrogance and superiority, saying, Hey scum, look here. At this moment, he stretched his two hands forward and held out his middle finger at the same time. Everyone stared at him in shock, and Yu Li even covered her face with her hands, whispering something that she didn't know him. The principal asked Teacher Zhao if Chin Yu was overreacting. She hesitated for a moment and replied that she might be. And then the fox host appeared, talking about the announcement of the rules of the competition. He said that this time 1,358 contestants would go to Nova Island for a whole week. They will be provided with food for the first three days. But beyond that, they have to find their own provisions on their own. All participants stood around an interactive map of the island. But beforehand, tens of thousands of monsters were released onto the island. The embittered beasts were from the Demon Gate. They are true killing machines. They were divided into levels of strength from 1 to 5. The monsters have energy balls implanted in their bodies. The more orbs, the higher the final rating will be. After this round, the top 100 students will be selected for the final battle in the arena. The presenter further went on to talk about the achievement of their scientists. These are balloons that can not only show the participants live, but also save their lives in critical moments. One of the participants was looking at her hand, which had a belt on it, and the presenter continued that using this miracle of technology, the participant will be disqualified, and the belts show the state of the moment. Chin Yu also looked at his hand with interest, and listened further about how once the participant's condition deteriorated, the ball would carry them to the arena, but that would also be a disqualification. The lead man and another thug assistant said to get ready to depart and drove off. This bulky man stood at the side of the ring, raised his arm up and started using a special technique. He raised his hands in the air and said, turn back time. All the participants were covered by a magic ring. 
Chin Yu stood with his head up in the crowd of similar participants and watched with interest to see what was going on. And at some point the bulky man spread his arms out and down, the clouds parted, and the magic ring disappeared. There were no more contestants in the arena. Chin Yu found himself on a padded seat inside the flying airplane and looked out the porthole. The airplane flew between the clouds, and Chin Yu thought that this was a very unusual technique, however. Suddenly he was distracted by the shouts of a demon. He started looking around for the demon. He wanted to see where that demon was. Then he realized it was him they were talking about. The other members pounced on Chin Yu, shouting that the demon was not alive. Chin Yu only thought that it shouldn't be like this. Everyone except the contestants remained in the arena. Yu Li turned to her mom as to whether she thought that jerk Chin Yu would be able to get a good position. Her mom answered her that there was no way. Yu Li didn't stop asking why, because he was strong enough, even stronger than her. Yu Na replied that no matter how strong he was, his efforts were in vain because this region had been fighting demons for thousands of years. She went on to say that the other players would not allow him to take a good position in this environment. Yu Li was very upset, because Chin Yu was not like all demons. She watched Chin Yu struggling with the other contestants in the airplane and silently wished him luck. In the commotion, a cry could be heard on the airplanes to kill the demon, to sacrifice him to their fallen warriors. And Chin Yu had already started to reply that he was joking. No, he was not a demon. But one of the competitors wouldn't stop. Shouting not to listen to Chin Yu, he should be killed first and get rid of the competitor. Chin Yu only thought that he was hitting him like a punching bag. They continued to fight. Chin Yu replied to him saying that in such a case, he should not be blamed and would get punched in the face. Chin Yu was alone against the crowd and that bold participant who was lashing out at him the most. But he easily threw punches and was still able to bring his opponent down. That participant fell down, beaten up after asking what Chin Yu called him. Chin Yu addressed the defeated man so that he wouldn't misunderstand him. He wasn't talking about him. He continued, talking about... At this point he had already put his backpack on his back, and everyone else froze waiting to see who he would name. And smiling full mouth finally finished the phrase. Everyone here and with his hand pointed a finger down. Everyone around them erupted and prepared to fight with renewed vigor. At this time, Chin Yu was receiving a charge of extreme hatred. Chin Yu smilingly put his hand forward, palm facing his opponents. He gathered his fingers into a fist, gathered his strength, and told the assholes to move their flippers. Unexpectedly, he punched a wall in the airplane with his fist, and saying that the rest of the participants were Kapusha, jumped out of the airplane down. Behind him, several participants were blown away by the wind. Everyone in the arena gasped when they saw what was happening to the contestants. They shouted, and oh my god, and look over there. One of the participants falling from the airplane shouted help. At that moment the balloon was triggered and a beeping sound was heard. The rescue balloon was triggered automatically. The contestant will be disqualified. Chin Yu opened his parachute and descended down slowly. Around him several participants were falling down, and when the balloon disqualified someone, he called this balloon quite useful. It also replenished his energy from hostility. The other contestants, terrified on the airplane, screamed what a cheap trick. What school is he from? Who is this? What's going on? Does this guy think he can act like this seriously? Meanwhile, Chin Yu was landing in an arena somewhere in the mountainous area. He got soft on the ground and went after the landing. Seeing this, people had different reactions to Chin Yu. Yu Li rejoiced at Chin Yu's successful landing, while the gentleman behind her deeply regretted that he didn't crash. That man behind Yu Li covered his face with his hands and grieved loudly, shouting the elite of their school. He sat there, and then he started making sounds and shrieked that it couldn't be, and after that he fell down loudly in the arena. Yuli looked at him in surprise. She looked at him and heard shouting, Look, that guy is done. Look who's got his eye on him. Yuli was startled to see something. Could it really be a third-level ghost bull? Chin Yu was heading to the nearest warehouse, which was 27 kilometers away. But there was someone following him from behind. Yuli had seen him earlier. It was that third-level ghost bull. He looked around and noticed it was a nasty place. An island or something. By this time, the bull had gotten a pretty good look at him and decided that he would be his target. He sprang up, steam billowing from his nostrils, and he was very frightening. And Chin Yu decided that all roads lead to Rome, so he went ahead. Yu Li couldn't contain herself. She was already yelling that that one was an idiot and should be careful. While Chin Yu was deciding where he should go, there were already two furious bulls running after him. There were a lot of birds in the sky above him, and they were making a lot of noises, but he didn't pay any attention to it. Suddenly he was attacked by insects, she started scratching almost her entire body, asking herself where on earth there were so many insects coming from. Chin Yu turned around and saw two slaughtered bulls lying on the ground with their horns broken. He couldn't help but chuckle. 
he wondered if they wanted to come to him by themselves or what. He still appreciated that such a cool game. In the assembly hall was the principal and his two deputies. One of them said to the principal, this guy wasn't that strong, was he? The principal asked if they had any ideas. And they settled on the fact that this guy was raised by Yu Na, a hero of the Night Order. No wonder he was so strong. He should have been tested first. At this time, Chin Yu started to eat something, opening his mouth wide to take a bigger bite at once. The deputy director wanted to ask Xiao Zhao in which course she was taught how to deal with such monsters, but she said that she was not in any course. The second deputy director, a little surprised, exclaimed that the bastard had learned how to deal with such monsters by himself. Chin Yu took a big bite out of the energy balls. The two vice principals and Zhao's teacher were completely shocked and simultaneously shouted what? They further continued to be amazed and outraged at the same time. After all, he was eating energy balls. After all, it was a key item to pass the mission. Had he forgotten the rules? Teacher Zhao said that he should remember, and the second vice principal said that he would rather eat them than the monsters. Chin Yu took out the energy balls and ate them, completely forgetting about the rules. He didn't eat meat since he didn't know how to cook anyway. Next, he vigorously stood up and said it was time to start scoring points. He carried the cubs away from the bear woman to get energy points from hostility. Next, he ripped the fangs out of a bobcat. It growled under a tree at him and got energized by the hostility as well. In the hawk's nest squeezed his egg. The hawk hovered over it and really wanted to tear it apart, still hating it as much as the other animals. The arena watched his actions. There were various phrases flying in his direction, that this asshole didn't think about his life, and that it was too much. He put on some kind of dragon costume and managed to taunt a snake. He also got energy. Next he was walking through a meadow and saw a puppy. He thought he had never seen one before. Wearing a dragon costume on his head and with a snake on his belt, he darted toward the pup. Grabbing the tips of his ears, he yelled out that he had caught it. But how disappointed he was, for under his ears someone began to yip. It was a girl. He was scared out of his wits, even covered in sweat. The three sister doggies were talking to each other. The second sister, Doggy Yo-Yo, asked her two sisters what was wrong with the fifth sister. She was trapped. They had seen Chin Yu catch their sister and were now glaring menacingly at the unseen beast. Their sister saw them and started calling for help. They each armed themselves with their own weapons and told the one not to be afraid, for they were coming to help. Chin Yu saw all of this and began to quickly make excuses, raising his hands. After all, it was not what they thought. There had been a misunderstanding. Fifth sister Doggy Coco sat and cried bitterly. Fourth sister Dog Lan Lan smiled and praised Chin Yu, saying that he wasn't bad. Third sister Doggy Kiki was upset and only wished him dead. Second sister Doggy Yo, Yo was very serious and said that boy they understand. They went on to say that it was a misunderstanding. They stood in front of him, and he was sitting there covered in blood and holding his head. He asked why they had done that to him, because if it wasn't for his brother, he would have died already. He said he was a human being too, and they were really dogs. Chin Yu asked what now, and the doggy sisters recognized him as the guy they saw back then, and decided that it was more interesting to see him live. And the sisters began to look at him, for it was he. And Chin Yu was interested in one question, which one of them could cook. He took off the snake and crocodile, the doggy sisters were very surprised. And then the girls became animated, each saying something and a little... I know how, she too, and can I? One of the sisters was skillfully slicing the meat with a large knife. The other was marinating meat and he watched contentedly. The next sister was building a fire to roast it all. And he happily remarked that it was like watching a cooking show. And another sister was cooking food in a frying pan, stirring. He thought that now he felt as if he would open the lid and the food would be made of gold because they were trying so hard. And now the dish with the animal's head was cooked. It was still very hot. Shit, he thought when he saw the dish. He looked at the dish and couldn't understand how the preparation could be right and the result like this. After all, this crocodile was angrier than when he had killed it. The girls surrounded him and asked him why he was not eating. But he said that it was no longer a meal, but suicide. The girls laughingly said that guests are fed first, let him treat himself. Chin Yu replied that those were so polite to him, and there were so many of them, and the crocodile was small, and there was not much to eat, and he was used to being hungry, so he wanted to give them a treat. They flatly shouted and waved their hands that no, because it was all for him. The girls wanted to force him to eat the food they had prepared. He offered the older ones first. They said they protested that they wanted him to eat. Suddenly, during their pleas, they heard a voice telling the bastard to let her sisters go. A sword flew in the air. It spun hard at first, and then abruptly fell beside Chin Yu. He missed the cauldron with the prepared food and asked in surprise that another one. Another sister dog ran at him. As she ran, her sword swirled near her again. She grabbed the sword by the hilt at the last moment in front of Chin Yu. He turned his head in the direction of what was happening, sweating a little from the exertion. 
Sister Doggy swung around to strike, but then her sister called out to her, and Chin Yu exclaimed in surprise that it was her. The sisters stood and watched as there another sister swung her sword at Chin Yu. He grabbed the hair of his sister, whom he caught in the meadow, and very quickly he put her out in front of him and she started scouting her sis. But her sister had already swung and the sword flew over her head, slicing off a few strands of hair. The sword sister was angry, the sister in the hands of the smiling Chin Yu was sobbing. The sister who came last called him a devil, and at that time the energy was replenished again by the girl's hostility. The girl dog that was in Chin Yu's hand started pounding him and screaming at him to let her go, because he was a fierce demon. He threw her with force, so hard that she flew far away and hit, whimpering. Her sisters began to examine her and see if she was all right. Chin Yu continued to mock them. Now he was saying that they have such big ears that hang down the sides. Surely they are not dachshunds. The last sister pointed her sword at him and said that he was a dachshund, a one-horned devil. She wouldn't stand for it, because he was just bullying them. She took the handle with her other hand and stretched it out. And angry with that unusual long-handled sword, she shouted that she would tear his horns off. Trying to dodge the blow, he asked if she was serious, since her sisters had tried to poison him. The girl dogs behind her sister grouped up and prepared to attack. Chin Yu was a little scared and asked them what kind of gang warfare this was. They had him pinned against a tree, pointing their weapons. He wondered if he wasn't the protagonist. He turned to face the tree, hugging the trunk and asked what they had decided to pounce on, and further shouted at them to come on. He plucked a tree from the root and started swinging it around, knocking down the sister doggies. The sister who came last thought that he had a lot of strength in him, and the sisters couldn't handle him. She had to do it herself, so she started yelling, Watch out! She waved her miracle sword diligently and angrily, and he set her up with a tree trunk. And then he noticed that her tool could be used instead of a pencil sharpener. He started running fast on the ground. He had to find a way to stop her. He ran with the sharpened tree trunk in his hands toward his rival. But she thrust the sword right into the inside of the tree trunk. And then something happened that she couldn't have guessed. The sword was in the shaft. As she started to pull it out, she realized the worst had happened. The sword was stuck. Chin Yu began to gloat that did she really think of pulling her hair with him. He further added that he was going to cut off the talk. He was going to pull her hair. And swinging the trunk of the tree, he flung it far away, and with it flew the girl. He wished her well. She stood up, holding her nose with her hand and mumbled, Combat technique, ground impact. And with all her strength, she threw him to the ground. He landed and yelped because he hadn't been warned about this. She was very angry at this point. She split the trunk into small, sharp pieces and launched them at Chin Yu. Next, she was gathering her strength again, bringing all her skills to bear. Yu Li told Yu Nei that this girl has the third level. Yu Na calmly looked at what was happening and said that this kind of performance in a girl of her age was rare, and that she had a great future. Yu Li watched and commented on what she saw. The soil flew apart at a great speed, leaving great damage. These clods of earth were like bullets. Chin Yu tiredly struggled with the little dog girl, but stood on the ground without falling down. She noted to herself that he had managed to stay on the ground, maybe because he was a child of the devil. The girl continued to wonder if he was really invulnerable. She had heard that demons on the other side were immune to such attacks, but not him. Chin Yu, barely standing, realized that this girl's strength was indeed deadly. He shouldn't let her attack him again. She tried to attack him again, but he figured he could answer her in close combat. And the girl realized he couldn't be allowed to get any closer. The girl's foot hit the ground hard, and the ground began to crumble. She sneezed hard and began to spin around. Chin Yu began to use his power that could lift the ground. He looked at her very intently. His feet were barely off the ground. He was able to move over these piles of earth by jumping them very high. The girl was furious and yelled, come over. And once again, she directed her new power at him. She was aiming straight for his head. Chin Yu kicked his foot into the tree trunk. The tree snapped, absorbed the power and began to burn. She realized that he was trying to distract her by using the smoke to engage her in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The girl was a dog, immune to smoke, so he miscalculated. She angrily thought she would get him. With a swing of her sword, she hooked something. It wasn't right away that she realized what it was. Suddenly, her throat was squeezed by someone's hand, and she heard that she had lost. There were passions in the arena. Those watching the contest were outraged. He had played foul. He had awakened a third-ranked player. A foul should be called for such dirty tricks. Yu Li cheerfully supported Chin Yu with the words, keep it up, while Yu Na pondered whether the Chin Yu she knows is really so strong. Mom looked at her daughter and realized that he had plenty of opportunities to do something about Yu Li, but he didn't do anything about it. Why, maybe it was just like Yu Li said. Yu Na was looking at the screen where the guy was sitting with the dog girls by the fire. She started to ask herself one question. This guy is not like other demons. Chin Yu showed the sister of the dog girls a cauldron of boiled crocodile and pronounced that it was proof that they wanted to kill him. She smiled and mumbled that she didn't think his devilish digestive system could handle it. Besides, looks are deceiving. 
he angrily said deceptively. Then he wanted to watch her eat it. This startled them. The sister knew it was inedible and needed to turn his attention to something else. Suddenly she happily remembered where she could get something edible. But he was stern. He fed the girl a cooked meal. Naturally she got poisoned and foaming from her mouth, the other girls shouted sister. And Chin Yu regretted rushing over. After all, she wanted to tell him where to eat. On the third day there was a conversation near the helicopter that he would have gone back that day still, but it didn't work out. The other replied that there was nothing wrong with distributing food a day later. The guy suggested eating kebabs, as cold they are not as tasty. Suddenly something came like a hurricane, and the kebab disappeared from his hands. Suddenly one of the workers on the branch saw a girl doggy with a kebab in her mouth. She said they had good food here. She was still sitting on the branch. The workers appealed to her that there was no need to snatch food. There was plenty of it. But someone slapped the girl worker on the back and she lost consciousness. Chin Yu said fine, and one of the sisters said eat up, it's all ours and the workers unconsciously lay on the ground. Near the fire sat Chin Yu and his sisters. That one said beef, chicken, fish, lamb, and Sister Doggy was happy to be gifted chicken legs. The other sisters shouted that it was all for them. The sisters were talking amongst themselves. She was right. There was plenty of food. And thanks to her sister, they had even managed to get some wings. Next came a voice that said, Stop talking and pass the garlic. She stared at something in horror and called out loudly to her sister. On the ground lay a certificate in the name of Clara from the third distribution group. Chin Yu and her sister only interjected what? Next thing you know, she's yelling, hurry up and grab the food and get out of here before anyone finds out. The girls have to hurry so they don't get caught in the ring. Some kind of milieu could be seen behind, the sister telling the others that they were late. Chin Yu said calmly to those, don't worry, and perhaps they would get more than what they wanted. The participants were running to the resource point. One of them asked the captain if it was useless to run there. The captain replied that due to an accident, 90% of the participants had jumped off halfway and were unable to get provisions. He did not think they would let everyone starve to death. According to the commander's assumption, the dots will disappear when all the contestants have taken what's theirs. It's true. They were looking at the supply crates. The commander turned, said hello, and said they were here for provisions. The man in an employee suit replied, welcome and glad you made it. The commander said they were down to four, and he thanked them for their work. The employee asked what rank of supplies they wanted, and there was a horn sticking out from under his cap. The participants couldn't understand what he was talking about. Rank of supplies. The worker opened a box of different kinds of food and said that it was only natural, because the competition was at a high level. You can't leave them to their fate. Hungry participants shouted out that they wanted a D-set. The worker informed them that there were four sets of rank three, and they needed to prepare four balls of energy for payment. The commander was very much amazed at the payment. The employee asked, Of course, didn't you know that only cheese in a mousetrap is free? The commander began to smile and said he was told about humanity. Aren't they the main ones in this competition? The employee cheerfully told me that, of course, because Kit A was free of charge. He held water and bars in his hands. The commander couldn't go for it. After all, four balls was all they had earned these days. The sisters sitting behind the boxes waited for Chin Yu. A sister asked if he would be able to exchange the energy balls for a resource. The other replied that they only had to believe. The employee holding the bottle thought he already had them on the hook. Take it. And he went on to say that he didn't think there would be any takers so quickly. The commander flared up. What was it the employee was talking about, wanting pity? The worker went black, saying he hadn't said anything. The commander couldn't calm down. He asked me to tell him exactly what was going on, because he would pay. The employee holding his head up said, okay. It's not like he's some kind of tyrant. Dropping the bottle in the bars, he started to say that he had heard it in passing, and they should promise not to tell anyone and he further asked ominously if they knew why resources were divided into ranks. The participants stood with their mouths open with interest, because it is a hidden bonus item. Those who spend energy orbs to buy it will be rewarded at the end with double the amount of energy orbs at the end of the game. Overseeing it all were five sisters and two bonded workers. The dog girls exclaimed joyfully that everything had worked out. Four participants excitedly asked if it was true. The employee replied that of course, of course. That one has a nice face and he won't tell others. Those in confusion interjected to the others. The employee pointed a finger in the direction, and they were approached by a group of participants who were shouting, hurry up, quickly get the supplies. The commander took out four balls and traded them for a set of Ds. He heard back that this was a wise decision. The girls watched as one group left their friend and the second group approached. The dog girl said that it worked, cool, and Chin Yu is not short of brains. The real workers sat on the ground, naked and with their hands bound and gags in their mouths. In the arena, arguments started after what they had seen. They shouted at the director that he was to blame for what had happened. How Chin Yu had pulled it off and tied up the workers. What kind of demon was this? Even with dogs, 
It was cheating. It was against the rules. Let him return the balls. The director smiled. Is this kind of thing against the rules? It's called resource sharing. The deputy director appealed to the others that they should be pleased that someone had thought of such an ingenious way of doing things, and whether they wanted the balloons back. Other principals were very upset. They asked what their students should do. The second deputy director said about the reason for this showdown. After all, if there had been a violation of the rules, it would have been reported already. And since there was no violation, it means that everything is fine. The crowd in the arena was saying, Damn demon, can't anyone stop him? The worker's hand folded the four balls of energy into a casket. Chin Yu, wearing an employee costume, invited visitors to join them, congratulating them on their excellent choices, once again trading food for energy balls. Suddenly a helicopter arrived. Participants started shouting that they had been tricked and it was not from the staff. The participants brought back what they had swapped and wanted the energy balls back. One of the workers started shouting that they wanted free resources, and they were tied up and presented themselves as them for their own gain. The participants were very angry. There was hostility from everyone. Two groups of participants met together and asked who else it was. They started looking for where that worker had gone, yelling to get the balloons back, but they ran away. Chin Yu, satisfied with himself, said that it was not in vain that they had pulled everything off, as the remaining energy was very large. Chin Yu ran ahead and the dog girls ran after him. One of them asked him how many balls he had changed, to which he replied, What does it matter? The girl smiled and said that any number of balls would do. He thought to himself that it was up to his balls, and started to say I don't, but didn't finish the sentence. The air was cut by the sound of a flying arrow. Together they began to fight her off. The girl kicking the arrow away with her foot asked who else it was. Cutting through the air the spears flew towards them. With a deft movement someone caught the spear with his hand. There were three people standing in front of them. The one who had caught the spear was telling the little girl that she had excellent reactions. The girl said it would be sad to say goodbye to life with such outstanding credentials. There were two companies facing each other. The ones who had exchanged the balloons, and the ones who met them on the way. Chin Yu looked at them and thought welcome unwelcome guest. The dog girl reminded Chin Yu that snake people were excellent warriors, especially good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and rhinoceroses had a huge reserve of strength. Apparently the hooded man is the most dangerous of them all. The new trio pondered how they would divide them all up. That long one is the strongest. You can give it to the other one. The smaller warrior replied that the bigger size meant less speed and faster death. Next, the hooded one said she would deal with the dogs and the other would take the long one. The warrior approached the two uniformed men with her spear. Sister Doggy told the others not to get involved. Those agreed. The warrior with the spear turned to Chin Yu, saying that he was the one she would be heading to the most. Next, she continued she wouldn't mind having some fun with him. Chin Yu replied to her saying such a thing to him. He is from a decent family. He will be misunderstood. And the dog girls asked if he should lead them to victory. The spear lady giggled they seemed to be having a good time but now they would play with him. She launched her spear at him and added until he lost. One of the dog sisters told Chin Yu to be careful. He took the spear by the stick and said he was not so cruel for he let him prove himself. The two of them hold the spear. He asked if she wanted to set a small goal for herself. Like playing until the first tier. They were being watched. One large warrior and the other hooded. The dog girls tried to support Chin Yu, so he asked his rival. He pulled harder on his spear. The warrior approached him and in her he recognized his aunt. She glared at him and shouted angrily, die, and started throwing punches at him. Auntie accelerated again and struck again. Behind her, behind the girl, Doggy drew her sword. The girl dog tried to call out to Chin Yu. But from behind her, a hulk covered in black smoke began to loom behind her. It was the hulking thing that stood behind him, covered in black mist and holding a stone in its hands. From the impact, the girl fell unconscious. Explosions erupted on the island. Chin Yu fell among the trees, breaking his stovepipe into several pieces and asked why she hated him so much. He replied that he didn't know what to do. Auntie was making a sprawl on the ground and shouting that instead of trying to save herself, and she said he'd better think about his last words before he died, and ran forward with her spear. Chin Yu thought that he should improve his body with the system. He said the dynamic vision is perfect. Swinging his fist, he realized the power was perfect. The ant staggered back from Chin Yu's punches. There were traces of blood on the grass. He couldn't miss, but a cut appeared on his arm, blood dripping from it. He realized that the naturally flexible body of the descendants of the snake tribe had robbed him of most of his strength. It was her slippery scales. Because of this, the direction of his strike changed and he hurt himself on the spear. Auntie replied that it was a good shot. She was standing across from the guy. Auntie smiled. It's a shame we're born to kill monsters like him. She crouched for another punch and yelled out that she wanted his legs. He looked at her with anger and confirmed for himself that he had less combat experience. She hissed caustically, anticipating victory. He tried to run away from her. And he himself nestled against the trunk of a tree and asked, and who said he wanted to run away? 
Auntie couldn't understand what Chin Yu wanted to do. He put his arm around the tree and started pulling, saying he was just warming up. And the next moment he threw a tree trunk at Auntie. She crouched down and dodged. She told him he was a jerk because she was a snake. She crawled up to him and threateningly told him that he would pay for his ignorance. Chin Yu was worried, for he didn't know what else to do. She yelled caustically for him to remember this lesson and not call anyone auntie. She stabbed her spear between his legs, but the wedge of the spear flew off, shattering. She was in shock, not realizing what had happened. Unexpectedly, she was grabbed by Chin Yu's neck. He replied that he had finally caught her. He had only thrown the tree to distract her and attack from below, but he hadn't expected her to be ruthless. Chin Yu was still holding her by the neck the same way. She resented that he had calculated everything and blocked her attack. Isn't this the most vulnerable spot of any man? He lifted her up on his outstretched arm by her neck with words maybe she could hear, and went on to say that there are balls of steel and started laughing. Now he wanted to think together about what to do with her. Four girl dogs attacked the second warrior girl while their sister fought the tall girl. One of the girl dogs said she couldn't handle her because she was incredibly fast and her speed was very great. The warrior girl stood, yawning, and said that her opponent was too weak for the one to pique her interest. Suddenly, she saw a strand of severed black hair on the grass. It belonged to an acquaintance of hers. The girl quickly rushed to her aid. She was lying almost unconscious. She turned to her friend who was lying crouched on the ground, calling her Snake and wondering what was wrong with her. Snake lay there, barely breathing, with eyes full of tears and whispered that she couldn't, couldn't go on. Snake's friend flared up and shouted through her teeth what the hell did that guy do? The dog girls repeated the same question to themselves. What had this demon done to this snake? Chin Yu stood smiling at them and said, What nonsense. He was just trying out his new technique on her. He thought that she had made him stronger with her aggression. He continued onward, that suddenly a new world opened up to him. The girl with snake in her arms was looking at him from under her forehead, frowning. She quietly replied that he had managed to defeat Snake. It seems her opinion of him was wrong. He was worthy of being her opponent. The girl sitting beside Snake put her hands behind her back, pulling out her weapon. She told him to approach. Chin Yu said optimistically to himself that he could handle this opponent now. Suddenly some sort of whirlwind appeared in front of him. He jerked back slightly in surprise. But the next second, the girl's sharp weapon was at his throat. She introduced herself. Her name is Tang Lian. Chin Yu smiled and replied to her that she was good. And under his head, the metal of a sharp, cold weapon glittered. She started to thrust her short swords at him. But he intercepted and held her arms back while saying that she looked good in an assassin's costume. Chin Yu tried to push her away by holding her hands. The dog girl's conversation was heard from the side that he had decided to fight the assassin on his own. What a fool he is. And Tang Lian said that this guy managed to make her angry. The guy laughed a little. She seemed to be calm before that. At this time, she was angrily trying to stab him. The two of them fought while the dog girls watched them, shouting out, No, be careful because she's not that easy. Ever since she was a child, she had been raised as a killing machine. Her speed was unrivaled. Tang Lian at this moment moved away from Chin Yu to attack him with renewed vigor. She swung her dagger forcefully and the tip of it passed over Chin Yu's leg. Blood seeped through his pants. Tang Lian was already on the other side and attacked again with a cry of die. This time, the dagger hit Chin Yu's lower back. There was also blood coming out. And he noted that Tang Lian was indeed very fast. He didn't have time to react. The guy tried to follow the girl but she was moving very fast and he couldn't catch her. She put the knife to his throat again and said that if this was his maximum, it would soon be over. And Chin Yu noted that this girl's capabilities were far superior to the skills of a snake. Chin Yu decided to try to run away from the girl, but she wasn't far away from him. Soon it had almost caught up with him. He realized that his opponent's speed was vastly superior, and the trail of fire caught up with him. Fiery tongues tried to sting him from all sides. He barely fended off the attacks, recognizing that he was having a hard time resisting and not having time to react to the attacks. Fire beams surrounded him. Tang Lian attacked him very quickly in the middle of the green forest. Everyone was worried about him, both the dog girls and Teacher Zhao, who whispered his name. The people in the arena had different reactions to this fight. The representatives of the school where Tang Lian was from were delighted, saying, Smart guy, that's all. Destroy him. Kick his ass. Smash him. And the agitated headmaster and both of his deputies nervously watched the fight, clearly worried about Chin Yu. Yu Li was angry at him since he couldn't lose to anyone but herself. Yu Na reassured her daughter, saying it's not that bad, look at his face. The girl was covered in cold sweat. She watched his face through the touchscreen. Yu Na noted that he hadn't spent all these years for nothing after all. He must have a plan. Chin Yu stood there and couldn't fight back. He thought that even though he was inferior to her in speed, and he had zero experience in killing, he would just die of exhaustion trying to fight back. But there was only one way to fix the situation. He contemplated this method. 
but he also received a mark on his cheek, and blood instantly appeared there. A guy with many small and not so small wounds on his body started screaming. He said that Tang Lian was a talentless old lady. She didn't even hit him. And how dare she call herself a warrior. He thought that he should make her kill him as quickly as possible. All the spectators in the arena were in complete shock and confusion, some asking what. Chin Yu looked her rival around. Telling her not to hide was enough. He was offering to fight as it was supposed to be fought. And if she didn't want to beat him, then let her massage him. He agreed that he would give her five stars and even visit her next time. He was sheathed with renewed vigor and began to be wounded by a ring of fire that he barely fought off. But he kept bringing her out saying she was his killing machine too. That's a total lie. And he was bleeding from every one of his many wounds. In the arena, Yu Li held her mom's hand with fright. She asked her what they should do. Maybe it's time to order a coffin. He's a big guy, we'll have to customize it. Auntie Yuna stared intently at the screen and tried to figure out what he was up to. And Chin Yu wasn't taking out his rival for nothing. After all, she hated him for his words. And his energy rose from her hostility. He couldn't figure out who the girl was. Why she wouldn't respond to his provocations. If things continued like this, he would really be exhausted to death. The main problem with killers like her is the lack of restraint. Tang Lian started attacking the guy again. He, on the other hand, decided that he needed to keep it up. She must lose control. Only in this way would he be able to turn defeat into victory. From the excitement, he was covered in cold sweat. But he noticed that the attack was gone. This was his chance. The attack resumed with renewed vigor. Chin Yu was in a cloud of dust and a ring of fire. The ring of fire wounded the guy's shoulder with force, so that blood flew to the sides. But next, Chin Yu noticed that one had slowed down and was even able to get a glimpse of her. At this moment, Chin Yu used all of his recent savings to improve his body. His wounds were completely gone, and he now possessed more strength than he had before. He was able to hit Tang Lian very quickly. He struck again, but at her weapon. The dagger simply crumbled from the impact. She couldn't understand how it had happened. He slammed his fist into her face once more with force, and the last blow was so strong it sent her flying backwards. Next, he grabbed her leg and dragged her around a bit. She realized that the man had not intentionally provoked, and she couldn't keep her balance. Tang Lian started to fall from Tin Yu's push. She thought that she had to hold on, that she couldn't show the enemy her weakness must endure. But after hitting the ground hard, she realized that she had been concentrating hard on her desire to kill him and had let her guard down. She lay sprawled out on the ground and all she could think was how cool everything was. She had a hard time coming to her senses, but looking up she saw something that scared her even more. Chin Yu flew at her and raised his elbow to deliver a killing blow. This was the elbow destroyer technique. Tang Lian saw the elbow in the next second in front of her eyes. And at that moment, instead of a punch from the guy, she noticed him fly quickly into the bushes. Chin Yu fell with a thunderous crash, landing near the bushes. In front of him stood the familiar Tang Lian, a huge girl who was screaming at him about how he dared to hurt her sister. And she would see how many lives he had left in reserve. Behind her lay, with her head slightly raised, Tang Lian. And his energy from hostility was replenished once again. His sister, with anger on her face, started sprawling towards the guy to avenge her sister. Tang Lian lifted herself up with her hand on her chest and exclaimed for her sister not to do this. That one stood up, gathering all his strength and received energy together, and Tang Lian's sister ran at him with shouts. She struck him hard in the face with her fist in such a way that he barely held himself up, turning his head to the side. But he remained standing, even starting to smile. And sister Tang Lian couldn't understand why he didn't fall down after shouting what the hell. She was about to attack again, making a threatening face and saying that they warriors never give up. The dog girls who were watching all this were very worried about the guy and shouted to him, Chin Yu, watch out. And this hulking sister began to club him as hard as she could. But he was increasing his energy from her hostility. Chin Yu skillfully began to dodge the blows saying that big sister should have heeded the advice of little sister. Tu accelerated and straightened her arm for another strike and shouted at him that she was not to be underestimated. He stared intently at her big fist and started to smile a little. Unexpectedly for big sister Tang Lian, the guy straightened his hand with his palm towards her fist, and he fell right into Chin Yu's steel trap. The guy caught her fist with his palm, squeezing it tightly, and its owner was a little startled. Taking her fist in his grip, he was able to twist her arm and throw it. At this time, all of her garments for protection crumbled from her body. Tears came to her eyes. She tried to cover her breasts with her hands. Chin Yu couldn't take his gaze away from her breasts, saying that they were so big. Immediately, his hostility energy increased by a record number. With his side vision, he saw a flying spear and began to dodge it. While he was distracted, Tang Lian picked up her older sister who was covering herself with scraps from her clothes. They were running away from him. There were three figures moving away from the guy. They were Tang Lian, 
her older sister, and Snake. Tang Lian shouted to him that she remembered him, and Chin Yu said that unfortunately, he had to let all three opponents go. The dog girls came up to him and told him that Devil Boy was a tough guy. He looked at his hands and noted that even though his body felt pain, it was healing rather quickly. Next, he turned to the girl dogs. He urged them to come with him because he needed to raise his ranking. He thought to himself that physical fitness was good, but he had to find a way to attract more people and get more energy. They happily shouted okay and ran forward across the green lawn amidst the forest. In the center of the zone, there was a battle between the monsters and the participants. Level 2, Big Horned Worms. Several people tried to subdue them. The dog girls and Chin Yu were watching from the bushes. They asked the guy if they would go there. Chin Yu replied with a smile. What's the rush? Aren't they couriers? There are a lot of people there now and the boss should not sit idle. Suddenly, a big scary monster in the form of a female beetle appeared. The participants who were fighting the worms started screaming and running away. This monster was very unusual. The top part belonged to a beautiful girl with shapes and several arms, and below the waist it had the body of a black beetle. The dog girl screamed in horror that it was a level 5 monster, aka the evil bug queen. Chin Yu looked at her intently and whispered, Here she comes. One of the dog girls wanted to stop the guy, saying that they couldn't defeat her. But Chin Yu replied that they wouldn't act on their own. She looked at him as he rose, but still didn't understand what he meant. Suddenly he started shouting loudly that here was the queen in front of him. Guys, move it. A lot of energy will fall from her. There won't be another chance like this. The sisters were confused by his actions. Participants who heard all of this stopped to figure out what to do next. Next, one by one, they started to get to the bug queen. One shouted that the energy would be his and he would show his power. The other that the one would get by. The others, that he found her first. Nonsense. Thinking he'd handle her faster than him. Someone else to get rid of her. For this was their chance. And you could hear one of them asking to cover their mouths. That's how they went on the offensive. And she only smiled as she listened to all the chatter of the approaching humans. The queen of the evil bugs easily dealt with uninvited guests. Two other contestants took up the fight with the queen. One of them said she was strong, but he will try to defeat her. Also, no, I couldn't. Chin Yu watched the whole beating. He saw that this boss was quite strong, but the guy couldn't understand why she was completely unresponsive to attacks. He examined her carefully, wondering if she didn't have a single weak spot. He slid his gaze over the bug queen's body and saw something. This must be the place. Chin Yu walked with one of his sisters between the other competitors and told her that he had a plan. He quietly told her his plan in her ear so no one else would hear. She excitedly said that the one would be in danger, but the guy had already started warming up and replied that the game was worth the candle. After that, he confidently walked forward where the other contestants were fighting with the queen. The dog girl nervously stood behind and Chin Yu walked forward towards the queen saying that she was a dumbass. The queen used her claws to beat the participants who approached her on the head. Chin Yu with his spear was behind her and jumped to strike. The sisters shouted his name. He hurled his spear at the bug queen's back with tremendous force, screaming for her to die. He then commanded Xiao Chao to go ahead, and the one in front started to hit her with a fire beam. His energy was palpably replenished from the hostility. As the bug queen felt pain, Xiao Chao, one of the sister doggies, struck the ground. While doing so, she said for the pest queen to die. The force of the ground strike was directed just at the spot where Chin Yu's spear had hit. The pest queen screamed in pain, and her body was pierced by rays from the impact of the ground. Chin Yu carefully looked at the queen's back, and soon saw the very spot that was vulnerable. He gathered all his strength into his mighty fist, and struck his opponent hard in the back. Xiao Xiao said that Chin Yu was right in striking that place. After a while, Xiao Xiao heard some rustling, and she saw the bug queen coming up behind the guy, furious with her mouth open wide. The girl shouted for Chin Yu to start running, for she was still alive. He turned his head back, screaming in surprise at what? The guy's energy reserve increased a lot from the hostility. Xiao Xiao ran with her head turned back, and watched the picture of the bug queen catching Chin Yu by the head with her shepherd, and lifting him into the air. Xiao Xiao called out to Chin Yu, who was in the Bug Queen's Pasha. Something was happening there. Only his legs were visible, which were sticking out of her mouth. The queen became increasingly quieter in her demeanor and lowered her head slightly. Suddenly, a guy's big fist showed sharply through the queen's body. And after that, the entire Chin Yu also appeared. He was angry, shouting bloody things. Xiao Xiao quickly ran to him and told him not to be a fool and remember to control the amount of energy. But he didn't finish listening to what the girl was telling him, and started falling unconscious on the ground near the body of the bug queen. As he fell, his body flew forward and he fell straight onto Xiao Xiao's chest. She asked what was wrong with him and said that he was scaring her. The second vice principal with a mustache and beard, who was in the arena, next to teacher Zhao, started shouting loudly, Medics! 
rather a medical team is needed in the arena, and pounded his fist on the table. The Yu Li girl loudly shouted Chin Yu's name while next to Yu Nui's mom. Chin Yu began to read the information he received. There was about congratulating the host for successfully absorbing a level 5 demon soul. Demon power obtained, demon armor obtained, and others. Chin Yu woke up in a hospital room, all wrapped up in bandages, with a nurse standing next to him. He couldn't believe what was happening. The nurse excitedly asked if he was awake, how he was feeling, and for him to wait, and she would get the doctor. The nurse girl quickly ran off to fetch the doctor, and Chin Yu raised his hand, trying to examine, and exclaimed that it was true. He received a message about his condition. There was information about who he was, and what his condition and abilities were. He raised his fists in joy because he thought he was good for nothing. But it turned out that he had the power of a demon after all. Next, he sat on his bed and began to wonder why he hadn't woken up earlier. Because maybe he needed to piss someone off again to heal himself. He decided that enough thinking, it was time to try out a new skill. His fists filled with power, and he was still in the middle of the bed. His face was covered in sweat. He was all tense. He concentrated all his strength into his fists and realized that this was the feeling. This was it. Suddenly, all of his bandages ripped at him. He began to feel his strength boiling. Suddenly, a claw appeared on his middle finger. Chin Yu looked at this claw on his middle finger and only had a mute question. What on earth is this? He was frustrated. And the next second, he flared up. What the fuck was that thing? It only covers his finger after all. Why would he need it? And it's beyond him. At this time, a message about pumping demonic armor appeared. He rejoiced because luckily that wasn't all. Next thing you know, his entire palm was covered in armor. And then his entire arm was already covered in armor all the way up to his forearm. All the bandages on his arm were torn to shreds. Chin Yu stood in the middle of the chamber with his left hand raised and admired the armor on it. Chin Yu stood in the midst of his chamber and decided that he needed to try out the power of his attack. At the same time, a nurse and a doctor entered the room. She said that the guy who defeated the Pest Queen is awake. The doctor replied that he was fine, but that he couldn't take part in the competition. Something whizzed past the doctor and his hair flew up. The hem of the nurse's gown flew up as well. She tried to hold it back somehow. Both Chin Yu and the doctor liked what they saw. The doctor examined the guy and said his body was in good condition. Only a day old, and most of the internal damage had come back to normal. Also, the doctor said that one could be discharged after a month. But this didn't please Chin Yu because he had to participate in the competition tomorrow. But the doctor was resolute. He said sternly, what a contest, that he shouldn't take it so seriously because he had shattered bones. The boy wondered, for there might be one way, he chose in the messages the self-healing of flesh and blood. At this time, the nurse was slowly bandaging his arm. He mentally apologized to the nurse. He needed to gather energy as quickly as possible to heal the injury after all. The guy with his free hand gripped the nurse's ass hard. She grabbed the spot where it hurt and began to scream angrily about what the man was doing. And Chin Yu waved at her contentedly as the energy from the hostility was replenished again and added that he was just kneading his hand, angry at the guy. The nurse said she'd get the nurse to finish up. And the boy thought he would get more energy from his aunt. He thought about it because apparently it wouldn't work that way. There were many beautiful nurses walking down the hallway with patients. He stomped his foot hard on the floor and swept like a whirlwind through the young nurse girls. They all had their gowns pulled up and could barely cover themselves, screaming at the top of their voices. Each of the girls radiated hostility, and that replenished his energy level. Chin Yu voiced that he saw seven black ones, five white ones, two pink ones, eight with suspenders, and one with a size C. That was how he counted, even curling his fingers. The male patients really enjoyed the spectacle. They were all pleased. He added that he wasn't done yet. And a second later, they were standing naked, covering themselves, and the one holding someone's underwear in his hands. Here, he also increased the energy from the hostility. A few days later, the sparring arena was crowded. Yu Li was by her mom's side and regretted that Chin Yu had defeated the queen but was still unable to participate in the competition. But the announcer's voice made her hesitate. The following words sounded there, asking Chin Yu from school number three and Lu Renjiang from school number two to come up to the arena. And she excitedly turned to her mom. After all, she heard Chin Yu's name. She didn't just hear it. Isn't he seriously injured? How did he end up there? Chin Yu walked into the arena, covered in bandages and wearing medical pajamas. Yu Li started screaming again that it was really him. What's that dumbass up to? The host announces the two competitors in the arena. It's Chin Yu and Lu Ren Jiang. The first goal to the center humming some cheerful tune. Lu Ren Jiang looked at the one with some fear and thought that the same one had come to fight fairly instead of scaring him. Chin Yu approached to meet his opponent in the arena still merrily humming a tune. Lu Ren Jiang was already on his head for he kept his palm on the hilt of his sword. He was curious about what he was going to do. At this time, Chin Yu bent down slightly and extended his hand to greet him. 
saying that he was glad to meet you. Lu Ren Jiang agreed that he shouldn't forget the rules of etiquette and released the handle of the weapon from his palm. He leaned forward, saying he was glad to meet you, even thought how wonderful it was when a rival showed such respect for his enemy. But at this moment, something in Qin Yu as something clicked, his gaze changed and his eye lit up. His palm flew upward sharply and struck his opponent. Qin Yu started the fight with the words, Get! Soon his opponent lay head buried in the ground in the arena. The referee announced that Qin Yu had won, and he clucked two fingers. Yuna and Yuli simultaneously assured their faces with their hands and mumbled that they didn't know him. Over the next few match days, Qin Yu's shameless adaptability helped him defeat one opponent after another. One of the next opponents, he stabbed his finger in his eye. His energy increased once again. In the fight with the knight, he struck the one between his legs, once again gaining energy and victory. The next one was beaten so badly that he ran away from the one with tears in his eyes and his hands tied. The victory was once again Qin Yu's. Next, the announcer announced that Qin Yu would be fighting against Tang Lian. He said that it was her again. She stared at him intently from under the hood of her cape and told him that they had met again, and this time she would definitely get back at him. Tang Lian said that this time she would not let her tricks be used on him. She pulled out her two fire swords. He glared at her and began to tremble with fear. The little evil demon waved his fists with furious force. Qin Yu was trying to show some new techniques accompanied by Vin Chun Qin Wen sounds. Qin Yu versus Tang Lian was announced again. They first looked at each other's eyes and then started fighting. Tang Lian started yelling at him, asking where his weapon was. Thoth smiled at her, replying that his body was his weapon. She called him a chatterbox, to which he replied that he was from a poor family, couldn't afford it. She stood in front of him, hiding her hands behind her back and telling him she wouldn't treat him like that. Tang Lian slipped a finger between her breasts, catching the edge of her armor. The host ran out to get a closer look at what was happening. Tilting her head down, she quietly mumbled that she had no clothes under her armor, so she would accept defeat. Qin Yu was a little nervous, saying, Don't be. She just isn't dressed, it's fine. And no one is looking, and if she wants to, he will also undress. She gave me a hard, angry look, and she said in that case. She directed all her energy at him. But Qin Yu managed to intercept this flow with his armored hand. He tried to fend off Tang Lian's attack using his armor. She very quickly began to attack Qin Yu. He thought, fighting her off, that if they had crossed paths in the arena earlier, he would have definitely died. Tang Lian thought that she would easily deal with him by wearing armor, but she definitely didn't expect this. She grinned viciously, thinking that she didn't want to defame the family's honor, and she activated her level 3 combat weapons, namely electronic knives. Qin Yu didn't expect explosive attacks. Charges were coming off of her from everywhere, and the mantis knives were active. He couldn't stop her one more attack like that, and he'd be out of arms. Qin Yu faintly thought that she was ready for a ploy on his part that time. Maybe it would work now. It was worth the risk. She worked her knives hard and realized that he would not last much longer. Her knives went through his body. Blood rushed from him. He even started coughing up blood. She smiled and said she had won. He looked at her from under his forehead and added that the victory, and finished the sentence behind him, and struck her with great force. He hit her again with renewed force in the stomach, so hard that the armor began to crack. As he threw more punches, the guy thought that this girl, fast, tenacious, talented, enthusiastic, you've caused him so much trouble, and her strength surely exceeds that of a rank 3 warrior. At this moment, she was already lying without armor, badly beaten on the ground. Thankfully, he had overpowered her and was now pulling her knives out of his body. Next, he started using self-healing. He threw her knives to the ground. They were covered in blood and fell with a clatter. Qin Yu looked back after hearing some sound. On the ground lay Xiao Xiao, his recent acquaintance. He called out to her silly girl. Qin Yu bent down beside her, lifting her slightly. He asked her if she had decided to change her breed, as it was not suitable for her. He thought about it, with thirty-two fractures all over her body. There was hardly anyone inferior to her in strength who could do such a thing to her. The injured Xiao Xiao slightly opened her mouth and quietly whispered, Qin Yu, be careful, space martial arts. He looked at her in bewilderment the same martial art that is recognized as the hardest to learn in Western culture. He heard that Wang Jie was the winner, so he asked him what he was doing. Qin Yu lifted the girl up, escaping the opponent's strike. Wang Jie jumped onto the ground so that the ground beneath him separated slightly, and the guy and girl fell down. Qin Yu turned menacingly to his rival, asking him if he knew the rules of behavior. Wang Jie, a third-level warrior, raised his hands to the top and smilingly said calmly that he was only saying hello. The frustrated Qin Yu thought that he didn't give a shit about the jerk. He felt very sorry for his friend who had been beaten so badly by Wang Jie. And then Wang Jie added gloatingly, so he shouldn't worry after all this was only a welcoming ceremony. He continued that the next time they met again, they would settle all matters. Xiao Chao was lying on the grass with her opponent standing on different sides of her. 
The medics ran into the arena, who shouted, hurry up, here is an injured person, no two, seeing Chin Yu. And he asked the opponent that he came for him, and she was injured for nothing. The medics carried Xiao Xiao away on a stretcher, and Chin Yu said, thank you, silly girl, you can rest with peace of mind. He appreciates what she did for him, but she shouted loudly that she was not dying yet. The announcer reappeared and said that the exciting moment was coming, and after all these battles, it would be known who made it to the top six. There are fights to the death ahead, and they will find out who will be the champion. Next he asked to look at his opponent on the scoreboard. On this scoreboard, there was an inscription that Wang Jie would be fighting against Qin Yu. Qin Yu, seeing this, thought that he should prepare himself. That same day before the fight between Qin Yu and Wang Jie started, the latter stood with his sword behind his back and nervously waited for his opponent, all the while saying, Where is this Qin Yu going? Well, where is he going? An exclamation of here he is, here he is, could be heard on the podium. It was Yu Li shouting joyfully, pointing her finger at him. She was with Yu Noi's mom, Xiao Xiao, Zhao's teacher. Qin Yu cheerfully entered the arena, wearing some sort of costume with strange things filled with spices hanging all over it. It could be heard that everyone was wondering what he was wearing. Chin Yu jumped up and the surroundings once again erupted. Look what he's wearing. What the hell is this? What kind of circus is he putting on? He landed just in front of Wen Jie, who asked if he was ready to admit defeat. Chin Yu put his palm forward and smiled, saying that whatever he had planned, it was none of his business. The fight had begun. They tried to greet each other. Wen Jie laughed loudly, saying that he wanted to see what a member of the great horned family could do and drew his sword forward. Chin Yu interrogated the horned family if he had seen himself in the mirror, after all. He was a devil. Wen Ji was already standing behind him and swinging his sword, and Qin Yu turned his head at him to see what he was doing. He barely touched his shoulder with his fiery great sword. Wen Ji realized what it was. It was demonic armor. It was a great ability. It really wasn't easy to obtain such a skill, but it wouldn't save him. When Qin Yu turned around, something flew at him, fiery. He recognized it and shouted out a sword. Next, he fended off the frequent attacks of that frenzied sword. Wen Ji shouted that he had lost. His sword was cradled by the chain he was unwinding. Qin Yu tried again and again to repel the attacks of this sword that appeared from different directions time and time again. But then the armor expired and he missed the blow and flew backwards. Wen Jie happily said that his end had come. He put his sword on his shoulder and crouched down, pointing his finger down. Qin Yu, gathering his strength, raised his knee and replied so that he would not jump to conclusions. He smiled and pointed a finger upward, telling him to look up. Wen Jie couldn't understand anything about it. Suddenly, the condiment containers that were on Chi Yu's suit started falling and exploding on him. As they exploded, they splattered the contents on Wen Jie's face and body. Qin Yu threw a punch with the words, Here's one for you. Angry Wang Jie steeled himself and said that originally, he wanted to just let him go. And further raising his hands up, standing in a belligerent posture, he shouted that the man himself had decided to die. Qin Yu was covered in a pile of black smoke. He could barely be seen. Xiao Xiao told Yu Li that it was a trap. Previously, he had used this technique to deprive her of her ability to control the space around her. That was how he had defeated her. It was hard to breathe in that black fog. Qin Yu called his opponent a coward, but he saw a large shadow from his horns. Wang Ji, a third-level warrior of the Demon King clan, became completely unrecognizable and terrifying. He shouted for Qin Yu to shudder in terror and that he would do whatever he said. But Qin Yu didn't waste any time punching the one in the face, to which the demon replied that he would pay. Chin Yu rubbed his arm after the blow, it was riddled with pain, and asked the one in the video, he's a horse or something. The enraged Wang Jie in the form of a demon yelled loudly and shouted that he would pay. Chin Yu began to spin the black vortex around him. Teacher Zhao noticed that this student's capabilities were unique. Where did he come from? Yu Na discreetly replied to her that it was possible. But in any case, the opponent's abilities greatly exceeded Chin Yu's. Chin Yu stood in the middle of the arena in black smoke, ready to attack his opponent. But he couldn't figure out where he was now in this black Imla. Suddenly a sharp pain pierced his back. The man struck him from behind. He tried to reach for the one to hit, but couldn't catch it. And Wang Jie towered over him and said that silly horned devil. He thinks he's the only one so special. Just then, Chin Yu began to run away from him to the side. Stopping, he asked if he was also from the royal clan. And the answer I got was, naturally. Wen Jie turned out to be the executioner of the royal clan. Chin Yu was confused. Next, Chin Yu had a huge sword flying rapidly. But Qin Yu stopped him, taking his demonic armored mid-level arm with his demonic armor. But his opponent didn't calm down, shouting that it was impossible. The demon clan doesn't have such defensive skills. He's not a demon, who is he really? Qin Yu angrily replied his daddy, and received an increase in energy from his opponent's hostility. He coughed as he looked at Qin Yu, 
and his hostility grew once again while Qin Yu increased his energy points. Qin Yu struck Wang Zhe again with his armored hand. Qin Yu continued to taunt his opponent, saying to him an executioner, though Voldemort, and watched as his opponent's hostility grew and his energy increased. The guy thought that no matter who Wang Zhe was, he wouldn't be able to resist against his skills. Wang Zhe swung his huge sword and shouted that the winner would still be him, and wished for the one-horned demon to die. Qin Yu smiled and looked slyly to the side. Yu Li began to feel nervous as to why the sound had disappeared. Xiao Xiao also looked anxiously at the arena, unable to see anything clearly. Everything was twirling and spinning in a black and green whirlwind. Yu Li called out to Qin Yu. Scattered all around in the middle stood Qin Yu with a sword in his hand. The opponent's horn lay severed on the ground. The opponent himself was on his knees with a sword at his throat. Xiao Xiao shouted in surprise that he had won. Teacher Zhao covered her mouth with her hands and mumbled what the hell, this... What's even going on? Qin Yu stood smiling while his opponent was with his sword on the ground. Wang Jia swung his sword with the words, Die fucking demon. Qin Yu stood there wondering how to defeat him. Qin Yu forcefully repelled the sword attack. Wang Jia couldn't believe it, for he thought it was impossible. And in the next second, Qin Yu forcefully kicked his opponent between his legs. He was in a lot of pain. The opponent was kneeling. Qin Yu had his sword in Qin Yu. The one asked how he knew where he was. Qin Yu started attacking the man with his own sword and replied that he had taken the condiments for a reason. Next, Qin Yu called him a legless chromium demon. He swung and cut off his horn. He took his horn in his hands and began to regret it. It was his horn, the pride of the clan. With his horn in hand, he stood up and began shouting furiously. The hostility was off the charts, increasing energy by 2,000. Present tense. Achilia, a level 8 sheep knight boss warrior, appeared in the arena. She swung her swords and told Qin Yu to take a step backwards and let the rest of it slip to her. With sword in hand, he said it was easy. With a dark whirlwind, Qin Yu was thrown aside from his opponent. The one immediately began to get nervous about who, who had turned off the lights. A hoof hit the ground hard. Following him, a huge giant with two large horns and a sword on his shoulders became visible. Achilia grabbed Qin Yu and shouted out, Father. She called him silly and he remembered that it was Wu Chao. Achilia threw Qin Yu away from her and started yelling about how didn't she tell them to retreat. She raised her weapon at that huge demon and discovered that it was a level 9 sword demon. The little demon in front of him begged for forgiveness, for he wanted to get into this world and slaughter them all. The little demon didn't think that this misunderstanding could overpower him. It was Qin Yu who was behind Akalia. She replied that he was a fool and be damned. Qin Yu only said that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, as they say. The big demon looked at Qin Yu and asked if the horned demon's son was the same. He stood pointing a finger at him and the little demon in his hand squeaked that he should piss off his father, and he would be a corpse. The big demon said that Qin Yu should submit, and he would grant him the priceless right to surrender voluntarily. Yu Li in the arena along with Yunoi's mom were very nervous as they watched what was happening. At some point, Yuna jumped up from her seat and stared intently at the arena. Wang Jie thought that his father had invited this scumbag. He approved of him, but after all, he didn't even approve of him. Achilia turned to Qin Yu. They are trying to poach him there. But the man spread his hands apart and said that it wouldn't work. He didn't agree. Achilia raised her weapon and asked the demon if he had heard. She started swinging her weapon, saying that people thought he was too ugly, let him go back to his demon world and stop raping their eyes with his looks. Achilia tried to attack the unperturbed huge devil. She attacked again and again, chanting for him, in a puff of smoke. Chin Yu watched her from the side. A huge devil with a huge sword was telling Achilia that she would regret it. The little devil Wang Jie who was in his father's hand was showing Chin Yu a middle finger. Qin Yu's energy from hostility increased once again. His hatred could be compared to Auntie's. Suddenly the fire in the arena went out and the devil was gone. Only Qin Yu and Achilia stood looking at where the devil had just been. Yu Li sitting on the podium told her mom that although Qin Yu wasn't the most obedient child, but they should treat him better when they got home. Yu Nu wondered if demons could really change. Qin Yu walked up to the judge and asked why he still hadn't declared him the winner, had he decided to fool around in the workplace. Achilia said that it wasn't worth worrying about, because if a level 9 demon managed to get into the arena, then the place wasn't safe anymore. We need to get out of there. Qin Yu interrogated her with what? He was surprised and completely confused. Specialized guards had already appeared around the arena. They were armed and guarding the perimeter. Qin Yu was upset thinking that he had the impression that they didn't want him to demon, win, and so they suspended the competition. Xiao Xiao walked up to him and said that they had always been like this. He was surprised to see them, but interjected that they were also leaving. The dog girls were together. One of them said sure, but Big Sister insisted that they should thank him before leaving. Xiao Xiao told him thank you, and whatever he says, he is good at heart. 
Chin Yu smiled at them, telling them to stop talking like they wanted to sell him something. Stop thanking him. Xiao Xiao was excited and was slightly covered in cold sweat from this. She looked intently into his eyes and said matter-of-factly, Yi Xiao Xiao ran up to Chin Yu and hugged him tightly. Xiao Xiao entered the bus to leave the arena. Standing behind her was Chin Yu. She told him that they would see each other again. He looked after the departing bus and wondered if he had her. Chin Yu looked at his hand and finished his thought with the word rounded. The bus drove leisurely down the road, taking everyone out of the arena. Chin Yu just stared out the bus window at the trees in the road. He remembered the devil's words that he would regret it, and what that meant. He'd set a trap for him. Suddenly the bus shook, and the passengers were tossed from side to side. Chin Yu opened the window of the bus and looked outside to see the reason for such an incident. A fiery fox head looked at him. Chin Yu wondered if this was the last trump card. The guards ordered driver Jax to take the children to the nearest shelter. Hurry up! The one replied briefly understood and looked to the road for a quicker drive to safety. Chin Yu heard a message for everyone to get ready for battle. They sent a distress signal from the communicator. We need to hold out until the army comes to help. The bus was traveling fast, looping slightly, and the two firefoxes were advancing behind it. The bus pulled into a shelter. There was an immediate message that they had arrived at a safe place. Everyone was asked to remain calm. The guard spoke a message and the terrified passengers listened. The passengers were then escorted out of the bus cabin. The driver told the four guards to consist near the door to the hideout. He also offered to send someone for help, for when the enemy found them, the steel gate would not hold him. One of the guards stopped when he saw someone's palm in front of him. Chin Yu stopped the guard, saying that he had to settle a matter with the driver. The driver stood behind the two guards, asked if he was Chin Yu. And after that, he said that all matters would be dealt with when they solved the current problem. The guard put his hand on Chin Yu's shoulder and asked him to step aside. But Chin Yu stood with his arms spread apart. The guard tried to pass but couldn't, then said that one was so strong. Chin Yu told the guard that his question was an order of magnitude more important. The driver asked what he wanted. Suddenly he started screaming and spitting blood. Chin Yu threw a punch and asked why he hated him so much. The teacher asked what, his eyes even turned red. Chin Yu asked the question again. Why would a person who was seeing him for the first time feel such hatred towards him? Hostility, the energy once again increased. The guards pointed a gun at him. Chin Yu was ordered to let him go or else they would shoot. Something was happening to the driver, or rather to his body. All around, a black fiery haze of fire could be seen emanating from the driver. The guard was covered in a cold sweat of fear. The guards and Chin Yu looked at the place where the driver was, and there he was no longer there. Only some monster. The guard said that it was a mirage of some sort. The guards and Chin Yu stood in front of the monster's body. The guard said that it was a mirage. A mirage with superior disguise skills. At what point did he... and didn't finish the sentence. The guard thanked Chin Yu for helping him in his time of need. The one replied with a smile that was not worth a thank you. Suddenly Chin Yu's arm was covered in armor and gathered energy together. He shot his power past the other passengers who got off the bus. Chin Yu landed after a jump, and behind him, three small monsters lay slain. The guard only opened his mouth to say this. Chin Yu's hand became normal again, and the guard was curious as to how he knew. Chin Yu replied that it was obvious. The system opened hateful windows for him time and time again. Of everyone there, only he was the only one who could hate him so much. The guard marveled that the current generation had a great future. Chin Yu started to scream loudly devil startled. The guard was also together with Chin Yu was frightened and screamed like hell. They started to run quickly. Chin Yu shouted that Jerk had originally planned to bring them there. There must be an ambush. Suddenly they saw the dragon of the realm of the dead. The kid. He had already dealt with the three passengers. They were dead. Chin Yu stared intently and fearfully shouted out, Damn it, it's a dragon! The dragon heard Chin Yu's scream and even let go of the dead body from his mouth, starting to look at the guy. The dragon opened its mouth and started breathing fire, so Chin Yu had to jump and run away from the fire. The fire the dragon was breathing began to smash the walls of the shelter to pieces. Chin Yu stopped to see what was going on and could only whisper what the... Suddenly a guard shouted for Chin Yu to be careful. There was a dragon looking at him up close, and the guy seeing it didn't hold back, saying, Holy fuck, that's a behemoth. It was Dragon Kid scrutinizing the guy with all his eyes. And Chin Yu only had time to read the messages. Hostility. Energy increased by... He tried to run away, but the dragon caught up with him and breathed fire on him. Chin Yu shouted at him that he was wrong and that the dragon was not a giant at all. The boy ran fast, but the dragon kept up with him, trying to roast him. Quite unexpectedly, Chin Yu had a new idea. He smiled. The dragon looked forward with his eyes uncomprehendingly. A bus passed by in front of the dragon. Naturally, the dragon accelerated and leaped at him. Chin Yu stood there, basking in the glory, everyone praising him, and he said thanking the people around him. Hostility. 
energy increased. These were the kind of messages Qin Yu received from the dragon. When the bus passed, the dragon had already jumped and couldn't stop, and thus stuck its face into the stone wall. Qin Yu contentedly thought to himself, what a great opportunity. Qin Yu thought that the devil was helping him with his own hands, and Dragon Kid was also thinking about what this kid was doing. After all, he's still just a kid. The dragon lay down and barely growled. Qin Yu said to trumpet the victory fanfare, for it was coming his way. Qin Yu said he saw him and his heart froze for a second, and laughed. The guy was destroying the dragon with the words that his end would come soon. He would straighten it out. And he, having increased the energy from the dragon's hostility. The guards were out of their minds at what was happening. They said that the one didn't even spare the female, the other that he couldn't realize what was happening. But he was shocked by it. Suddenly the walkie-talkie started talking. Unit 7, Unit 7. Convoy attacked in the fourth block of Dog City. They can't send anyone to help. Waiting for reinforcements. Waiting for reinforcements. Chin Yu got excited when he heard about the Dog City. There are sisters there, aren't there? The guard was on the radio, asking the hell out of me what the hell happened out there. Chin Yu asked the one if this was the guard's walkie-talkie. He replied that it was, and that there was a need for backup in the Dog City. The guy quickly snatched the walkie-talkie out of that guard's hands. The guard shouted, trying to get his point across. He meant that he had to protect his classmates, and he had to go to the rescue. Where'd he go? There were two people talking in cell block 4. Why the boss won't let them kill anyone? Not even the ones who put him underground. The girl dressed in purple continued, What are they doing here then? The girl dressed in green replied that she had heard that it was all about them having someone of their own. So they need hostages to negotiate too. The first demon girl interjected, and who was the hostage? The same guy who was able to improve his skills and control other demons. The second one, angry, replied that she told him not to talk about it on the street. The demon girl was talking about how the days have been dragging so much lately, wishing she could eat a couple of orcs. And at this time, Chin Yu procures a demon shoe, falls on her right on her chest. Chin Yu tries to catch her so that she doesn't fall down and interrogate it if she is all right. The demon girl glared at him and thought that one was handsome. The green-clad girl tried to restrain her partner and asked him what squad he was from and how he got there. Chin Yu was not confused. He smiled and said from the Demon King's convoy, What's going on here? His Majesty personally sent him there for this. A girl with purple clothes and hair shouted that it was every man for himself. The important thing was that he wasn't hurt. The other one was looking at the dragon scales. She wondered why there was blood. The girl with purple hair was hugging the boy and calling him to come with her. They were moving out towards the other squad, taking him with them. He thought about how strong her pecs were. The two walked forward talking. She suggested calling her sis, and that he should be an obedient boy. And he laughed, calling her sis, and so cute. And there was one friend of this girl left behind, who was getting angry and yelling to wait for her. He was walking with a girl with her angry friend trailing behind, and he was thinking about stupid dogs. Daddy's here. Meanwhile, he was looking around. There was a car in one of the hangars and several large cages in front of it. The girl dogs were all in the cage together. The big sister was reassuring the little one that everything was fine and they would soon be rescued. Suddenly they heard the phrase, you puppies here. Xiao Xiao, big sister recognized him, for it was Chin Yu. She looked at the guy. He was all kissed up as he had a woman's lipstick all over his face. It made her very angry. She asked Chin Yu if he was really with those devils. And the girl with purple hair stood behind Chin Yu and asked the man that he had tracked down his girlfriend. Xiao Xiao boiled up, grasped the bars, and angrily asked what he had blabbed to her. He sharply slipped his hand between the bars and covered her mouth with the palm of his hand. She was frightened. He whispered to her that that's it, stop talking, it's not about him. He wasn't the one to help them. The demon girl took him under the arm, said sure. They're bitches, not his level. He turned his back to the cage and said, thank you, sis. She replied that it was nothing, shouldn't they rely on each other? The older sister nearly threw up from her acquaintance with her new friend. The younger dog girl was banging on the bars and yelling who she called a bitch. Xiao Xiao tried to say something, sister. But after all, they really are. When he was covering Xiao Xiao's mouth, he threw her earpiece down there. Now she took it out and said that did Chin Yu really sneak in just for them? She put in her earpiece and heard the third and fourth squad coming in from the left side. The fifth and sixth squad staying at the main entrance. Second squad is moving on. There's an extra channel. Someone's listening. She smiled and replied that the high school team was on the phone. She repeated again that the high school team was on the phone. It turns out Chin Yu hid his true identity and smuggled in an earpiece. The city was on fire. The high-rise buildings that stood among the green trees were burning. Bone Demon, a level 6 warrior, spoke at a gathering of the same. 
saying that they would not wait for their opponents to go on the offensive. He's decided to form a task force to bring the demon back here, whoever wants to join. And behind him stood the warden, a level four warrior. Chin Yu pondered for a moment. He didn't have to do this. But what if, let them screw up at the last minute? Surely he could earn a bunch of energy points. Chin Yu slowly raised his hand upwards. Behind him, the scythe of death, a level three warrior, raised his hand. Next, the fire demon, a level four warrior, also raised his hand. Armored demon, a level four warrior, also raised his hand. Then a hand was raised at the bone demon, a level four warrior. And the man in charge told them fine. They had made the right choice. He asked them to welcome the heroes. Everyone who raised their hand, along with Chin Yu, walked towards the main one from their seats. The bone demon laid a hand on one of the consenting men's shoulder and said they would be rewarded upon their return. Chin Yu noted that there were connected dots standing everywhere. All right, hit the road, the bone demon was telling them. There are a huge number of coordinates, each of which is associated with a demon. None of them will take you directly to him. In any case, the choice of coordinates is up to them. And try to get it back before the enemy does anything. Good luck, Chin Yu thought about what he had heard. The deployment of the orcs was complete. Meanwhile, Chin Yu fell down beside them. The orcs stood with their spears and in front of them, Chin Yu lay with his head slightly raised. He was looking forward and blurted the hell out. The chief pointed his finger at the demons and ordered them to be caught. They were on the offensive against the demons. One of them said that finally, he was hungry for battle. While the demons were gathering, Chin Yu quickly ran off in the other direction away from everyone. The demons spoke among themselves that they could not fall foul of it. The other answered that was true. And demons will never be slaves. Someone shouted, Rabs for crying out loud, just as the spear hit him. The demons were attacked from a variety of weapons. The head demon was screaming to get their asses kicked. Hearing such a thing, Chin Yu realized that only idiots would sign up for such a thing and ran away from them. He ran screaming, hurry up, we have to get out of there. He quickly ran to some house. I opened the door quietly, went inside quickly. Chin Yu stood outside the door and looked through the crack of the uncovered doors while hiding. He heard someone shouting for them to find him. He stood there pondering. If he reveals himself, he won't be able to escape. There was no one there to help him. Chin Yu heard something and thought for a moment. Someone touched his horn. He called out loudly who was here. In front of him stood an all-black girl with a gag in her mouth. He looked over and exclaimed, Ah, that's who, don't panic. He's not going to do anything to her. And he's on his way out. The girl fell to the ground. Chin Yu told her to be quieter, but she only made a sound. Her eyes were filled with tears. He crouched down beside her, asking if she wanted to say anything. Chin Yu tapped her forehead with his bent palm and said that he had no intention of listening. The guy stood in front of the chained girl and said he preferred silence. The next sentence came to him about checking if their prisoner was still alive. Chin Yu grumbled. He looked around in panic. He had to hide, but there was nowhere to hide. The muzzle of some kind of weapon appeared in the ajar door. They went inside, checked on the girl and said that everything was fine. She was here. The other one sighed and said thank you. One said that he thought the best way was to ask the knights to look after her, but on the other hand, everything was pretty safe there, so it was a no-brainer. Another said that unlike them, the knights were more respected by the population. Chin Yu was on the ceiling and realized that he shouldn't get involved because he wouldn't earn any points, but Aunt Yuna might as well kill him accidentally. The other continued to say that the mayor and his cronies had long disliked them, so they wouldn't ask for help. Chin Yu was barely holding on and wouldn't be able to hold on for so long anymore. And underneath, the conversation continued, that he knew there was no point in thinking about such a thing, but they would work on how to regain respect. These two spoke next. The mayor of the city changes every three years, so the reputation of the troops is his last concern, especially since knights are a hereditary profession. The other answered him that he'd trust the knights more than a bunch of civilians anyway. Chin Yu realized that his matters had become quite bad, just a little more and he would fall. The two men with guns were walking through the house. One asked the other to check the room. Chin Yu jumped from the ceiling to the ground at this time. He stood beside the girl and thought, damn, how the hell is he supposed to hide? He looked at the girl who had opened her eye, and I couldn't help but put my hand on her breast, thinking how big she was. He sat on her stomach on top of her. She was asked to be quiet or she didn't understand human language. Chin Yu thought that he was an idiot, isn't he being too noisy? The door opened abruptly, those two piling in and shouting what the sounds were. They saw the guy was near the harnessed girl and holding her breasts. A moment later, he was behind the two of them, saying he was asking for forgiveness. And then with tremendous force, he pushed their foreheads against each other. The two of them fell to the ground in front of Chin Yu in front of Chin Yu, only managing to make a single sound. The girl was still crouched with a gag in her mouth, looking at him fearfully. The guy moved closer to her, asking if she had anything to say. She mumbled. He pulled the gag from her mouth, asking what her last word would be. 
and the girl started saying she was a demon with boiling blood. Chin Yu queried if it was true that she had boiling blood. She said yes, and that is why he must save her. He didn't believe her, asked how she would prove it. What kind of evidence? She replied that if those two could testify, they knew who she was. He seriously asked if there was physical evidence. She confirmed that there was too. Demons with this feature have V-shaped horns. Chin Yu could understand her. She had been captured anyway, so what good was she? The girl replied that they were just lucky. If the one wanted to, they could work together. In the past, demons like him weren't worthy of her slippers. He started choking her by the throat. She was scared. The boy grinned, saying that she had piqued his curiosity. Did she know that demons gained their abilities by eating other demons? He kept squeezing her neck and she screamed at what he was doing. Let go now. He said it was one way to learn new skills. The guy was choking the girl. She was screaming let go and save her. Chin Yu turned his head at the sound. He was asked what this horn demon was doing. Suddenly other demons appeared in the room ordering her to let go. The demons were trying to catch up with Chin Yu. One of them said it was valuable booty. He couldn't give it up. Chin Yu walked closer to the girl, looking into the demon's eyes. Chin Yu smiled slyly at the demon and said that he wanted to fix the girl's necklace, for it had loosened. The demon lifted the girl in the air, telling the guy that he had done well. The demon was carrying the girl in his arms, the others following behind him. The one was telling them to keep going as the warlock was about to open the portal. The boy realized that he just wanted to kill him. The bony demon was coming out of the door of the room. They tried to catch him in the crosshairs. He was now clearly visible in the scope as he walked forward a bit. The next second a gunshot rang out, the bloody bony demon falling to the floor. The other demons watched in horror as their leader was killed. The demon girl was in one of their arms. They were furious at that moment. Chin Yu thought that it didn't take long for the reaction to kill the bony demon. From the end of the corridor towards the demon with the girl in his arms, the other demons behind with Chin Yu, the military men ran towards him, pointing their weapons, shouting don't let them get away. The demons looked intently at the approaching humans. One of them shouted forward and began to put up a fight. While this demon was distracting the military behind his back, the others were already running away, holding the demon girl in their arms. Chin Yu looked around and exhaled loudly in relief but the demon ordered him to be faster. The guy asked the one with the girl to slow down, letting him pass in front. But suddenly he saw something new that he didn't expect. Some force was appearing in front of him. Something was happening. He stopped abruptly silently staring forward at what he had seen earlier. The demon was getting angry, because he was talking to him and he wasn't responding. They saw the shape-shifting elephants that immediately attacked the demon and killed it instantly. The girl was falling from his arms as the elephant werewolves killed the demon that carried her. Chin Yu caught her, saying that this was what he called professionalism. The elephants continued to fight with the other demons behind Chin Yu walking with the girl in his arms. He walked over to the portal and put the girl inside. Someone was yelling, help me. It was one of the demons who said his uncle was running the operation. His uncle. He's going to ask for a generous reward. Chin Yu walked closer to the screaming demon on the ground and looked at the one. Then he lifted his leg high above the skeleton demon's head and kicked it with force shattering all of its bones to pieces. The guy smiled and said he'd ask his uncle to pick out a nicer coffin. The military showed up at the end of the hallway again and saw him. They shouted that here he was and don't let him get away. Chin Yu began to realize that it was getting too dangerous, and it was time for him to get the hell out of there. The picture shows a high-rise building near a park, with the sun shining brightly. The boy walked forward from the portal as his path was blocked by several bone demons. One addressed him, calling him the Horned Devil. He wondered where his nephew was, where he was. Chin Yu began to cry, saying he died in battle. He died without making a sound, as befits a hero. The demon raised his hands in fury, asking if it was true. Chin Yu squinted his eyes in the answer, of course. It's a joke, and he laughed. This guy had a miserable existence. His leg was chopped off to begin with, and before he died, he begged for help. Chin Yu covered his eyes with his hand, saying that unfortunately he could not help him. The dead man's uncle asked, That's how it is. The guy asked where. The girl in the arms of one of those bony ones said, Where is she? The one holding her answered, Miss, you're safe. We're in our headquarters. The other one was worried too, asked if she was awake and how she was feeling. She sat holding her head and said, Who, who is the hero that saved her, she will reward him generously. Chin Yu looked out from behind the bony ones, waved his hand and replied that it was him. She looked up at him in horror, grabbing her neck. And he only laughed. She started screaming very loudly. The scream was so strong that the demons plugged their ears to keep from going deaf. Chin Yu walked up to the screaming girl, hitting her so that she fell down, and the screaming finally stopped. Chin Yu was called a horned demon and asked what he was doing. He was thinking seriously about something. Suddenly, bats appeared. They reported that the humans had activated the teleporter and they were now teleporting to them. The boss asked how they knew where they were. The demons began to panic. 
You could hear them saying that they had released all their prisoners. Another shouted that it could not be. A third, what are they going to do now? One more might kill them all. And Chin Yu thought that the rescue team seemed to have arrived. The command to retreat and immediately go to another headquarters was heard. Chin Yu, the horned devil, was ordered to grab her, and he heads for her. Chin Yu replied to the boss that everything would be done to the best of his ability, and he himself thought that now that the battle had reached its peak, there was no time to waste. One must act according to the plan. They all ran swiftly, with Chin Yu still carrying the demon girl on his shoulder. He pointed his hand toward the entrance to the room and shouted in there, but he himself began to accelerate sharply to run faster. He and the girl on his shoulder ran faster than anyone else, and now he was already running up to the door of the room. He ran inside and yanked the door shut. The boss took great umbrage, saying, Hey, horny. He stopped at the entrance, but the doors forcefully closed added to this boss's sides and crushed his skull. Running inside with the demon girl on his shoulder, Chin Yu was greatly surprised to see the head demon and mumbled this. It was that head demon berserk. The one asked Chin Yu that he just took the door in front of his face and closed it. Chin Yu couldn't understand what he was talking about. What did he care? Chin Yu started to lower the demon girl to the ground from his shoulder. He thought that the transition probability was not high. Otherwise, the orcs would have been there too. He set the girl on the ground and asked that their mission to save her was true. The demon berserk asked the guy to give it to him, and his reward will be well deserved. But the fellow replied that he was accustomed to be primarily a villain, not a gentleman, so that if they did not agree about the price, he smiled and pressed her so that she arched, and he went on to say that he would keep her and enjoy her himself. Demon Berserk offered to give him the essence of a high-level demon, which would increase the durability of his demonic armor. Chin Yu hesitated for a moment. Essence interrogated that demon. The demon continued to bargain, or another entity that would increase the healing itself. Would he be satisfied with that? The guy was still holding the girl in his arms and thought he didn't like the arrogant tone of his and what Circa was saying. Barring his opponent's high status, what he was offering could very well be some cheap stuff. All he could think was that he was confused. And the girl opened her eye. She screamed, no, too much. He was interested in what the self-defense and self-repair abilities were. The girl started ooing and aang, and the demon had bloody snot running down his throat. The guy couldn't make up his mind, but who knows? He looked confidently at the berserk demon and said he had made his decision. His hand squeezed the girl's breast with force. Suddenly, she started to spin a little. Toth asked her what was wrong. The demon girl nestled her head against his shoulder and said he wasn't bad. She kissed the guy, and the demon coughed to remind her of its existence. Demon Berserk was wiping his bloody nose, and the girl stood hugging the guy. The demon wondered what the man had chosen. Chin Yu said that he wanted everything. If that person wanted him to give her back, then let him give everything. Demon Berserk lowered his head, thinking about what the boy had said. Chin Yu grasped the sword with words to weigh what is more important to you, and brought the sword up to the girl's chest, and the girl said the demon was capable of doing it himself. The demon looked at them in silence, thought about the proposal. Next, the demon berserk raised his hand and said, Okay, he agrees. Chin Yu stretched out one hand to gain strength while the other hand held the girl. The demon held out his hand with the words, Give it back. Chin Yu smiled and said that he had one more requirement in him. The demon flared up, shouting out that he wasn't done yet. Demon berserk shouted that the horned one was taking on too much. Chin Yu held the girl's waist with one hand while the other held the power he had received. The second thing he asked was to tell her how to use it all. The demon asked the one who didn't know how to absorb essences. The girl turned to the boy and whispered that she would teach him. Chin Yu looked into her eyes, asking if she would teach him. The girl replied that any demon who grew up in purgatory would know how to do it. Her fingers guided her breasts as she continued that devouring each other's flesh and essence was the ability of demons. She said that once an opportunity comes along, you should seize it. And also, if you add her bodily fluid, the fusion will go faster. And she wanted to lick him with her tongue. She leaned toward him. But Chin Yu slapped her, turning her away from him. She stood there, tucked into something and whispered that this was the first time she'd ever played a game like this. And then what happened? He said to stand like this. He thought about what was happening, and shoved the ball with force into his mouth, chewing. Got a message from the system. Self-healing blood and flesh medium. Armor power medium. He was happy to have such a great thing. Chin Yu asked the demon if he still had such a thing. The one thought that ordinary demons took three months to digest a demonic essence. How did he manage to absorb it so easily? And the guy got increased energy from the demon's envy. Demon Berserk said he was afraid he'd die by consuming another one. The system was giving out hate messages. The energy from this only made Chin Yu's energy rise. Maybe he was offended that the one had made him hate him. He hesitated. No, the system tells him it's someone behind him. There is someone behind him. Chin Yu started to cover himself in armor. 
but some of the sharp points still plagued him. The girl squealed. Chin Yu was lying on the floor in blood. She lowered herself to the floor beside him and asked how he was. But the armor had come too late and now it would take time to recover. One of the demons appeared above her, said that was it. And the girl shouted fearfully that it was him. And standing up, she answered menacingly that he should not touch her servant. The latter replied that the lad should not have touched his tribesmen. And now, he raised his sword upward and continued that he would pay for his rudeness. The girl glared at him with anger, spreading her arms out to the sides as if to protect him. Demon Berserk jumped into the fray, saying that she was a scarce resource, you can't dispose of her at will. But the attacker didn't care about the girl. He grabbed her hand, telling her that she would go with him. The girl screamed that she didn't want to. She broke free and ran towards Chin Yu, shouting the word guy. She bites down on her finger and turns to him. She knows she doesn't like him, but it was always emotion that drove the blood-boiling demons. She leaned toward him, took his head in both hands, and began to move closer. He looked at her and couldn't understand what she was going to do. Leaning toward him, she touched her lips to his. They kissed. Chin was lying on the ground. The girl shouted after him not to forget her. The system informed the guy that a new demon power had been absorbed. The blood boiling rose to a special level. The horned monster shouted to his rival that he could do whatever he wanted. The girl beside him screamed fearfully. The demon was very surprised. He turned around and noticed that the protagonist had gotten to his feet. The white bone demon held a sword in his hands. He shouted to the guy that it was time to get back to their issue. Chin pointed his hand with metal claws against the demon. He shouted to the monster that it could attack. The demon lunged at his opponent. The girl was startled to see everything around her flying apart. The monster swung his sword and chopped off the protagonist's steel claws. Chin looked angrily and angrily at his opponent. He prepared to attack. The white demon looked at the boy with a predatory gaze and prepared to attack. Chin swung his burning fist to strike his opponent. The protagonist struck the white demon with a swinging arm punch to the body. The monster swung back around and pounded his hands into the guy's body with all his might. Chin felt very battered and exhausted after the blow. The white demon looked at the guy angrily and said that he was stronger than normal horned ones. The monster swung his left arm and decided to strike his opponent one more time. The protagonist saw someone run in from the side of the room. He turned around. Chin abruptly bounced to the side. The white demon remained at a distance. Gunshots were heard in the demon's direction. Small explosions appeared around him. A group of fighters with guns were shooting at the monster. One of them shouted that they should destroy the demons and avenge their comrades. The demon bounced to the side after the shots. It prepared to attack the humans in return. The monster launched a huge spear at his opponents with a great swing. The spear struck the warriors in flight. They were blown to pieces immediately after the attack. The protagonist swung his arm around and realized he had a chance against the demon. Chin swung his fist at the demon's face to knock him down. The monster asked angrily at the man. Did he really think he could penetrate his armor? Chin activated a special skill called blood boiling. Chin prepared to finish off the monster with a strong hand punch. The guy clenched his hand. He concentrated fully before striking. The protagonist looked excitedly in front of him. He decided to hit the monster on the head. Chin swung his hand to knock the white demon on the head with a swing to knock him off his feet. The demon grudgingly shouted to the protagonist that he was only level 2. He wouldn't be able to hurt him. The monster saw that the man had activated the demonic armor. The warrior's body boils blood in exchange for a short flow of power. When all the blood is burned, the warrior will die. Chin looked angrily at the monster. He said to get used to it. The protagonist accelerated for another attack against his opponent. Chin ran up and smashed the warrior's fist on his head with all his strength. The protagonist landed several powerful hand strikes on the white demon's body. The wars were very surprised. They couldn't understand why the demons were fighting each other. Chin felt a huge surge of strength. He prepared to strike the monster one more time. The protagonist accelerated and punched the white demon with all his might. After a tremendous blow, the demon flew outside and punched the ceiling with it. Something fell from the roof of the building onto the floor. People around were very frightened. The warriors looked around. They saw the demon's remains falling to the floor from above. A monster mask lay on the floor. The warrior staggered due to the fact that the level 6 bone demon was dead. The soldiers were frightened. They couldn't see if they could defeat such a demon. The warriors saw the protagonist slump to the ground from helplessness after the battle. Chin was lying with his eyes closed. One of the soldiers said that the guy looked familiar to them. The warriors were astonished. They realized they saw the horned devil from the school league in front of them. Someone shouted to help the guy. The main character was transported to hospital number 3. A woman and a girl were on their way to check on him. Yuli ran into the ward. She grudgingly called the protagonist by name. A nurse wanted to kill a patient. She put a pillow over the guy's face. The nurse shouted threats at the guy. Yuli put her arm around the woman and told her not to touch Chin. The main character was lying on a pillow with the look of a dead man. Chin waved cheerfully and said goodbye to the nurse. He glanced after her. Yuli led the angry nurse out of the room. 
The system informed the guy that the hate energy had increased by 99 points. The guy thought that it would be shorter for him to recover if he collected energy points. The main character was surprised. The woman came over and said he still finds time to bully. The woman looked at the guy very cheerfully and with interest. She said that it was not as bad as she thought. Chin greeted Auntie Yu Nu. The protagonist didn't understand why the woman came to him. He figured she wanted to use his position to kill him. The woman told the guy that she didn't know if she could kill him if he defeated like a bone demon. Chin smilingly replied to the woman that everything that happened was an accident. I told the guy he wasn't feeling well, but the situation wasn't that dire. The protagonist shook his head fearfully. The woman asked him if he knew why she was here. Yu looked at the guy sternly and wanted to remind him of what he had said earlier. The woman asked sternly to the protagonist, Are there any good ones among the demons? Chin said in a frightened voice that he was very good. Yuna looked at him with great attention. To himself, the boy could not understand where his girlfriend had gone and why she had left him. A group of girls ran in. One of them shouted that the main character was a jerk. Chin was happy to have guests. The girl greeted the woman and said that they were comrades of the main character. She asked the young guests with a smile that they had already met. She asked if they had come to check on Chin. She turned to the girls and said they could have fun. She would go and cook something herself. Chin thought happily to himself that he had been brought in after the woman left. The girlfriends looked at each other silently and angrily. One of them wanted to address the protagonist. The girl slowly and leisurely walked over to the bed where Chin was lying. The girlfriend looked at the protagonist and addressed him by name. The girl excitedly told the head hero that they were very grateful to him. He had sacrificed his life for their sake, and they owed it to him to repay him. The protagonist cynically demanded money from the person he was talking to. The girlfriend replied that they didn't have much money. The girlfriends looked at each other. One of them said that the four of them had made a decision. The girlfriends shoved the girl forward on the main character and said they were giving it to her. The girl was really scared. She fell on the bed with the main character. The warrior turned back to her girlfriends and asked grudgingly, so why was she out of the loop? The guest looked with interest at her friend and said that she blushed. Chin decided to check how his skills had changed after defeating the bone demon. A day later, the guy woke up in his bed. He told himself he could mind his own business. There was a sharp knock on the door. The protagonist asked grudgingly who had come to see him. The beast-like people entered the room. They greeted the guy cheerfully. Chin told his guests that because of his specialty, he was able to defeat a sixth-level bone demon. They listened to him very attentively. The protagonist told his interlocutors that he was now a tidbit for any Univera. He asked the guests, why did they come? Chin looked at the guests and said that he was waiting for their bids. He added that the starting price was 500,000. The monkey man looked at the protagonist with great interest. The wolf said Chin misunderstood them. The eagle shouted very cheerfully that he was offering a bid of 600,000. Chin jumped up and shouted that the eagle had caught the gist of it. He asked, who would bid more than 600,000? The beasts argued angrily among themselves. They raised the stakes. The eagle shouted that he was willing to pay a million. The wolf and the monkey argued angrily with each other. In the end, the wolf offered one million and the monkey 350,000. The wolf repeated his bid of a million and 350,000. He asked the guy if he was ready to join them. He explained that their university wasn't worried about money. Chin shouted to his interlocutor that they had made a deal. The guy repeated that the representative of Tianlun University had made a successful deal for a million and four hundred thousand. The wolf was very surprised. He reminded the man grudgingly that he had offered him a million and three hundred and fifty thousand. The protagonist said that fifty thousand was his commission. He couldn't run the auction for free. The wolf told the man with a smile that he would pay. The wolf happily raised the hand of the protagonist. He said that the teachers at Tianlun University were excellent. The interlocutor told the protagonist that they don't have many students, but their graduates are real diamonds. The main character was surprised. He asked the university representative why they didn't have enough students. The wolf shouted happily to the boy that they had individualized instruction. That's how they could guarantee the student's success. The protagonist ripped his hand out of the Tianlun University representative's hand. Chin grudgingly told Wolf that the deal was off. The guy thought to himself that with individualized instruction, he could only piss off one teacher. It would do him harm. The main character turned around and said he wanted to talk about getting into Luntan Academy. Chin eventually entered. He received more than 1,700,000. Representatives from other establishments also received their share for their silence. The monkey man handed the protagonist a certificate. After being discharged from the hospital, Chin Yu began to rehabilitate. The boy and the girl practiced fighting on the lawn. A military vehicle pulled up and honked. Yu Li and Chin turned around. Bear and a dog in military uniform came out of the car. The girl asked fearfully, What's going on? The dog asked sternly and insistently of the people, Is Mrs. Yuna at home? The main character said that mistress went out somewhere. 
He covered the girl's mouth so that Ta wouldn't tell her that Yu was at home. The guest asked when the lady would be back. The boy replied that the woman would be back in about ten minutes. The dog looked at the humans very angrily and told them to wait. Chin told the guests in a disgruntled voice that the lady would return after a hundred years. The bear held out the letter to the lad. He said the message should be delivered to the lady personally in her hands. The car left with the military men. Chin waved to them. Chin tossed the letter aside on the lawn. The girl looked at him in surprise. She asked the guy why he threw it away. She asked the boy why he had thrown it away. The protagonist explained to the interviewer that the soldiers had delivered the letter right after the demon invasion. The boy reminded the girl that her mother was a famous warrior. The soldiers could come for the woman. Yuli asked fearfully, was her mother going to be taken away? Yuli said that her mother had health problems. She wasn't as strong as she used to be. Yuna couldn't do any good on the battlefield. Chin told the girl that for soldiers, you need an officer with combat experience. A good general in war can reduce casualties. The protagonist reached out his hand and grabbed the letter from the girl's hands. Chin tore up the letter. He told Yuli not to tell anyone about the message. The main character told the girl that he was starving to death. The girl stood looking at the scraps of letter. She decided to take them with her. I sat in my room in the evening and scrutinized the letter. The girl sat at the table. She carefully gathered the letter from the scraps to read. She glued the pieces of paper together with tape. The girl plunged into reading with great attention. The author of the letter greeted the reader. The letter reported that a medium-sized portal was discovered in the northern region today. A space-time wormhole is formed where the barriers are breached. It has various changes inside. The letter reported that this is how invaders enter the world. Unfortunately, few warriors can break through the wormhole. Various dangerous fighters from other dimensions can enter the world. Thanks to the defenders, it's possible to contain the raids. As time goes on, the wormholes will become more numerous. The girl read in the letter that the appearance of the portal is a bad sign. If the other side closes the transmission portal, the northern borders will be raided by demon armies. The girl read in the message that the canal was still not blocked. The message was written by the city administration. Yuli opened the closet where military clothes and battle armor hung. Daughter thought with confidence in her voice she wouldn't let her mom take any chances. Yuli put on her battle armor and headed out. She decided that she would do everything herself. Suddenly the girl noticed some shadow appearing in front of her. Evil Shadow asked the frightened Yuli where she was going. The girl swung her hand with all her might and knocked the stranger. Yuli realized after her hand hit her that she had just hit someone's body. The girl got excited. She realized that the main character had just been in front of her. She felt that she couldn't stop. Yu Li swung a few more punches at the protagonist. Chin silently endured. Yu Li continued to pound the protagonist's chest with all her might with her hands. The girl looked at the guy in surprise and said he had a good defense. Chin grabbed the girl's hand and wondered where she was going. Yu Li told the guy that she was going for a walk. Chin told the sly girl that he wanted to go with her. The girl told the guy she wanted to go out to eat. The main character replied that he wanted to go with her. Yu Li said in a disgruntled voice to the guy that she needed to go to the bathroom. The main character replied that he would go with her. The girl pointed her finger sternly at the guy and said that he couldn't go along with her. The main character said that the news reported that a large number of masters were heading towards the portal. The protagonist asked the girl if she wanted to take her mother's place. She didn't know what to say. Chin asked the girl, could she really stand up to an army of demons? She didn't know what she could say to the person she was talking to. The girl told the guy that even though he's a demon, he won't hurt her. They grew up together and she can trust him. The main character shouted loudly to the side and told the younger aunt that her daughter was going to certain death. The girl was very frightened. Yu Li angrily demanded of the boy that he not say anything to her mother. Confident female footsteps sounded. From the side suddenly approached Yuna. The woman exhaled cigarette smoke and said that she had heard about everything from the commander-in-chief. Yuna said with a smile that her dear children had taken her letter and thrown it away. The guy and the girl were very confused. The mother decided to punish her daughter. She tied her up and gagged her. The woman put metal bracelets on the girl's arms and chained her up. The woman told her daughter to think about her behavior. The protagonist looked at the woman beside him with great excitement and interest. Chin saw that the woman next to him was dressed in elite armor. Yuna told the guy to watch the girl and not to let her leave the room. The main character told the woman that if she helped the warriors, she might die. The woman was holding a sword. She told the guy she needed to close her gestalt. The protagonist watched with excitement as the woman walked off to the side. Yuna thought to herself about Carlos and flames appeared around her. The protagonist got worried. He figured the woman was out for revenge on the man who destroyed her unit. Chin pondered. He didn't understand if he should follow such a parent who gave up his son to his enemies to save himself. The guy looked away. He realized he had one more decision to make. Chin looked at the bound girl. He decided that he would fulfill Auntie Yuna's task. The next day, the main character went into the girl's room and brought her food. He said it was time for breakfast. 
The boy noticed with surprise that the room was completely empty and the window was open. Chin noticed with great surprise that the girl had escaped. On the bed lay the debris of the chain. The protagonist was surprised to realize that the girl had chewed up the shackles and run away. The protagonist headed for the door. He said grudgingly that the girl was causing more problems for him. A portal was shining brightly in the sky. All around on the ground were warriors and various equipment. Beastman stood between the warriors. The protagonist spun around and called out to his girlfriend. Chin was very surprised. He asked the beast, why are they staring at him? The boy waved his hand and explained to the warriors that he was only looking for his sister. The buffalo pointed at the protagonist and said that he was a demon. He demanded that Chin get out. Chin waved his hand and said with a smile to the beasts that he could explain everything to them. The warriors with weapons chased after the protagonist in droves. Chin was frightened as he ran away from the furious beasts. He thought that he hadn't found the girl and now he might get hurt himself. Suddenly the guy was grabbed from the side by his clothes and thrown to the ground. The girl with the sword threw the guy to the ground with a swing. Chin felt pain. The guy on earth lifted his head in surprise and looked at his girlfriend. The girl gestured to her friend to keep quiet. The main character asked Xiao Xiao why is she here. Xiao Xiao explained to the guy that she had an internship here. She demanded that he not pretend. A group of girls came up. They told the protagonist that they hadn't seen him in a long time. Chin explained to his girlfriend that his sister ran away to join the army. He's looking for her. The main character stood surrounded by girls. They stared at him in silence. Xiao Xiao asked her interlocutor if she had seen Yu Li. The friend replied that the girl could use the gates of time and space. The protagonist was surprised that the army was so easy to get into. Xiao Xiao said excitedly that Mrs. Yu Na is here. The protagonist said that if he doesn't bring home Yu Li, his aunt will kill him. The girl jumped up close to the guy and motioned for him to help them with their search. Chin looked excitedly at his interlocutor and confirmed to her that he agreed. The girl asked her friend with interest, Why are they actively helping the Chin? The girl answered her interlocutor that they would then try to make money off the guy. The head of the team was named Hu Di. She asked the protagonist strictly, Does he really want to join them? Chin tensed his muscles. The girl next to him said that the guy had very powerful biceps. Hu Di told the guy in a sly voice that if he wanted to join them, he needed to be checked out. The protagonist along with his girlfriends were very surprised at the words of Hu Di. Hu Di gave the protagonist a stern look and indicated for him to go forward and pick up something. The guy looked closer and saw that the girl was pointing her finger at a huge tank in the street. Chin looked at the tank with excitement and realized that this was not going to be an easy task for him. The protagonist walked up to the fighting vehicle. There were soldiers standing next to him. Chin walked over to the tank and tried with all his might to lift it in his arms. The main character tensed up and was able to lift the tank off the ground with his hands. The girls around them were very excited. They started shouting that Chin Yu was good. The soldiers were amazed. One of them said that the girl had told the guy to lift one of the crates. Another soldier couldn't understand what use they had for a fighter like Chin. The soldiers around marveled at the strength of the protagonist. The girl couldn't understand why Chin had grown so strong. Chin was still standing and holding the tank above his head. The girl shouted to him that he had passed the test. Hu Di threw the protagonist a blindfold and said he was starting today. The main character put on the blindfold. He said joyfully that he would get his sister Yuli back. A general of knights named Raymond held the girl in his arms. He told her to help if she wanted to. Yuli asked Uncle Mon very tearfully to take her in. The man angrily shouted to the girl that he couldn't ignore her weak skills. Raymond told the girl that he told the guard to keep a close eye on her. He explained that the mom must not lose her daughter Yuli. The girl turned grudgingly to Uncle Raymond. She wanted to ask him for something. The military vehicles were moving forward en masse. Xiao Xiao and the protagonist were watching. There were gunshots and explosions in the city. There were traces of fire everywhere above the houses. Soldiers on the ground were running down the street with bags on their shoulders. There were military vehicles standing around. Chin along with other warriors carried large sacks to make barricades. The soldiers were bustling around. The protagonist stepped aside and watched everything carefully. Chin carried the heavy sacks in his arms. He felt that he was having a very hard time. Xiao Xiao handed him a bottle of water. Chin couldn't find his little sister. One of the truck drivers saw something dangerous. He shouted to the other soldiers to watch out. A huge monster with a sword and burning eyes appeared over the city. Someone shouted that there was a giant mutant monster in front of them. The humans were attacked by a giant mutant monster. He was a level 5 fighter. The warriors were firing desperately towards the monster. The monster's body exploded violently. Bullets and shells did not harm it in any way. The soldiers from the tanks were shooting at the monster. One soldier shouted that nothing could hit the mutant. Xiao Xiao sat at the wheel of a small flying machine and steered it. The monster kept crashing everything around it. One of the soldiers was surprised because the quadricopter flew away. 
the protagonist jumped down from the flying machine to hit the monster. Chin activated the powerful armor on his body to protect himself. The demon with burning eyes very angrily looked at the protagonist. Chin flew down from above to finish off the monster with one powerful strike. Xiao Xiao flew up next to the guy on a quadcopter to help him. There was a very strong and powerful explosion. The monster's body was blown to pieces. The soldiers rejoiced. Chin asked with a smile at his girlfriend, could she go faster? Xiao Xiao smiled at her friend and said that he could sit down. The warrior on the truck pointed his finger forward. He said to follow the protagonist along with the girl. The protagonist looked at the information in the system. His demonic armor has been upgraded. Chin thought that he could strengthen his skills and reach the level of a slain mutant. The boy thought happily to himself. He imagined what would happen if he grew 10 meters at once. The main character envisioned himself as a huge, pumped-up monster. Chin saw as if the other warriors were happily looking at him and admiring him. The excited protagonist shouted to himself that he felt a surge of power. The girls looked at the protagonist in amazement. He was happily raising his arms above his head and imagining how strong he could be. The girl was flying the quadcopter at full speed. She was excited to fly it. Chin looked to the side in surprise. He didn't understand why nothing had changed. The girlfriend looked at Chin with surprise. She didn't understand his behavior. The girls looked at their friend cheerfully. Chin felt scared. The protagonist sat there not understanding what had just happened to him. Chin looked anxiously in front of him. He realized that something had gone wrong with him. The protagonist saw in front of him that he was very excited. He couldn't understand what was going on. Some sort of beeping could be heard aboard the quadcopter. Chin realized that someone had come. A woman came in from outside. She thought immediately of the main character. Chin felt very uncomfortable because of his excitement. The protagonist looked at the woman in front of him with great excitement. It was Auntie Yuna. The warrior with the weapon approached and saluted his commander sharply. The woman gave the boy a stern look and reminded him that he was supposed to look after Yu Li. The main character told the woman in an apologetic tone that he had accidentally lost her daughter. Yu Na looked at the guy and realized that he had come to find her daughter. The woman knew that Raymond had already found the girl. The woman sternly demanded of the lad that he leave and not return until he found the girl. Yu Na reached out and sharply grabbed the frightened protagonist by his clothes. The woman pressed the guy against her chest with all her might. He didn't resist in any way. Yuna demanded of the protagonist that he never again agree to do anything he couldn't do. The protagonist slyly asked the woman what would happen if he said yes next time. She threatened the protagonist that he'd die if he ever agreed again. She slapped the guy on the back with her hand. She yelled that he wasn't listening to her. The woman walked away. The main character told himself that he would definitely find the girl. Chin thoughtfully turned to the side and prepared to leave in search of Yu Li. A strange man approached. He addressed the protagonist. Around the stranger stood warriors with weapons. The man's name was Lee Ku. He was the commander-in-chief of District S. He offered the guy a chat. The guy told the commander-in-chief that he lost his sister, but he's sure to find her. Lee Ku waved his hand unhappily. The soldiers at this time pointed their guns at the guy. The commander-in-chief demanded of the protagonist that he begin the search now. Chin gave a military salute to the man and said he was serving the country. He hugged the boy and said that young people are very smart nowadays. The woman watched the protagonist leave with the soldiers. She decided it might already be too late. The commander-in-chief was sitting with a guy in a tent. The man told the commander-in-chief that he had a favor to ask of him. Chin turned around fearfully at the armed soldiers and asked, What kind of request? The man sternly asked his interlocutor if he was ready to hear him out. Chin quickly waved his head at the man and said that he could speak. Commander-in-chief walked over to the map. He told the boy that intelligence had told him the approximate location of the demons. The demons need a key that will leave the space between worlds open forever. They can attack humans at any time. The protagonist asked the man if it was necessary for him to find the key. Lee Ku told Chin that he and the soldiers on the front lines would be a distraction for the demons. The commander-in-chief told the guy he could say no, but he was asking for his help. The protagonist turned aside. He told the man that he needed to think. He looked at the boy with a long and studious gaze. A woman approached the protagonist and said she had assembled a group to get him out of here. Chin looked at his interlocutor and wondered what her chances of victory were. The woman tossed the guy a golden medallion in the shape of a horse's head. She told him to give the medallion to Yu Li when he got out on his own. Chin grabbed the medallion and asked the woman if she would go herself. The woman turned around and answered the guy after a short pause that she wasn't going. Chin told the woman that she was no longer a soldier, and her strength was no longer what it used to be. She stepped aside. She said that the interests of the country come first and personal interests second. The woman told the guy that she wouldn't back down. The main character thought that Yu looked very dazzling to him at that moment. Chin stared intently at the woman's back. He kept pondering her words. The protagonist remembered that Yu Li had once told him something important about the Renaissance. He thought to himself that he had just missed his chance all this time. A car stopped. A girl came to pick up the protagonist. 
The girlfriend from the car turned to the protagonist and told him to ride with her. The main character threw the medallion to the girl. He asked her to give it to Yu Lee. He had some other things to do. The girl in the cab yelled at the guy to get in her car immediately. Chin waved goodbye to his girlfriends and shouted that he was going to die. The girls peeked out of the car. They looked at the protagonist with great excitement. Chin ran into the headquarters and asked excitedly to the LECU at the table. What was their future plan? The commander-in-chief inquired of the lad with great excitement. Does he agree? The man shouted grudgingly to his interlocutor that the chances of victory were very slim. The protagonist spread his hands to the side. He told the man that no one knows how things will go from here. Chin looked away. He said that it could all be because of the beautiful dawn. Lee Ku was surprised because of the guy's words. He knew it was sunset outside now. Commander-in-chief Lee Ku rejoiced at the lad's agreement. He shouted that everything was fine. The man put his hands on the boy's shoulders. He said they would change the plan now. The commander-in-chief gave the guy a small balloon. He said that with this balloon you can teleport up to 10 kilometers. It takes 3 seconds to activate. The man also gave the guy a knife. Such a knife can store energy for attack. The main character had a bunch of stuff in his hand. He figured no more than half of it would work. Lee Ku told the guy he had a day to confirm his location. Then they would launch an attack. The commander-in-chief explained that if there was no news from the boy in a day, they would begin to break through. Lee Ku said that it was necessary to destroy the passage at all costs. The man gave the boy a stern look and told him that the success of the operation depended entirely on him. Chin inquired of the commander-in-chief. How would he get lost in a new place? The man grabbed his hand. He told the protagonist there was one way. Li Ku swung his fist to punch the protagonist in the face. The soldiers at the door got very excited. They heard the noise of fighting from inside. There was a long metal vegetable garden near the building. Soldiers were standing near it. Li Ku shoved the guy aside and told him angrily not to dare attack him. The protagonist turned very unhappily toward the man. He didn't like his way. Li Ku angrily demanded of a subordinate to look after the protagonist. Chin was put in a cage. The monsters in the cage were pleased. One of them asked the protagonist what he had done to the man. Chin explained to the mutant that he had done what he had to do. The man caught him, and so he had to fight back. One of the monsters asked the guy if he had a key to the cage. Chin smiled and said back with a smile to the demons that he didn't have the key. The soldiers snapped out of their seats and ran briskly toward the direction they had been suddenly summoned somewhere. Chin looked slyly across the cage. He confirmed to the monsters that he didn't have the key. The protagonist grabbed the bars of the cage. He decided to use his hands to break them off. Chin spread the bars of the cage wide apart. He shouted to the monsters that he could handle it. The demons were surprised. They knew that the bars of the cage could withstand the blow of a fourth-generation monster. They did not understand how the protagonist was able to bend into arms with his bare hands. Chin calmly walked out of the cage. He asked the monsters, will they follow him? The main character was walking down the street accompanied by mutants. He couldn't understand why there was no one around. The demon said grudgingly as the humans found the location of their army and traveled there. Chin asked excitedly to the demon. So how does he know that they have been discovered? The monster answered the guy that they were sent to the front lines on a reconnaissance mission. So they know more than the others. He added that they need to report everything to the leadership. The protagonist slyly replied to the monster that he was completely right. To himself, he was glad he had succeeded. At this time, in a tent at the edge of the forest, one of the knights came to report to the demon. Karen was sitting at the table by the book. Pero told her that he had important information for her. A woman got a message on her phone. She was warned about a traitor demon, Chin Yue. Karen told her subordinate to let the guy in. The demoness looked angrily at the protagonist and demanded that he tell her his name. The guy calmly and with a smile told his interlocutor that his name was Da Wei. The demoness asked the guy, what's his power? He said he's still in the process of growing. The protagonist thoughtfully repeated the letter indices of strength for his interlocutor. She listened to him attentively. The demoness looked at the boy and reminded him that she was asking about him. The protagonist told the girl he was 18. She gave him an incredulous look. The demoness sternly told the protagonist that she was checking with him about his age. The protagonist told his interlocutor with a smile that he was really 18 years old. The demoness looked at the guy angrily and said that he was definitely hiding something. The girl was studying the protagonist with a very attentive gaze. She suspected something. Chin looked at his companions with a smile. He wanted to convince them of his sincerity. The knight knocked the guy with all his might. Chin flew far out into the street after the powerful blow. The protagonist was blown far out into the street. After the fall, a puff of dust rose next to him. The demoness said angrily and grudgingly, the protagonist turned out to be an idiot. The knight thought to himself that he felt an unusual sensation from the touch. The warrior thought to himself that something was wrong. The protagonist was lying near the wreckage of the tent. Chin stood up and raised his hand. 
He said that he had constantly heard things like this before. The knight drew his sword from its sheath. He prepared to attack the boy. The protagonist's hand was huge. He told the warrior it was very late. The protagonist defended himself with his arm against a powerful sword strike from a warrior. The girl watched the protagonist carefully. She saw that the guy's speed was not inferior to the fallen knight. Karen decided even to herself that the main character might be stronger. Chin at this time pushed off the ground for another attack. The protagonist swung his arm to strike the knight. The girl thought it would be easy to defeat the chin. The protagonist managed to dodge sharply to the side. Feather hit the ground with his sword. The protagonist swung around to strike the knight with his huge arm. Chin thought joyfully to himself that victory had come for him. He prepared to knock his opponent down. Karen wrapped her long tail around the guy's arm to stop the blow. The main character turned around in surprise. The girl shouted to him that he had passed the selection. The protagonist stood and glared angrily at his rival. They were both silent. Commander Callan looked at the protagonist and told him to follow her. The girl looked back with great suspicion. Chin at this time followed her. The girl sat down at the table. She mistook the protagonist for a person named Dawa. She revealed that a traitor named Chin Yu was fighting on the enemy's side. He managed to decapitate a level 6 bone monster. The girl said that Chin has awesome demonic armor and regeneration ability. She personally tests everyone who comes to them. The protagonist told the horny girl that he fully understood the measures she'd taken. Callan looked at her guest and asked him slyly if he wanted to work for her. Chin looked at his new acquaintance with great eagerness. He said he would love to work for her. The girl thought to herself that her guest was very presumptuous. Out loud, she said that they had already found a portal that people knew about. Both sides are trying to capture it. Callan asked the main character for help. Chin answered the girl with confidence in his voice that he would do anything for her. Callan looked at the protagonist and handed him the bundle. She said he should gather his men as much as possible. She asked the guy if he wanted to be treated like cannon fodder. Chin held the bundle in his hand. He answered the woman with great confidence that he understood everything. The main character came out of the tent very excitedly. He thought his plan was coming to fruition. Chin picked up his phone. He decided that he would now send a message to his aunt. The protagonist looked at his phone in surprise and noticed that there was no coverage in that location. The guy ran into the tent and called out to the woman. Callan asked grudgingly to the guy, what else does he want? He asked the woman if there was any reception around here. Callan told the guy that there were special jammers in this place. They prevented the enemy from intercepting their information. Special equipment was required to connect. The girl took out a demon phone. She told the guy that he could use the special channels to contact the demon officers for any issue. The protagonist rejoiced. He reached out his hand to take the phone in his hand. Callan asked the guy, What is he doing here? Chin was taking a picture of the document on his phone at the time. The girl looked at the guy in surprise. She couldn't understand what he was doing. Callan got angry. She yelled at the guy to stop. Chin continued to take pictures. The girl rushed with all her might and grabbed the protagonist to stop him. Callan grabbed his phone from the guy to scrutinize it. The woman examined the machine closely and realized the guy had an enemy phone. Callan asked angrily to the protagonist, Is he really an enemy spy? At night in the enemy camp in the commander's tent, Callan was interrogating a guy. The girl accused the protagonist of using the enemy's phone. Chin continued to make excuses. Callan looked at the boy with great excitement. She didn't know what she could say to him now. Chin smiled at his interlocutor. An original thought had occurred to him. Chin persisted in telling his interlocutor that she was procuring enemy items. Callan decided to justify herself. She told the guy in a scared voice that she didn't have anything like that. Chin looked angrily at his interlocutor and extended his hand towards her. She was very frightened. Callan got really excited. She saw the guy close up and reach out to her. The protagonist found on the girl's body and snatched a small remote control device from her. Callan was very much startled and frightened. She looked at the boy anxiously. The main character pressed a button and the girl found herself on a huge massage chair. It was an enemy object. Chin continued to switch buttons on the remote. He told the girl that she knew how to enjoy life. After another press of a button, the girl was embraced on all sides by various devices. Callan felt very good. She whispered incoherently about the situation on the front lines. Chin switched the button on the remote to a stronger mode for the girl. Callan couldn't speak anymore. She yelled at the guy to stop just for a minute. Chin felt very much agitated. The agitated soldiers stood beside him and looked at the girl. The protagonist turned to the warriors in surprise and said they understood. The girl came to her senses. She told the guy it wasn't the same. Callan explained that you can't use the massage chair to contact your enemies. The main character explained to the surprised girl that he was working undercover. He wanted to tell her about the disguised weapon. Chin took out a small round mirror from his pocket. It looked like an ordinary watch on a chain. The guy decided to press the button. The protagonist pressed a button on top of the watch. It activated a special function. 
There was a massive explosion and the warriors around the protagonist were scattered to the sides. The girl got very angry at the main character when she saw her burnt-out soldiers. The guy said he did it all by accident. Chin took out a ballpoint pen from his pocket. He said it could turn into a gun. At this time, a water demon was pouring fire outside. The protagonist took the cap off the pen. There was a bright electric discharge. Chin said that in this way, an electric current could be launched. He used lightning to strike the water demon. The protagonist told the girl that he used the phone for its intended purpose. It proves that he is completely clean. Callan looked angrily at the destroyed water demon. Callan shouted angrily at the guy for taking her for a dope. Sharp spears appeared from above the girl. Chin looked at the sharp spear with fright. He realized that he was in danger. The protagonist looked at the girl with great excitement. He realized he had to get out of it. Chin abruptly pulled his girlfriend towards him and kissed her. She was very surprised. Chin kissed his companion passionately. She didn't expect it. The protagonist passed a memory pill to the girl through her mouth. With this drug, any memory can be imposed within 30 seconds. Chin pulled the girl's face away after kissing her. She was coming to her senses afterwards. Callan looked at the protagonist with excitement. She didn't say anything to him. The protagonist exhaled relaxedly to himself. He decided to turn to the girl. Chin said in a confident voice so Callan never doubted him. The girl was in a fog. She wasn't talking. The main character told her he had to go. The protagonist noticed he was met by warriors near the entrance. He got very excited. The soldiers rushed to the protagonist. They shouted that they would now always be at his side. Callan came to her senses completely. She looked around and couldn't figure out where everyone had gone. The girl stepped outside. She looked around with great interest. Callan saw destruction all around. She didn't understand what had happened or where her army had gone. The girl very fearfully decided to herself that an enemy might have come to this place. Callan looked to the side and noticed a fire demon lying on the ground. The commander demanded of demon that he wake up. He began to come to his senses. The demon complained to the girl that the guy took everything with him. After that, the monster managed to hide, and Chin escaped. Callan asked her interlocutor, why didn't he come to her earlier? The demon said that as soon as he got to the door, a guy knocked him over the head with a stick. Callan said angrily that they had put up a solid defense so enemies couldn't get near them. The girl screamed very loudly. She saw the ruins of her military base all around. Chin returned to his base and ran straight into his commander's tent. The protagonist handed the commander a document, then he suddenly sneezed. Chin said in an apologetic tone to the man that he might be remembered by someone right now. Liku was very worried. He read the document and wondered about the number of fighters in the Karen army. Chin replied to man that all the enemy fighters were here. The commander looked sternly at the protagonist and asked, What happened to Karen? The protagonist coughed. He had something important to say. Chin looked at the man and said with a smile that he himself was a Karen. Li Ku was very much astonished. He looked at the protagonist with great amazement. The warriors around were also surprised. They couldn't understand the words they heard from the guy. Li Ku was very startled. He looked at the protagonist with great disbelief. Chin said in a confident voice to the man that he was indeed a desire demon. The main character pointed to his muscles and said cheerfully that he was born to fight. The warriors around looked at the guy with great surprise. They didn't understand what he was saying. Chin came up from behind and knocked one of the soldiers with a strong punch. He was frightened. The warriors became friendly and began clapping for the protagonist, expressing support. Li Ku looked at the guy and said that he couldn't be a wish demon. The protagonist ran up and grabbed the commander by his clothes. He didn't like the fact that the commander was questioning his origins. The main character said angrily. He looks shabby, but he could very well be a wish demon. The man told the guy fearfully that he couldn't look like a desire demon. Chin shouted angrily to his interlocutor that he would sue him. The commander told the guy that wish demons don't get into fights. Li Ku added that only women are wish demons. There are no men among them. The main character was angry. He didn't like that, the commander didn't like his gender. Chin completely came to his senses and calmed down. He placed the man calmly on the ground. The protagonist fell silent. He wondered what else he could say to the man. Chin looked slyly at Li Ku and said in a cheerful voice that he was actually androgynous. The man got scared and agitated. He pulled out his gun and looked angrily at the boy. The main character decided to justify himself to a man. He wanted to say that he was a fallen man. A warrior ran up from the side and reminded the guy about the fallen knight. Fei Yu Chin repeated the name. The protagonist calmed down. He straightened his clothes and prepared to leave. The protagonist took a helmet with horns from one of the warriors and put it on his head. Chin stood in a fighting stance and said that the highest race among the demons were the fallen knights. The protagonist slyly looked around and asked, Does anyone have any questions? The man was astonished. He realized that the fallen knight named Fei Yu was the commander of a completely different camp. The guy swung around and banged the commander's metal helmet on his head with all his might. Li Ku lay unconscious on the floor after the blow. 
Kin said he was leaving and asked the warriors to guard him. The main character was standing by the door. He was worried before he went in. Chin went inside the tent. He saw that all the level 7 demons were sitting there. The protagonist scrutinized the demons at the table. He figured it was all a coincidence. The demon with white hair looked at the incoming guest with great disbelief. The protagonist greeted the demons and said that he was the fallen knight of Fei Yu. The white demon grudgingly told the protagonist that his skills would be useless to them. Chin looked silently at his interlocutor. He decided that the guy would get what he deserved. The protagonist stuck his hand in his pocket. He decided to try a surprise attack on his opponent. Chin ran with a big burst of speed and put his fist forward against the guy. The white demon calmly blocked the blow and asked cheerfully to the protagonist, Is that really all he can do? Chin shouted he used the surprise effect. He poured various spices into the demon's face. The guy covered his eyes with his hands and screamed loudly. The pepper hit his face. The protagonist got very excited and kept pouring various potions on the demon. A bright light appeared inside the monster tent. It illuminated everything around it. The white demon lay unconscious against the wall. The protagonist shook his hands off happily. The monster said that Fei Yu had shown them his power. He added that they would trust him to intercept enemy troops. The demon asked his interlocutors, Any objections? All the monsters with burning eyes sat quietly at the table. There were no objections. Chin thought happily to himself that he had finally been noticed. He was pleased. The protagonist found himself on the battlefield in disguise. He thought he'd been made cannon fodder. Chin and his colleagues were lying on the mountainside. They were gazing intently into the gorge. There was a group of cars driving in the gorge. The soldier asked the guy if they needed to stop the enemy cars. Chin looked at the phone. He told the warrior that they would let the enemies pass. The protagonist called his girlfriend to get information. Xiao Xiao was sitting at her computer. She told the guy they got his message. They were already breaking through the defense line. The protagonist tells her that a bunch of demons are breaking in and they need to be stopped. There was a huge number of ravenous monsters running through the gorge after the cars. Chin jumped to his feet. He shouted angrily to the warriors that they should run forward. The protagonist jumped out into the gorge. He shouted to the frightened rider that this was his territory and to defeat him if he wanted to pass on. The rider angrily shouted at the guy to get out of the way. He explained that they had orders. Chin looked very angry at his opponent. He didn't feel like getting out of the way. The protagonist swung his fist and ran at the rider at full speed. Chin ran up and kicked the horse's body with all his might. It threw the guy out of the saddle. The protagonist angrily said that no one would make another move in his direction. He demanded that the rider get the hell out. The rider shouted to the protagonist in a frightened voice that he was a demon. Chin told the stranger that the demon couldn't pass through either. The road was blocked. The rider shouted that he had orders and needed to go back. The protagonist told his rival that the order was his problem. He himself is guarding the road. The rider got angry. He screamed at the head hero that he was going to kill him. Very quickly, the stranger's hand turned into a huge predatory paw. The rider rushed at full speed to strike the protagonist. The stranger swung his demonic paw at the guy's stomach. Chin remained standing. After a mighty and fruitless blow, the guy's arm broke inside. The protagonist responded by starting to beat the rider from all sides with his fists. The battered stranger yelled for the guy to stop. He said that Chin was indeed a demon. At which time the rider's cell phone rang. He stopped beating his opponent. The main character grabbed the phone and yelled to the caller that they were fighting here. He wasn't happy that someone was calling them. Chin listened carefully. His interlocutor told him something very important. The protagonist threw the phone at his opponent and said he was called. The rider angrily shouted to the interlocutor that he was busy. He demanded over the phone that they hurry up. The protagonist punched his opponent in the face with all his might. He didn't like what he said. The stranger explained to the protagonist that the phone was to blame. Chin told the guy to block unknown numbers next time. The protagonist continued to beat up his opponent. He shouted that the rider would answer for everything. The guy listened to the phone and told the main character that he was called. Chin was very surprised and amazed. He stopped beating his opponent. The protagonist grudgingly grabbed the phone. His interlocutor told him that several enemy troops had broken through their line of defense. Chin was now coming under the command of another demon. The protagonist listened with great attention to the person on the phone. Chin realized that the person on the phone was telling him about the beaten rider. The protagonist noticed with excitement how the warriors approached him from the side. They looked at him carefully. Chin hefted the stranger onto his shoulder and told the warriors to all follow him. Warriors with guns stood around and looked at the protagonist with great surprise. After a while, a lad accompanied by soldiers was walking through a sunny valley. Chin was completely absorbed in his thoughts as he walked. His companions walked beside him. The stranger regained consciousness on the stretcher. He opened his eyes and looked around. Chin slyly told his interlocutor that he had woken up after the operation. He would be a woman from today. The warrior rose abruptly on the stretcher. He shouted to the protagonist to let him go. The protagonist gave a military salute and said his name was Demon Dawa. 
He added that he was ready to listen to the commander's orders. The guy was very surprised. He looked at the protagonist with a scrutinizing gaze. The warrior irritably decided that the protagonist had come into his possession. The protagonist smiled cheerfully. He wanted to tell his interlocutor something important. Chin shouted with great attention to the stranger that he was the one who was his commander. The warrior was very surprised. He looked at the protagonist with great consternation. The stranger squinted his eyes and looked at the protagonist very unhappily. The guy on the stretcher told the protagonist that his name was Caress. He added that Chin was the child of the Demon of the Bloody Blade. The warrior asked Kin how he got here. The protagonist became worried. He realized that his nominal father was a Bloodblade Demon. Chin decided that he might be related to Caress. The protagonist asked his interlocutor, Is his father good in battle? The Crest cheerfully informed that his father is a great demon with his own city. Chin asked his interlocutor how strong his father's army was. Cress replied to the protagonist that he had never even encountered such a thing. The protagonist thought to himself that the man who was hated by Yuna was not so outstanding against the background of other demons. Caress looked at his interlocutor and said he wanted to make a welcome gift for him. The warrior held out to the protagonist a bright and precious gem in his hand. The protagonist examined the pebble carefully. He decided that his friend should get him something more serious to like. A green demon flew across the sky, yellow flames raging around him. The monster was walking on the ground on four legs. Yellow lightning bolts were all around him. There was a very big explosion. A frightened man was blown aside. The protagonist was pacing. He needed to get to the portal as soon as possible. Chin saw a very bright portal in front of him. There were a lot of people around near the entrance. The protagonist thought to himself that there was a war going on that was destroying lives. Chin came up behind his friend. He had something very important to say. Caress turned unhappily to his interlocutor. He didn't understand what he wanted from him. Demons in a clearing surrounded a lone warrior. The protagonist noticed the body of a headless man. The main character got worried. He realized he had to help his new friend somehow. Chin walked up behind his acquaintance and put his hand on his shoulder. The main character smiled at his friend. He wanted to tell him something. Chin held out a whole bunch of his magical artifacts to his acquaintance. The protagonist told his friend that these things were meant for him. He promised that Caress would get rich with these things. The guy thanked the protagonist and added that it was time to move forward. The protagonist and his companion met a demon with wings. He was looking at something in a folder. The soldier asked the protagonist if he was a wish demon and had moved to the commander of the Caressa. The main character emotionally shouted that he is the fallen knight of Fei Yu. The soldier slyly told the protagonist that his wife was looking for him. He asked that Chin follow him. The protagonist was really freaked out. He couldn't understand why he wasn't aware that he was married. Chin very slowly and furtively made his way to the door of the structure. The protagonist carefully peeked inside the tent. He wondered who was inside. Karen angrily shouted to the guy that from behind him she was watching the enemy break through the defense line. The main character was running away at full speed. The girl yelled at him to stop. The main character asked a frightened friend to stop a crazy woman. Karen ran up and threw Caress aside with all her might with a powerful punch. Chin looked fearfully at his lying friend. He threatened the woman that when the warrior woke up, it would be the end of her. Karen accelerated from her seat at full speed to hit the protagonist. The girl hit the guy as hard as she could. He flew far away and there was an explosion. Chin came to his senses and lifted himself off the ground. He had already decided that he was dead. The protagonist was sitting there, staring fearfully in front of him. A girl was rushing towards him. An angry Karen swung around to hit the guy. She yelled that she was going to kill him. Chin was very frightened. He noticed the angry rival approaching him. The protagonist picked up the horns on the girl's head with his hands to stop her. Chin held his rival with all his might with his hands on her horns. She couldn't move forward. At which time a very loud signal from a loudspeaker rang out over the neighborhood. Karen was distracted. She realized that she had just heard the sound of a meeting being called. The protagonist shouted to his rival that they were now heading to the spatial hub. The commander shouted very angrily to his subordinates that the entrance was right in front of them. The commander commanded the warriors that they would attack the enemies where they did not expect them. He added that everyone should move in small groups. The protagonist was standing there listening intently. Karen was next to him. He asked the commander to wait for a moment. The guy tossed a metal circle in front of him. He said he had to take protective measures. One of the warriors shouted that the guy was holding an energy barrier device above his hands. It was a creation of the enemies. Caress smiled and confirmed to his opponents that he was holding a creation of his enemies. The guy told the demon that there was little power in that one, but he had keen eyesight. The demon asked the guy how he got such an artifact. Caress thought deeply. He glanced furtively sideways at the protagonist. Chin waved his head at his friend to confirm that he could talk about everything. Caress shouted loudly that he had risked his life to steal this artifact from the enemies. The warriors around him ran up to the guy. They were wondering how the thing worked. Cress tossed the metal circle over his hands. 
He wanted to show its effect. The guy pressed a button in the center of the metal circle. He told the interlocutors that he would open their eyes. Bright lightning bolts flew from the metal circle. The warriors around them were surprised. Chin looked sideways at the surprised demons in surprise and satisfaction. Lightning shone brightly all around. The warriors stood looking up in wonder. Caress shouted joyfully that he had succeeded. One warrior said the circle should have burned blue. The blue glow from the artifact gradually turned bright white. The demon hesitated and said with suspicion that he had seen the color white somewhere before. The metal circle emitted a white light around it. The glow grew brighter and brighter. Suddenly, a warrior with a huge weapon appeared out of the white bundle of light. Gradually, the number of warriors began to increase. They kept coming and coming. The demon said fearfully that the enemy portable portals were in front of them. Soon, all the enemies would be here. The warriors got very angry. They turned around angrily and yelled at the guy that he was a traitor. Caress was very frightened. He didn't know what to say to the demons in his defense. The frightened guy wanted to justify himself. The warrior angrily asked the Cress, Where did the enemy soldiers come from? Chin turned to his boss. He remembered to himself that he had been ordered to activate the thing when he found a target. The protagonist began to wail. He couldn't believe that his commander was a traitor and he didn't know it. Chin shouted that the commander might not have been a traitor because of money. The warriors listened to the protagonist in astonishment. Chin shouted that the guy couldn't turn out to be a traitor with his abilities and demon armor. The protagonist shouted that he believed the boss. One of the warriors shouted to Chin to shut up. He himself was holding on to the Cress's clothes. The soldiers pounced sharply and began beating Caressa with all their might and from all sides. The protagonist stood near the portal. He watched his friend being beaten by soldiers. Sinyu stood near the portal. He turned around and looked at Caress carefully. The protagonist boldly stepped through the portal. He needed to finish his mission. Chin thought happily to himself that he still had his compass. He looked at it carefully. The protagonist was walking and watching the compass carefully. He didn't notice the demon in front of him. Chin didn't notice the obstacle in front of him and slammed his head into the monster with all his might. The protagonist was frightened. He saw a huge and predatory monster in front of him. The demon looked at the boy with interest. He studied him closely with his gaze. The compass in the protagonist's hand started spinning very quickly in different directions. The demon demanded of the protagonist that he give him the compass if he wanted to survive. Chin was scared. He decided to start fighting off the demon as soon as possible. The protagonist drew his knife to attack the monster next to him. Chin very abruptly started attacking the demon with his knife. He shouted for it to stay away from him. The monster stood with a huge wound on his chest. He began to die quickly. The demon slumped to the ground and let out a gasp. The protagonist looked at him carefully. Chin felt the demon's energy absorbed into him. He shoved the knife in. The protagonist saw something suspicious in front of him. He became very interested. The protagonist boldly stepped through the portal. He thought it was just another useless skill. The warriors engaged in a fierce firefight amongst themselves. Bullets flying everywhere and explosions heard. The protagonist was startled to see bullets flying past him. He barely had time to dodge. The protagonist stood and fearfully shielded himself from the bullets flying at him. The animals were very surprised. They could not believe that they saw a man in front of them. The warriors looked up in astonishment. They thought they were facing a demon. The protagonist looked carefully at his compass. He decided to run away from this place. Chin said in a disgruntled voice that it was his own fault for everything that happened to him. The protagonist turned carefully to the side. He decided that the Phantom of the Wars was near him. Chin switched the compass settings. He found himself in the midst of dangerous explosions during the battle. The protagonist switched his compass again. He was transported to the deep sea. After another compass switch, Chin found himself in a very dangerous swamp. The protagonist was embraced by a huge predatory snake. It bit him in the head. The protagonist thought to himself, very frightened, that he was finished. Chin turned to the side and saw a group of warriors with weapons standing beside him. The demons with weapons looked at the man unhappily. They prepared to attack him. The monsters screamed in fright. The protagonist realized he had to escape. Chin looked at his compass with great attention. He realized that he was having trouble using it. The arrows on the protagonist's compass started spinning in all directions. Chin pulled out his knife for protection. One of the monsters shouted very angrily. He prepared to lunge at Chin. The protagonist looked at the demon. He felt himself in very great danger. The guy ran as fast as he could. He decided he had to get away. The protagonist ran away. He decided to get away from the scene of the battle. Chin saw a very big explosion in front of him. He couldn't believe it was possible nowadays. The protagonist ran away. He decided to get away from the dangerous place. People were fighting monsters outside the warehouse. There were bright explosions all around. One monster near the warehouse screamed very loudly. There was a battle going on all around. 
People with weapons fought bravely against the demons around them. The girlfriend looked at Xiao Xiao and told her excitedly that they cannot waste a moment. Xiao Xiao looked in front of her with a confident gaze and shouted to her girlfriends that they should go forward. Suddenly a group of fighting girls jumped out from the side in front of the monster. One of the girls told her friends to get ready for battle. Xiao Xiao concentrated and activated her magic skills in her body before fighting. The girl commanded her girlfriends to get ready to defend themselves. The brave warrior stood in front of the monster and prepared to fight it. The demon looked at the girl and screamed very angrily. He prepared to attack her. The monster accelerated and at full speed and lunged forward at the girl. The demon was surprised. He slammed his hand into a huge rock at full speed. The monster couldn't pull his stuck arm out of the rock. At this time, a weapon was pointed at him from the hole. The demon was surprised to see gun barrels emerge from the stone around him. The monster was being shot at from all sides. Shells were falling everywhere. The demon was unable to defend himself in any way, and the bullets flying from the weapon hit him. The monster couldn't keep up and stand on his feet. He ripped out his hand, which was in the stone. The demon's legs shook. He couldn't fight off the firearm's attack. The monster felt he couldn't stand on his feet. He prepared to collapse to the ground. There were still a lot of gun barrels near the demon. The monster's feet were bound in the ground. The girls with guns approached him closely. The warrior was walking down the road. There was a very large explosion behind her. The girl said to herself thoughtfully to the main character waiting for them. At the time, the Cares kid was in the demon realm. He was drawn to the Grand Palace. Two warriors dragged the exhausted boy to the big throne in the palace. The warriors threw the guy to the ground. He was lying there in front of the throne. Cares looked around fearfully. He knew that someone was about to approach him. Someone from the side walked up and asked the surprised guy if he was looking for him. A horned demon king named Karos entered the room. The boy frightenedly called out to his father. The demon angrily and grudgingly shouted at the guy to shut up. The father pressed the boy's head to the floor with his foot and shouted that he was messing with people. Cress shouted to father that he'd been tricked. He'd been planted and it was Chin Yu who'd done it. The father kicked his son with his foot. He told him angrily that if he had won, he had no questions. The demon said angrily that he wouldn't let Caress go. There was no use for the guy. Caress asked his father to give him another chance. He promised that he would kill the guy and he would definitely succeed this time as he has talent. Demon's eyes opened. He looked at his son very angrily. The father grabbed the huge sword with his hand. He shouted to his son that he really did have talent. The demon swung with all his might and suddenly severed the guy's head. The demon angrily shouted to his son that he could realize his talent as an addition to someone. The demon cheerfully said that Chin possesses self-healing blood Yi flesh. He is also a descendant of the king. The demon headed for the palace exit. He said he would talk to the protagonist like father to son. Late evening came. Men fought demons on the battlefield. Evening on the battlefield, the demons continued to try to crush their opponents. Shots rang out from the side and bullets flew in the direction of the demons. The gun-wielding monster shouted to his associates to get ready quickly. Yuna showed up with a huge gun. She told everyone to back off because she was coming. The demons got scared. They started to group up and move away from the woman. She was alone in the valley, waiting for her main rival to appear. A demon appeared. He shouted to the woman that they could fight one-on-one -on -one and set things straight. Yu swung her sword. She shouted to the monster that he would be one of the demons she would kill. The monster looked at his rival and asked her angrily, what could she do? She said that the head of the last demon she killed was hanging in her mother's room as a decoration. The demon spun sharply in place and disappeared from the woman's sight. Yuna held her sword in her hands. She realized that her opponent was about to appear beside her. The monster jumped up and swung his sword at the woman in flight. The demon looked at the young woman very angrily. He prepared to attack her again. Yuna saw several copies of the demon around her. She didn't know which one was the real one. At that time, a sword-wielding demon with blonde hair flew at the woman from above. A guy appeared behind the woman and told her angrily that she was finished. The guy swung his sword to strike the woman behind him with it. Yuna heard someone behind her and immediately prepared to fight back. The woman swung her sword and was able to defend herself and fend off the blow from behind. The boy was wounded at the side of the woman. The young woman looked excitedly at her rival. The agitated young demon realized that his rival had very great power. The guy abruptly started to bounce to the side. The woman didn't have time to see his face. Chin accelerated and ran away. He wanted to get away from the woman as soon as possible. The young woman asked angrily after the demon, where was he going to run off to? The woman decided to catch up with her rival and she sped off. Yuna suddenly felt that she couldn't move. It was as if something was binding her. The woman slumped to the ground. She didn't understand why her strength had abruptly left her. The demon held a huge blade in his hands. He told the woman that his sword was coated with poison. Yuna said that the demon's methods have become very dirty. She added that a guy like that should be embarrassed. The demon demanded angrily of his interlocutor that a guy come out to him and fight him. 
The young woman looked at her rival with interest and smiled happily at him. The demon swung his huge sword. He didn't understand why the woman was laughing. The guy prepared to strike his opponent with a sword strike from above. He was annoyed because she was laughing at him. The girl looked fearfully at the demon and called out Chin Yu's name. The young demon was startled. He thought there was another opponent nearby and turned sharply to the side. At the right moment, she struck her opponent with a sharp spear in the chest. The wounded demon gave the woman a disgruntled look and said she wasn't poisoned. Yuna went to ground. She told the guy she had a good tolerance to toxins. Usually you can hold out for five minutes. She could hold out for eight minutes. The demon grabbed the spear with his hands as well. He told the woman that she had done everything on purpose to get him close to her. Yuna told her opponent that her spear contains the poison of the six-legged dragon. It completely paralyzes humans and even demons cannot resist it. The young demon was very surprised to hear about the six-legged dragon. The guy with a smile told his rival that the most frightening thing about the demon is not physical strength. And in the moment of surprise, the fighter pulled the spear from his chest. He said that he had long ago absorbed one such dragon and gained resistance to poisons. Yuna looked at him fearfully. The guy with the spear was striding menacingly forward. He said luck was on his side. The woman was lying on the ground. She looked fearfully at her rival. The guy angrily threatened the woman that he would kill her with her own weapon. The demon swung his spear to finish off his rival. The woman turned to the side and called out fearfully to Chin Yu. The demon angrily shouted to the woman that she couldn't fool him with the same hook. The young woman closed her eyes fearfully. The boy prepared to finish her off with his spear. The protagonist from the portal appeared. He looked at the surprised Yuna and the young demon with interest. The demon angrily pointed his finger at the protagonist and said his name was Dawa or Chin Yu. The protagonist looked at his opponent and said that he had decent skills. The white demon swung his sword. He shouted at the protagonist that he would kill him. Chin knocked his opponent with a powerful punch. The demon flew far away to the side. Yuna lay frightened on the ground. The demon couldn't understand when the protagonist was able to become so powerful. The young demon was very frightened. He screamed very loudly out of fright. The guy jumped up sharply. He decided that he had to straighten out the main character. The demon swung around and tried a backhanded swipe at his opponent with his sword. The sword blow had no effect on Chin. He remained on his feet. The guy had no way of understanding why Chin was so fast. He was expecting the opponent to appear to attack sooner or later. The demon swung his sword to chop off his opponent's head. He decided to take his chance. Chin swung his hand sharply and knocked the demon with a large swing. The guy wasn't expecting a surprise attack. His teeth started falling out after the blow. The demon fell to his knees after the powerful blow. His mouth was bleeding. The guy became very angry. He couldn't understand why Chin had become stronger so quickly. The fighter angrily shouted that he was a supreme demon species. He was also a true melee king. The guy looked around sharply. He couldn't figure out where Kin had gone. The young boy turned around and noticed a young woman sitting next to him on Earth. The protagonist looked in surprise at the woman in front of him. He noticed a message that the recovery time for depleted armor was three minutes. Chin rushed forward fearfully. He was determined to help the woman and protect her. The young demon swung his sword from behind. He shouted to the protagonist that this was his weakness. A demon with a sword in his hand told the protagonist that the woman was really precious to him. The guy swung against Chin. He said he would see how long his opponent would last. The demon struck the protagonist with his sword. The boy managed to defend himself with his hand. The young woman looked on fearfully. The protagonist dodged in all directions, defending himself from the blows. Yuna was very surprised, and she couldn't believe that good demons really existed. The guy accelerated to attack his opponent from above in flight. The woman pulled out a small knife. She decided to throw it at the young demon. The young woman saw the guy in flight approaching her. She prepared to use her weapon. The woman swung the knife. It flew past the young demon's leg. The protagonist angrily shouted for his opponent to keep fighting him. Chin angrily pounded his opponent's stomach with his fist. He didn't like the fact that he was harassing a woman. The protagonist used a magic skill to extract energy from the dead demon's body. Chin extended his hand to the woman and told her affably to get up. Yuna angrily reminded the guy that she had ordered him to run. She didn't like that he was back. The protagonist hesitated and hesitated. He didn't know what to say to the woman. Chin looked around with great excitement. He asked the woman, Where is her home? Yuna looked in front of her. She noticed a small purple portal appear in front of her. The protagonist reached out his hand to grab the spear. The woman looked at him worriedly. Yuna fearfully shouted to the protagonist not to touch her weapon. Chin didn't heed the advice and grabbed the spear with his hand. He got blood on his palm. Chin looked at his hand very fearfully. He noticed how it was starting to turn blue. The woman told the frightened guy that her weapon was specially made to fight the demon from a special heavenly crystal. The weapon was coated with the poison of six dragons. Chin demanded the antidote from the woman in a very frightened voice. The Yuna replied to the boy that they were now brothers in misfortune, as they had both been poisoned. 
the woman noticed something suspicious from the side. She turned around startled. Chin and his companion noticed someone emerge from the portal. A huge demon named Karos appeared in front of the humans. He looked at them angrily. The demon told the protagonist that he solves all issues with brute force. Karos waved to the humans and welcomed them home. The demon headed towards the protagonist. The woman, very frightened, yelled at the protagonist to let her go. Chin grabbed the woman and yelled to be quiet. He decided to hide her. The protagonist carefully shoved the young girl behind a rock so she wouldn't be seen by the demon. Chin turned to the demon and said that he wanted to ask him some questions. Karos looked in front of him and told the guy he could ask him. Chin asked grudgingly to the demon, So why did the demon leave him in this world? Karos laughed and told the guy that getting him back was a very troublesome task. Chin looked at the demon and said in a satisfied voice that he thought so. The protagonist and his father laughed out loud for the whole neighborhood. Chin grabbed his left arm with his right hand and began to gradually pull it away. The protagonist began to twist his left arm more and more insistently to rip it from his body. Chin held up his severed hand. He told Karos that he was a real scumbag. The protagonist began to grow a new arm. He demanded that the demon tell him the last word. Karos pulled out his huge sword. He told the main character that he wanted to train him and help him become stronger. The demon swung a huge sword. He told the guy to make a move instead. The protagonist opened fire in the demon's direction. The bullets did not harm Karos in any way. The bullets ricocheted off the sword and knocked the protagonist backwards. Karos swung his sword. He told the protagonist that if he wanted to become stronger, he shouldn't stick his nose where it didn't belong. Chin swung his sword to strike the demon with all his might. From the heavy blow, the main character could no longer hold the sword in his hands and released it. The demon swung around and kicked the protagonist in the body with all his might. The demon's powerful leg kick sent the protagonist flying backwards. Karo stood and stared in surprise in front of him. He noticed some change in the guy. The demon was astonished. He noticed that the chin was wearing a top-ranked demon armor. Karos asked with interest to the lad. Where did he absorb a lot of power from even though he lived among simple creatures? Chin got to his feet. He thought that if things continued like this, he would definitely die. The protagonist thought about it. He decided to further activate his magical skills to increase his power. Chin cried out loudly. His body began to increase in size and the protective suit shattered. There was a deafening explosion. There were raging flames all around. Chin maximized his full speed and decided to knock the demon down. Karo smiled contentedly to himself. He prepared to fight off the guy. The demon swung his sword. He shouted to the protagonist that it still wouldn't be enough. Karos was able to knock the protagonist over the head with an axe with a powerful blow. Chin flew far to the side as a powerful blow hit him. He dropped his sword during the flight. The demon thought to himself that he didn't know how the guy was able to absorb a large force. But Chin's little tricks weren't enough to win. The protagonist was sitting on earth. He was recovering from a powerful blow from a demon. Chin thought to himself very frightened that this was the first time he was in such a difficult situation. The boy looked at the demon. He realized he had no advantage in strength or defense. Chin got into a fighting stance. He shouted to his opponent that he would not retreat. Karos looked at the protagonist very angrily and with surprise. He prepared to finish him off. The demon threw the sword out of his hands. He decided to finish the guy without his weapon. Karos swung his arms around to attack his opponent with his blades. Chin was very scared and startled. He realized that the demon would now run at him. The protagonist bounced to the side. He managed to dodge Karos's blow. The demon swung around to strike the guy with its steel claws. Chin dodged to the side. Karos was able to knock the protagonist with a powerful punch. Chin thought to himself that he could no longer resist. The protagonist dodged and managed to hit his opponent with a hand to the head. Karos shouted angrily at the protagonist that his punch had no effect on him. The demon swung a huge axe to strike the protagonist. Chin bounced to the side and was able to defend himself against a powerful and dangerous blow. The demon reached out his hand and grabbed the guy. Chin prepared to fight back. The protagonist swung his left hand from below demon's head. Karos smiled and looked at the guy. He said, Chin's strength is very good. The demon rushed to attack. He shouted to the guy that his power was completely useless against him. The protagonist became agitated. He realized that his opponent was preparing for another attack. Karos used powerful strikes with his hands against the protagonist. He shouted that he had no weaknesses at all. Chin could barely contain his blows. The demon shouted to him that victory was already a foregone conclusion. The protagonist came to his senses and looked closely at his opponent. Karos was very much surprised. He looked at the boy with great attention. Someone came up from the side and swung around to strike with a Karos blade. The woman took a very powerful sidekick to the neck with her blade. The young woman demanded of the demon that he take his hands off the boy immediately. The woman accelerated to strike the demon with a mighty blow in an overhead flight. The protagonist ran up behind Karos and decided to try and finish him off with a slashing blow. Chin pulled the blade from his opponent's body and finally finished him off. The protagonist chopped off the demon's head. Karos yelled at the last moment, That it's impossible! 
The tired chin sat down on the ground. He said that it was finally over. The overjoyed young woman sat on earth. She said joyfully that she was able to avenge everyone. The protagonist approached the woman leisurely. He prepared to help her. Chin lifted the Yuna up and said it wasn't worth staying here and it was time for them to leave. The protagonist's hand froze in midair. He looked away with great excitement. Chin said in an excited voice to his companion that all this is not over yet. Yuna didn't understand what the protagonist had told her. The demon had come to his senses at this time. Karos's body reached for his head to take it back to himself. The demon put his head back in place and it immediately became attached to his body. The protagonist looked fearfully at his opponent with a weary look. Chin stood opposite the demon at a distance. He prepared to fight on. The protagonist was surprised to see Karos turn around and fearfully run to the side. The woman shouted very scared to the guy that Karos wanted to break the seal and regain his powers. The demon swung around and pounded the ground with all his might. Bright flashes appeared. The protagonist cried out fearfully. He prepared to attack his opponent. Chin swung around and launched a sharp spear at his opponent with all his might. The demon dodged the spear which hit the stone next to him. Karos went to the portal. He prepared to fight against the boy. Chin grabbed the spear in his hand. He wanted to launch it at his opponent once more. Karos turned around and looked at the protagonist with great scrutiny. Chin swung his spear at the demon. He used the decapitation technique. The blade hit the monster's body. He couldn't understand how that was possible. Chin grabbed the handle of the spear to use it to strike the Karos once more. Chin pulled out his spear and with the blade in his hand jumped up from his seat. The protagonist swung his blade in flight to finish the demon from behind. Chin chopped the monster in half with a powerful punch while landing. The main character stood and looked at Karos very worriedly. He couldn't tell if the demon was already dead. Chin accelerated to finish off the monster with a powerful backhand strike. The protagonist shoved his hand inside the demon's body with a powerful punch. Energy activated around the guy's arm. He got ready to kill the demon. Karos fell to the ground. He never gave any more signs of life. The protagonist stood and looked at the demon's body with great excitement. Karos's body blurred. The exhausted protagonist slumped to the ground. The woman fearfully called the protagonist by name. She was very worried. Chin looked at the young woman with a smile and told her happily that he was still alive. The woman approached the portal. She stood for a long time looking at it intently. Yuna's got a small explosive in her pocket. She's getting ready to use it. The woman put the explosives on top of the portal. She set the timer for five minutes. Yuna called and said that the space-time node would be detonated in five minutes. Evacuation should be done as soon as possible. A woman with a spear in her hand approached the main character lying there exhausted, when two bright white lightning bolts struck the earth from above. A glow appeared around the demon's body. It started to move. Karos began to resurrect. The remains of his body were transformed into the new demon. The resurrected demon shouted angrily to the humans. Did they really think this was the only trump up his sleeve? The demon told the guy that his power is still at level 1. The battle will go on. Someone shouted to his opponent that he hadn't seen his boss yet. Caress looked away in surprise. He didn't understand what someone was talking about. The green demon came in. He yelled his boss's name Dawu and knocked his opponent to the ground. Caress plopped down on the ground and shouted that he hadn't met any Dawu. To himself, he thought to himself that he hadn't encountered such an attitude before. The green demon said cheerfully that he had finally found someone who would agree to take him in. The boss had even agreed to make him his adjutant. Boca looked at the demon in surprise as it lay on the ground, trying to crawl away. Caress threatened that he could find the teleporter and return to the demon world. Boca was behind the demon and put a hand on his shoulder. Caress shouted angrily that all his enemies would die. The demon slumped to the ground. Boca put a hand on its back to drain its energy. Boca looked angrily at Demon and asked what he had said about the boss. Caress's body turned into a decomposing heap. The green demon was running around and calling out for the boss. The purest power flowed in the demon's veins, which belonged to a seventh-level demon commander. The protagonist was recuperating inside the hospital after a hard battle. Chin studied the information in the system. He knew that he had lost a lot of blood, but he was only given three points for it. The guy decided to himself that he couldn't show his guilt and needed to save up energy points. The main character told himself that he didn't think it would hit him so hard. At that time, someone walked in the door. Yuna approached the boy's bed and asked him how he was feeling. Chin replied that he wasn't feeling very well. The woman told the protagonist that there was a reward waiting for him at home for killing Karos. Yuna warned the guy that he would now be haunted by demons. Chin was very happy about the reward. He said he was ready to kill a couple more demons. The woman told the guy that classes were about to start at the academy. She demanded that he always warn her of his intentions. Chin replied that he understood her. The woman clung closely to the guy. Chin wondered to the young woman why she was so thoughtful. The woman looked at the boy carefully. She touched him gently with her hand. Chin raised his hand to his head and said grudgingly to the younger aunt that it didn't look like her at all. 
The woman picked up and hugged the surprised protagonist. She pulled him to her chest. The woman thanked the protagonist. Chin felt embarrassed. Tears came to her eyes. She apologized to the surprised boy. The protagonist looked at the woman and told her that he had gotten used to it over the years. Yuna sat next to him on the bed. Yuna told the startled boy that he was still very young. She promised that she would keep his reward and give it to him when he was older. The protagonist started shouting to the woman that the award belonged to him. He added that he was no weaker than Yuna. A month later, the main character was on a train. He remembered a conversation he had with a woman. Chin sat at the table. He said to himself that the woman was very mean. She was using him as a dummy to beat him. The protagonist heard a suspicious noise behind him. He became alert. Some stranger appeared from behind. She called the protagonist by name. Chin decided fearfully to himself that the stranger wanted to kill him. He didn't understand why things had happened so quickly. The protagonist realized there was danger behind him. He jumped up from his seat. Chin jumped far back from his seat with a very quick swipe. The protagonist settled on the chair after the jump. He thought he had bounced a safe distance away. Chin heard some danger from the side. He noticed someone in front of him holding out a knife. The protagonist was surprised to notice a green-eyed girl sitting next to him. She told him cheerfully that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Chin turned around and very happily greeted Tian Lian beside him. The main character told the girl excitedly that they were riding on the same bus. Tian was still holding the knife near the protagonist's throat. She told the guy that she bought a ticket since she was heading to the academy. The guy said happily to his interlocutor that a coincidence happened and they chose the same academy. Tian Lian replied to her friend that she chose the academy deliberately since he chose it too. The protagonist knew the girl had intentions of killing him. The system didn't recognize the malice. The girl covered her eyes happily. She wanted to tell the guy something very important. Tian Lian smilingly informed the protagonist that she loved him. The girl with the knife told the guy excitedly that she was going to overpower him and then kill him. Chin asked with surprise at the interlocutor, how could these two things be related? The girlfriend climbed higher on the guy's lap. She hugged him and wanted to say something. The Tian looked at the guy with green eyes and said that he was very strong. The girl pressed close to Chin. He felt very embarrassed. The girlfriend told the astonished protagonist that he had everything in perfect balance. Chin looked at the girl with excitement. She told him that her family's fighting instinct could be added to his skills. Tian Lian was silent. She looked at her friend with great attention. The girl sat on the guy's lap. She told him that their combined offspring would be incredible. The protagonist stared mesmerized at his girlfriend. He didn't know what to say to her. The girl looked at the guy carefully and said she was watching him. Chin replied to her that such things should not be done impulsively. He asked the girl if her parents knew about everything. Tian replied to the guy in a calm voice that her parents had approved everything at the family meeting. She was unbuttoning her clothes at the time. Chin became very worried. He covered his face with his hand and didn't know what to say to the girl. The guy looked excitedly at his girlfriend. He didn't know how to stop her now. Pulled her zipper down. She said she had to do what she had in mind. Chin said in an excited voice to his girlfriend that he wanted to borrow her phone. John held out her friend's cell phone in her hand. The protagonist decided to look for something. Chin read the search terms on his phone. They had to do with demons and devils. The protagonist read the information on his phone with great attention. He was surprised. Chin very quickly began typing search queries into the system. The protagonist wanted to find information about the green mantis. The system reported that female individuals are very dangerous because of a tradition associated with killing. A person should think twice before joining such a family. She hugged the frightened protagonist and asked, Is he free tonight? Chin smiled at his girlfriend and said that his mother had said all the right things. He tossed the girl the phone. She looked at the guy with great interest and a questioning look. Chin accelerated sharply and kicked the wall at full speed. He shouted that he was still too small. The girl watched with interest as the protagonist ran down the street. The girlfriend said with a smile, Chin's speed became even greater. She said joyfully that Chin Yu is the man of her dreams. The girl jumped off the train at full speed. She chased after her friend. She ran down the street after the protagonist to catch up with him and shouted after him. Chin stealthily returned to the train. He didn't like his girlfriend's molestation. The protagonist decided to himself that the academy would not be easy to reach. He rushed on the train. Students near the academy gates were discussing the new student with interest. Tian stood by herself outside the academy gates. She looked around carefully. The girl stood near the gate. The protagonist watched her with great attention from around the corner. Chin wasn't happy. He couldn't understand why the girl couldn't get rid of him. He decided to outsmart her, at which time someone suddenly approached the guy from the side and put a hand on his shoulder. A girl came over. She smilingly called the protagonist stupid. Chin asked the girl with great interest. Where on earth did she come from? The girl said shyly to the protagonist as they followed him into the academy. 
Chin looked at his girlfriend and said that he was very glad she was here. The protagonist pointed his finger to his girlfriend at the thrall who was standing near the entrance. Girl asked the guy, does he really want to take a girl's phone number? Chin angrily explained to his girlfriend that he had been chasing her all the way and was now standing and waiting. The protagonist asked his girlfriend to distract his girlfriend. He had to check in. The boy looked around in surprise. He noticed that his conversation partner had disappeared. The protagonist looked away. He thought his girlfriend had seriously overdone it. A girl with a huge sword came up to the side of her. She didn't suspect a thing. She asked the stranger from behind in a disgruntled voice. What does she want? The girl drew a huge sword. The students around were watching with interest. The student abruptly snapped out of her seat and lunged at her opponent with her sword. The girl swung her sword in flight and shouted menacingly that the thrall was a pervert. She defended herself against the attack with a nimble and quick movement. Tian decided to attack her rival with a flying sharp knife. A student pulled a large rock out from under the earth for her defense. The knife bumped into it. After the knife strike, a huge fire trace appeared on the stone. It began to spread. A huge rock exploded, and shards flew in all directions. The student covered herself with her sword. The girl looked angrily at her opponent. She decided to attack her further. The student noticed with great surprise how the thrall had disappeared somewhere. She saw only a shadow in front of her. The student defended herself with her sword. She asked her rival threateningly if the protagonist had told her about her. The student told her rival that it was none of her business. Tian continued to attack the student. She shouted that she would deal with her easily. Students stood on the ground and watched with great interest as the girls fought in flight. The protagonist has been registered. He's got a stamp on his ID. The student waved his hand at the guy near the counter and welcomed him to the academy. The guys and girls looked on in amazement at the battle of the female students in the sky. The protagonist arrived at the dormitory building. He was looking for his room. Chin stood by the front door. He wondered what his roommates would be like. He was a little nervous. The main character carefully opened the door and wanted to greet the people inside. A student in the room threw the door at the guy and yelled that there was only one seat inside. Chin put up a defense with his hands just in time and shielded himself from the flying door. The protagonist was surprised to notice how inside the room was a formidable rhino. Chin held the doors in his hands. He inquired of his interlocutor, Is this really a single room? The rhinoceros replied to the fellow that it was. The protagonist used his hands to start squeezing the door with all his might. Chin crumpled the door into a huge ball. He asked the rhinoceros, What is the one doing here? The predator was scared. He looked at the guy with great distrust. The protagonist rolled the ball across the room with all his might. It knocked out a student in the process. The rhinoceros flew at full speed, along with the balloon, through the window out of the building and into the street. The protagonist shook off his hands. He said cheerfully, he got his own room. Chin heard some noise outside the door. He realized that someone had come to see him. The guy opened the door. He said the single room didn't need extra occupants. The protagonist took a closer look. He realized he knew the guest who had come to see him. Chin noticed with surprise that there was a TN standing in front of him on the doorstep with a suitcase in her hand. The protagonist closed the door fearfully. He realized that the student had found him. Chin was surprised to hear the girl kick the door with all her strength with her hand. Chin stood fearfully near the door. The girl threw the opening and grabbed his clothes with her hand. The student angrily demanded of the guy that he open the door for her and let her inside. The protagonist jumped through the hole in the wall at full speed. The guy was running at full speed. He was trying to get away from the student. Chin looked away excitedly. He wanted to see where his girlfriend was. A trainee chased the protagonist from behind at full speed and demanded that he stop immediately. The protagonist realized he had no other choice. He ran to the administration building. Chin ran up to the deputy director's office. He immediately knocked on the door. The deputy was stamping the paperwork. He told the guy he could come in. The main character broke into the classroom. He yelled to the teacher that he had an urgent report. Papers flew around. The teacher angrily told the guy that you can't fly into his office like that. The teacher saw the main character and cheerfully said that he was very strong. Chin was sitting on the couch. He told his opinion to the man that he had an urgent report. The teacher was pouring tea into a cup. He told the guy that they would transfer the scholarship to his account right after the freshman admission ceremony. Also, Chin would have to give the commencement speech. The man happily poured tea into the protagonist's mouth. Chin told his interlocutor that he wanted to tell him about a perverted woman. The teacher angrily asked the guy who he wanted to talk about. Chin complained about the girl Tan Lian from the Mantis tribe. The teacher explained to the protagonist that their academy was in favor of free love. The protagonist headed for the door. He said he picked the wrong academy. The teacher explained to the boy that tribal leader Bogomolov had asked him to accept the girl. A man told the protagonist he had a place to live until the girl calmed down. The protagonist looked at the key in his hands. He told the teacher that he agreed. The main character walked to the door. He said the man was making good money if he allowed himself such a lodging. Chin inserted the key into the door. 
he wondered what awaited him inside. The protagonist opened the door and was surprised to notice that someone was already inside. Yuna smiled at the protagonist and welcomed him inside the room. Chin asked wonderingly to the woman, what on earth was she doing in the deputy's house? Yuna looked at the protagonist with malice and hatred. The boy was frightened. Chin was sitting on the sofa. He learned from the woman that she had bought a house for him and handed over the keys through the deputy director. Yuna got excited because the guy was being chased by his girlfriend. The woman poured tea into the guy's cup. She told the guy that she didn't expect him to come to the deputy director himself. Chin was drinking tea from a cup. He asked the woman, where did she get the money from? Yuna told the guy that they would register the house for him. He would have a place to bring his wife. The main character was very surprised. The woman told him that he would sleep in the living room. The main character was unhappy about having to sleep in the living room in his own house. A woman with a large knife in her hand turned unhappily toward the guy. Chin was sweeping the garbage on the floor with a broom. He said he was glad because he didn't have to sleep on the doorstep. The woman headed for the exit of the room. The protagonist looked at her anxiously. Chin collapsed on the couch. He told himself that he could sleep in this place once. He dreamed that when he got rich, he would buy a big bed. Within a week, the protagonist became very famous. His posters were everywhere. Chin was walking with his companions. Yuna shouted happily to the boy that he was doing well. The main character said grudgingly that he'd rather have money than be popular. The main character said he hadn't gotten the reward for closing the portal and killing the demon yet. The workers came up from behind. They told the protagonist that they would tell him in detail what he should do after going on stage. Chin said goodbye to his companions. The girl said thoughtfully to her mother. Chin Yu was beginning to drift away from them. The woman stroked her daughter's head. She said they would still be a family. The daughter fearfully asked her mother if she had accepted Chin Ya Yu. Yuna said it was the only thing she could do for Chin for saving her. The teacher stood in front of the protagonist. He asked if he had memorized everything. Chin took out a piece of paper. He told the man that he had prepared well. The man cheered the guy. The announcer said that the winner of the league and the seventh level demon slayer would take the stage. Chin happily jumped onto the stage. The man shouted to the guy to don't be nervous and don't forget to praise their academy. The protagonist walked up to the microphone. He looked intently into the audience. Chin held a piece of paper in his hand. He began to read out his speech to the audience. The guy said that he wanted to thank Luntan Academy. There were a lot of talented kids studying there. The protagonist also thanked the founder. A man stood backstage. He listened to the boy's words with great excitement. At that time Tian Liang appeared. She prepared to attack the protagonist. The girl with a huge green sword looked predatorily at the chin standing on the stage. Yuna suddenly appeared from the side. She pointed her spear at the girl and offered her a conversation. The Tian held her weapon in her hands. She glared angrily at the woman. The girl inquired of the young woman. Had she really come to steal her loot? The woman glared angrily at the student and said she had gotten it right. Tian jumped up. She prepared to attack the woman with her knives. The young woman used her weapon to repel the girl's attack with a confident movement. The woman was able to shatter the student's blades with her sharp sword. The Yuna pointed her sharp weapon formidably against her rival Tian Lian. The girl stood and glared angrily at the woman. Next to her head was a dangerous blade. The woman explained to the girl that they would now resolve the situation, according to the customs of their clan. Yuna explained to her opponent that the loser must withdraw or die. Tian Lian stood and calmly looked at her rival. She didn't know what to do. The girl eventually turned around and decided to flee and not fight the young one. The student jumped out the window. The woman looked at her calmly. Yuna said happily and contentedly to herself that the problem was solved. The thrall ran off on her own. The protagonist appeared at the side. He asked fearfully, Are the demons here again? Yuna looked at the guy and said that the girl wouldn't bother him anymore. The protagonist cheerfully said that he had to find someone who would give the girl a good thrashing. Yuna told her boyfriend that she is now a student. The Bogomolov clan relies on competition to choose a mate. The thrall will no longer bother the protagonist until he defeats the woman. The main character was not happy. He decided to call and ask the doggy for help. Chin thanked the woman. He picked up the phone and said he needed to make a call. The main character was standing in the street. He used the phone to greet his girlfriend. Chin was chatting with the girl on the phone with great attention. He listened to her attentively. The boy inquired of his interlocutor, Where are the others? He said he could hear them squeaking. The girl in an excited voice told the guy on the phone that she didn't lose. Chin told the interviewer that the most important thing was not that she lost, but that she was fine. The interviewee angrily yelled to the guy on the phone that she hadn't lost and wasn't going to give up. At this time, a girl came up from behind the protagonist and put her hands on his shoulder. The girl invited the boy to come inside. She said that the teachers had reported a test of the newcomer's strength. They had to pass a small test. The main character was standing by the table. The girl asked him for details. Chin said he was good at attracting death. 
The student angrily told the guy to tell her about the advantages, not the disadvantages. The protagonist thoughtfully replied to the interlocutor that he was good at attack. Student marked on the worksheet that the main character is good at attack. The student told the guy that he should take the test and give his best. Chin agreed with her. The protagonist turned around and headed for the building. There he had to take a physical fitness test. Chin stood near the door inside. He had to check his fitness level. The protagonist stepped inside the room. He saw before him a huge warrior with a weapon in his hand. The warrior told the guy that he was well built. He added that he would put more effort into it this time. The fighter told the protagonist that he would have to last 30 seconds to start. The fighter told the evil protagonist not to blame him for anything later. He explained that elders will always be stronger. Chin must experience the cruelty of society. The warrior shoved himself off the floor and ran with all his might in the direction of the protagonist. The fighter swung around and wanted to pound the protagonist with his fist in flight. The warrior dared to crush his opponent with a triple punch. Chin looked at him calmly. Chin stood still. The warrior was beating him with all his might with his hands on his body. The protagonist withstood all the blows the fighter threw at him. He was on his feet. There was a glow of fire around the guy. He decided to protect himself that way. The warrior became angry. He said menacingly that it was all wrong somehow. The protagonist swung his arm to hit his opponent. The fighter was very frightened. Chin crouched down and crushed his opponent with a very powerful arm strike from below. The protagonist jumped up and threw the fighter upward with a powerful leg kick. The warrior screamed hard after the blow from the guy. He flew through the air for a long time. The girl looked at the stopwatch and said that the main character had fallen short by 30 seconds. He gets a D rating. The student demanded that the next one be called. The student looked fearfully at the lying instructor and said, it's not about the guy. The student looked beside herself with great excitement and noticed that the instructor was lying there. The girl turned to the side in surprise. The protagonist wondered if they were done. The student happily wrote something on a piece of paper. She confirmed to the guy that they were done. The girl bowed to the protagonist and handed him the direction sheet. Chin thanked her. The protagonist read the sheet. He got an S rating after the battle. Chin was walking down the street. A girl looked thoughtfully into his light and said that this year there were a lot of guys with S ratings. The protagonist walked up to the door. He was standing near the entrance to S class. Chin waved happily to everyone present and said hello to them. There were students sitting in the auditorium. They looked at the guest very angrily and unhappily. The students looked at the main character and greeted him. They called him a teacher. Chin was surprised. He thought he looked old. The protagonist decided to replace the teacher for a while. Chin stepped outside the pulpit. He greeted the students. They greeted him back. The main character said from behind the podium that students will get more resources and achieve unprecedented success. He explained that S-Class is special. The students gave a friendly shout from their seats to the protagonist that they understood him. At that time, footsteps sounded. A teacher entered the classroom. The woman looked at the students and the protagonist behind the pulpit in amazement. The main character told the guest that she was late. The woman wanted an excuse. Chin pointed his finger at the woman and demanded that she tell him her name. He was unhappy that she was crossing him. The woman corrected her glasses and said her name is Li Mi. But at the academy they call her something else entirely. The woman told the surprised protagonist that she was the teacher here. If I went up to the guy and asked him his name, Chin got very excited. The teacher demanded of the boy to return to his seat. Chin ran between the desks. The students sat and looked angrily at the main character. They didn't like that he had fooled them. The woman explained that their academy emphasizes group work. There will be four people in each group. The students jumped to their feet. Lee, I told the boys that she would give them some time. They could get to know each other and break into teams. The students shouted joyfully to the teacher that they were ready. Chin was very surprised by this reaction. The main character asked the teacher if she wanted to work with him. Lee smiled at the guy and told him he'd have to join a special team. The main character said there are nerds on the special team that the whole school hates. Chin jumped to his feet and asked in a joyful voice to be taken. The main character ran for the exit. He yelled to the teacher that she wouldn't be ashamed of him. Chin walked up to a huge tower. There was a protective grate beside it. A stranger came up from the side and asked the guy if he knew what this place was. The protagonist headed for the fence. He told the stranger that he would not stop him. The stranger put his hand on the boy's shoulder and asked, Is he deaf? The demon put his hand on the protagonist's shoulder. He said he didn't look like he was deaf. Chin turned to the monster and looked at it with a very angry look. The protagonist swung his fist. He shouted that this demon was deaf. The demon activated the golden luwei technique at the last moment to defend against the blow. Chin was unable to hit his opponent. A defensive barrier appeared sharply in front of him. The demon very deftly and quickly bounced back from the protagonist to a safe distance. Chin thought to himself that the opponent's strength was very similar to his strength. The demon swung his fist to strike the protagonist. The monster began to strike the guy at breakneck speed. Chin defended himself. The protagonist commanded that a skill called Demon Power be strengthened in him. 
The protagonist slammed his opponent's hand on his head with a huge swing. The demon flew far to the side after a powerful blow from the guy. The monster flew over the fence and slammed its body to the ground with all its might. The demon was lying on the ground. He was recovering from the blow and falling to the ground. The monster stared angrily in front of him. He prepared to leap to his feet. Chin was very surprised because of how his opponent turned out to be fine. He figured that even Karos wouldn't be able to withstand a blow of such strength. The protagonist accelerated to attack his opponent from above. He decided that he really could get stronger. The monster couldn't understand why the kid attacked him. He just wanted to ask, What grade is he in? The demon decided to himself that the protagonist wanted to impress him. The monster got into a fighting stance. He decided to teach the protagonist to respect his teacher. Chin ran at full speed at his opponent. The protagonist swung with all his might and knocked the monster with his hand. The demon ducked down and gave his opponent a strong blow from below with his arm. The protagonist asked his opponent in surprise, Is that really all he can do? The demon looked at his opponent silently and angrily. He answered him nothing. The protagonist rushed in for another attack. He noticed that the monster wanted to pound him. Chin swung to knock his opponent. At this time, the demon kicked him in the stomach with all his might. The main character got hit really hard. His mouth was bleeding. The monster swung around again and pounded the guy in the stomach with all his might with his hand. The monster fiercely attacked the protagonist. Chin stubbornly withstood all the blows. It was as if the demon looked at the boy. He realized that his attacks couldn't break through his defenses. The monster grabbed the protagonist by his clothes. He realized he had to get Trump out of his sleeve. The protagonist suddenly grabbed the demon's arm from the side. The monster swung his arm to finish off his opponent with a powerful overhead kick. Suddenly the demon became very agitated. He noticed that the protagonist had prepared to hit him. Chin swung his arm and knocked the monster from above with a powerful punch. The protagonist continued to beat his opponent with all his might with his hands. Chin concentrated on attacking his opponent with powerful hand strikes. The monster's defenses began to crumble. Cracks appeared in its body from the blows. The demon angrily thought to himself that the guy's attack was very strong for him. The monster activated a magic skill. A golden blade began to grow on top of his arm. The demon decided to use the golden knife against his opponent. The protagonist excitedly noticed the monster preparing to attack him with his hand from below. The demon was surprised to notice that his opponent's hands were without special weapons. The monster was very amazed. He couldn't believe that the protagonist had removed his defenses. Chin's new weapon slowly began to grow out of his severed arm. Very quickly a huge rock appeared in the protagonist's hand. Chin looked angrily at his opponent and said that the best reward for him would be a pair of fists. The protagonist started beating his opponent with his huge hands with rocks. The demon flew far to the side. He couldn't stay on his feet. After flying, the monster hit the wall with all its might. There was a huge explosion. Chin noticed with surprise as a bright lightning bolt struck from above through the ceiling. Another person arrived in the hall. A girl in a bee costume served food to the monster. She asked him if she should report to security. The protagonist told the stranger in a stern voice that it was forbidden to drink boosts. The demon came to his senses. His eyes lit up very brightly at once. The monster grabbed the boy viciously by his clothes in a sharp motion and pulled him towards him. The demon told the protagonist that he beat up the teacher on the first day of school. He threatened that he would get the chin expelled right away. The astonished chin asked with astonishment at the demon, Is that one really a teacher? The monster. Let the boy go. He shouted to the surrounding students to come out to get acquainted. Two frogs showed up. One of them said he bet the new guy wouldn't last a minute. The teacher kicked the protagonist from behind with a swinging kick. He yelled for the guy to practice more. After that, the monster demanded that the students introduce themselves. The student said that she was a level 3 warrior from the Dragonfly clan. The guy said that he belonged to the Chameleon clan. The green student belonged to the Frog clan. Chin said that he was a level 1 warrior and belonged to the Demon clan. He was also good at taking beatings. The students were very amazed. They couldn't believe that Chin belonged to the first level. The girl knocked the guys on the head and explained that the strength of the Demon clan was measured differently. The teacher excitedly thought to himself that the main character was an assassin, a scout, and a demon. Suddenly a young student appeared at the side. The protagonist paid attention to her. A girl asked a student in a frightened voice if she'd come to class number eight. Everyone except the protagonist answered the student that she had come to the right place. Chin said grudgingly that they were in class number seven. He asked the students, so why did they trick the girl? The protagonist looked away anxiously. He realized that there was something the teacher wanted to tell him now. The monster sternly reminded the protagonist that they were in class number eight. The demon grabbed the protagonist by his clothes decided to show him where class number seven was. The teacher tossed the protagonist high up into the air to fly to his classroom. Chin flew up the floors. He counted the class numbers to himself as he flew. The main character saw someone standing near the stairs. He shouted at the stranger to move aside. Chin was surprised to see his familiar Tian Ling standing in front of him. 
The main character after the flight landed right on top of the girl, on her breasts. The girlfriend grabbed the surprise guy's arm and pulled him toward her. Tianlin lay on the ground and held her friend with her hands. She called him husband. The girlfriend pinned the protagonist down and said that there were guys around. Chin suddenly saw someone familiar on the side beside him. He jumped up in surprise. Chin looked in front of him very excitedly. He realized that a familiar girl had approached him. The protagonist decided to step back. He felt Yuli standing behind him. Chin was startled when the girl grabbed him from behind. He yelled something to himself about a flat, strong wall. The girlfriend grabbed the guy very angrily. Chin called the girl by name in a frightened voice. Yu Li looked unhappily at the guy and said that he shouldn't have made such comparisons. The disgruntled girl kicked the protagonist from behind with all her might. The protagonist flew sideways down the floors after being hit hard and screaming. Chin didn't fall to the ground in time to be picked up by Yuna. The woman held the boy in her arms. Chin told her cheerfully that it was all a coincidence. Yuna informed the protagonist that she had been assigned as the teacher of class number seven. The woman sternly asked the guy how he identified Yu Li. She asked, does the main character really like this girl? Chin looked away fearfully. The woman told him that she would help him get rid of his delusions. The protagonist turned to the woman in a frightened manner. He wanted to explain to her that none of this was true. The main character was standing next to his girlfriends. A woman suggested that the girls get acquainted. She gave her name and said that she was a teacher. Yu Li informed her interlocutor that she was a level 3 warrior and was in the night reserve. Tian said that she was a level 3 warrior from the Mantis tribe. Tian looked at the woman and said that she was her opponent. The teacher remained silent in response. The protagonist looked very slyly sideways at the woman. Chin reported that he belonged to the demon clan and was a first level warrior. The woman swung around and hit the guy with all her might. Chin flew off and hit the wall. Yuna told the girls that they were one person short in the class. She explained that she had applied for a healer but there were no more applicants left. Teacher asked the female students if they had any friends who would be a match for them. The main character pokes his head out of a hole in the wall. He tells his girlfriend that no one wants to be friends with her. Chin asked the boyfriend out of the blue if he was ready to make a baby with her. Chin replied to the girlfriend that he wasn't here. He wanted to hide in a hole in the wall. A woman came up from behind and grabbed the guy with her hand. She inquired if he had a suitable mate. The protagonist turned slyly to the teacher and said he had such a comrade. The young woman asked in a serious voice to the boy if his comrade was a healer. The girls looked at the guy and asked if he was sure. Chin replied that he was 100% sure. Chin promised his companions that he would bring them the right girl immediately. A girl was sitting in the auditorium and was calming her friend. The student told her interlocutor that everything was fine and a draw could not be considered a loss. Student said she doesn't need to be calmed down. Until she defeats the Tian, she will stay away from Chin Yu. The main character opened the door with his foot. He greeted his girlfriend named Doggy. The student jumped up happily and greeted the protagonist. The other girls looked at her in surprise. Chin was on his way to see the girl. He said it was hard to find her because she was not picking up the phone. The guy asked the student why she was in class A. He added that with her ability, she could have been in class S. The students around turned around and looked at the protagonist very angrily. The guy walked up to the protagonist and said that a class is no worse than S class. The protagonist stood and picked his nose. He looked angrily at the student. Chin stretched out his hand in front of him to attack his opponent with a magic spell. The protagonist launched a golden beam of energy at his opponent. Yellow energy flew past the guy and hit the wall. He was very frightened. Chin angrily and sternly looked at his opponent and asked if he was sure. The student fearfully showed the mountain hero that he could pass on. Chin glanced at the girl behind the pulpit. Chin walked right up to his girlfriend to chat with her. The guy sternly asked the girl why she wasn't answering his calls. He figured she had already forgotten who he was. The student grudgingly shouted that she was here for her sisters. The main character grabbed the girl's hand and pulled her with him. He explained that he needed her in another class. The girl stopped. She asked the boy fearfully, what did he just say to her? Chin turned around and repeated to his girlfriend that he really needed her in another class. Xiao Xiao imagined her friend romantically inviting her along. The girlfriend tearfully looked at the guy and said they were very young. The wolf appeared. He said grudgingly that it was very loud in the room and he could hear the students even through the wall. The monster looked at the protagonist and wondered who he was. Chin proudly pointed to himself and said that he was a man of S class. The wolf asked the protagonist very thoughtfully what he was doing here. Chin glared at the predator and told him menacingly that no one could stop him. The wolf said strictly to the protagonist that the price of the wall was 500,000. He asked, can the guy afford it? Chin became very frightened and worried when he heard about the price of the wall. The predator pointed a paw at the guy and told him to pay him compensation. The main character said that he was the teacher of the S class and came to pick up Xiao Xiao. He explained that the cost of the wall would be covered by the academy. The wolf looked angrily at the guy and asked, Where is he and where is S class? 
The protagonist looked at the interlocutor and said that he was a seventh grade mentor named Steel Bull. The wolf looked at the guy angrily. He didn't like his nickname about the Steel Bull. Chin waved his hand at his rival and prepared to run away. He held his girlfriend in his arms. The protagonist ran away abruptly. He waved goodbye to the surprised wolf. The predator was angry. He ran after the guy at full speed. He didn't like that Chin had tricked him. The main character was going full speed ahead. He wanted to escape. Xiao Xiao activated her magic skill. She apologized to her teacher. The frightened wolf noticed how a huge rock suddenly appeared in front of him. The raptor crashed into the stone at full speed. Chin looked back happily. The protagonist escorted his girlfriend Xiao Xiao into an auditorium where there was a young woman. Chin brought and introduced his familiar girl in front of the young teacher. Xiao Xiao looked at the woman and greeted her cheerfully. Yuna looked at the student's clothes very unhappily. Xiao Xiao was wearing shorts. The woman looked closely and noticed that the student had a huge sword at her back. Yuna took a very long look at the large breasts of the girl in front of her. Teacher asked the guy since when did his girlfriend become a warrior healer. Chin replied that the student had been a warrior healer since they needed him. The woman slapped the guy's hand with all her might. The protagonist couldn't understand what he had done. Yuna thought for a moment. She realized that she had an intelligence genius and a healer by her side. She decided that this was a very strong team. The woman turned around and looked at the protagonist. She realized they needed a good plan. Yuna turned to her subordinates. She said they needed to learn to cooperate in battle. The woman pointed her finger at Chin and ordered the girls to knock the guy down. The girls got really excited. They decided to attack the guy right away. Chin started to run frightenedly away. Tian Liang jumped out in front of him. The student yelled at the protagonist to stop. Chin's life should belong to her. The girl activated her magic skills. Knives appeared in her hands. Chin was really scared. His girlfriend told him she really needed him. The girl speeds off with the knives and yells to the guy that she doesn't necessarily want him alive. Chin covered himself with his hands and closed his eyes. He protected himself from the girl's attacks. She launched a huge net and a bunch of sharp knives at her hero. Chin swung his fist. He shouted to the girl that they could forget about warrior etiquette. The protagonist swung his fist to knock her off her feet with a powerful punch. The girl covered herself with her arms to protect herself from a powerful blow from her opponent. The protagonist hit his girlfriend with all his might. The girl flew far away after the powerful blow. The girl fell to the ground. The protagonist stood at a distance and watched her. Chin angrily shouted to the girl so she wouldn't accuse him of being overly cruel later. The protagonist prepared to rush forward. At the same time, something crackled underground. The ground began to crack and huge chains began to pop out of it. They shackled the guy's arms and legs. Xiao Xiao sped up with her weapon in time to hit the protagonist. Chin activated his magic skill called body expansion. The guy's body grew. His muscles got huge. He was able to break the chains. The girl looked at the guy very frightened. She started to back away from him. Xiao Xiao, for her defense, created a huge stone from the ground to stop Chin. The girl stood and listened. She figured she would be safe behind the rock. The protagonist swung his arms with very powerful blows and knocked the girl into a rock. Xiao Xiao jumped to her feet. She looked at the guy with great excitement. She couldn't believe that the main character had become so strong. The girl in flight lunged at the protagonist. She decided to attack him. Yuli took one last look at the guy and realized she couldn't go on like this. The girl flew overhead in flight to take down the protagonist with a leg kick. Chin raised his hand and set up a powerful block against his opponent's attack. Yu Li continued to beat the protagonist with her legs. He defended himself with his hands against her attacks. Chin was able to grab his opponent's legs with his own hands during one of the attacks. The female students became agitated. Chan asked fearfully, What's going on there? The female students were frightened. Xiao Xiao asked the woman, Will you be able to defeat the main character? Yuna hesitated. She answered nothing to her interlocutor and watched the battle intently. The protagonist held his opponent's leg tightly and prevented her from attacking. Chin swung around and threw the Yu Li far to the side in a very strong motion. The woman sternly commanded the protagonist to stop. The main character stopped and let the girl go. Yu Li ran back to the woman very quickly. Yuna told the students that they don't know how to work as a team. Also, they are very inferior to the main character. A woman brought the girl's weapons. She said they should use them for training in a narrower specialty. The female students stood and silently examined the knives from all angles in their hands. Tian said menacingly that she belonged to the Mantis tribe and had absolutely no need for training. The woman explained to her interlocutor that if she wanted to take the real weapon, the Chin could fight her. The Tian looked at the protagonist silently and with a studying gaze. The girl held a huge knife in her hands. She was contemplating her impending attack. Chin stood and looked at the girl with a long, studying gaze. He waited to see what she would do. She swung her weapon at the protagonist. Chin put up his hand to defend himself. He shouted that it was a stealthy attack. The protagonist was surprised to see an ordinary egg crash into his hand and shatter. 
Yuna told her students that they would only use brute force. She suggested that they take eggs and practice with them. The training would be over when one of the students hit the wall and did not break the egg. The woman turned around and told her interlocutors that she would monitor the training to adjust the drills. Chin was surprised. He couldn't understand how Yuna had time to throw so many eggs with great speed. The main character was standing near the wall. He looked angrily at the woman and asked, Does she really think this method will work? The young woman scrutinized the boy. She gestured for him to look below. Chin was surprised. He decided to see where the woman had just pointed him. The protagonist looked down and was surprised to see a single egg attached to his stomach. Chin rejoiced. He shouted in a formidable voice that this was the first step to becoming even stronger. The protagonist looked closely and noticed the egg in his hands starting to crack. Chin looked around and noticed the cracks in the floor around him. The woman yelled at the guy that he should be practicing, not trashing the apartment. Yuna stood and watched with great attention as the female students practiced their combat skills. Xiao Xiao tapped her sword on the stone to increase the force of his strike. The girl looked up excitedly. She demanded that Tan Lian get out of there. She jumped up from her seat and flew upwards to jump out of the gorge. Yuna thought for a moment. She noticed that the girl's reactions had slowed down. Because of this, she wasn't acting as fast as usual. The woman looked at the fighting students. She thought the girl could have done much better. Tian landed on the ground. She yelled to the master that she was done. The protagonist kept practicing his fist with chicken balls on the wall. Chin said contentedly he had been practicing for days. Now he smelled like an egg himself, but he had finally succeeded. The protagonist sat down on the ground. He decided to see how much his vitals had changed. Chin saw the message from the system. It had all the details about him. The guy read it carefully. The protagonist read the level of his training. He said excitedly that he still had something in him. A woman came up and threw a piece of paper in the guy's face. She said he should try it. Yuna explained that the academy would send missions. There would be a reward for them. Chin scrutinized the document. The woman explained that if the protagonist could absorb the opponent's battle abilities, it would benefit him. The main character told his boss that he would do everything. Yuna responded to the guy to move out immediately. He's not the only one who knows about this mission. The main character happily jumped out of the building. He said the mission was his and he wasn't giving it to anyone. Yu Li turned around frightened. She told the main character that he scared her a lot. The girl looked away fearfully. The protagonist shouted that this mission would belong to him. She looked at the guy. She said he was faster and stronger again. A military vehicle was driving on a mountain road. Soldiers were sitting inside. The driver told the soldiers that he was escorting them, but he would not be part of the mission. One of the fighters noticed a bright glow in the sky. He shouted to the driver to be careful. A fireball came out of the sky. It hit the car at high speed. After the explosion, the car spun sideways. Soldiers fell out of it. There was a sniper on the roof of the tower. He was taking careful aim at the soldiers. The shooter took aim at the guy and prepared to fire on him. A shot rang out and the bullet traveled at high velocity towards its victim. The guy was scared. He realized he couldn't defend himself now. A man's hand came from the side. He covered the guy with it. The commander stopped the bullet. The terrified soldier thanked the teacher. The man clutched the captured bullet in his hands. Small lightning bolts appeared near his hand. Shooter's weapon was smoking. The sniper looked unhappily in front of him. The fighter radioed that he had failed. Among his opponents was a master. The sniper jumped out of the turret at a breakneck pace to land and make a quick escape. The man threw the remains of a bullet out of his hand. The boy asked the teacher, did that mean their mission was now a failure? The commander explained to the soldiers that the enemy's strength was much higher than what was stated in the mission. The man looked at the soldiers and said that it would be very late to go back. The guy said excitedly, sooner or later, they would have to go beyond their own capabilities anyway. The man held the phone in his hands. He said he had reported everything to the academy. They should be sending a team soon. They had about three hours before backup arrived. The soldiers rejoiced. One of them shouted joyfully that they would follow the commander. The protagonist was chasing a sniper down a deserted city street. Chin ran up to the gunman. He said he chased him ten miles in one breath. The sniper turned around and asked grudgingly to the protagonist, who was the one? Chin looked at his interlocutor and said that he was his distant relative. The main character told the shooter that he was the horn devil. Chin realized to himself that the sniper was acting in concert with someone. The gunman turned around. He said grudgingly to the protagonist that he had no distant relatives. Chin jumped out in front of Shooter. He offered to talk things over with him. The sniper drew his weapon. He shouted to his interlocutor to stop talking nonsense. The gunman pointed his weapon at the protagonist and shouted that he was going to kill him. Chin looked in front of him and was startled to see Sniper pointing the barrel of a gun at him. The protagonist smiled. He decided to justify himself to the shooter somehow. A deafening gunshot rang out and drops of blood flew around in all directions. The protagonist threw his head aside sharply after being shot at. The gunman blew out the muzzle of his weapon after he shot the protagonist. The sniper looked in front of him and was surprised. He noticed that nothing had happened to Chin. 
The protagonist looked angrily at his opponent and asked why he had done all this. The sniper was angry and surprised. He didn't expect his opponent to survive the shot. Chin looked at the sniper and asked, Why did he dare to shoot him? The guy grabbed his weapon and started shooting further. The protagonist grabbed his opponent's arm and began to twist it to the side. Chin turned his weapon around and pointed it at the sniper to shoot himself. The sniper looked angrily at the protagonist and said that he had forced him. The fighter jumped up sharply to free himself from the protagonist's grasp. Chin looked in front of him. He noticed the sniper's hand suddenly exploded in his hands. The fighter jumped up and began firing his automatic weapon at his opponent. The sniper kept shooting at the guy. There was a very large explosion and a cloud of fire appeared around him. The fighter was unhappy because the protagonist dared to hit him. Chin jumped up and shouted to the fighter that he could call him daddy. The protagonist in flight fought off his opponent's attack with logs. The sniper stopped firing. He realized he saw a high-level devil in front of him. Chin was able to fend off the opponent's attack with a log in his hands. The protagonist noticed more fighters around. He realized the sniper had accomplices. Soldier approached the protagonist and suggested he discuss everything as members of the same race. Chin swung around to hit the stranger on the head with his baton. The protagonist was beating a fighter with a baton and yelled that he had nothing to talk to him about. Chin beat the strangers spitefully with sticks. They shouted fearfully that they were civilized fellows. The protagonist kept beating his opponents with logs. He got a chance to earn some energy for himself. One of the fighters shouted to the protagonist to stop. Chin was still swinging the timbers. The protagonist looked around in surprise and noticed that he couldn't see anyone else around him. The gunman told the protagonist that they could stop everything and talk. Chin replied that he was ashamed to even talk about such a thing. The gunman shouted that he belonged to the Devil Soul Clan. Chin remembered that fighters from such a clan parasitized others and possessed their souls. The protagonist wondered. He didn't understand who might be behind all this. The warriors invited the protagonist to come over to their place. Chin realized that he had been invited to a Hunmen feast. The protagonist stood in front of a group of warriors. They invited him to pass on. Chin said in a disgruntled voice to the fighter, agreeing to talk to him. The protagonist was walking on the estate. A group of warriors were walking in front of him. Chin looked around carefully. He noticed that he was being followed by a group of men. The protagonist approached the office of the village chief. A soldier met him at the entrance. Chin saw an old man in front of him. He was a soul hunter from the Soul Demon Clan. The old man asked the guy where the guy came from and why he had never heard of him. The hunter looked at the guy and noticed that the guy had a weak body. The hunter was pouring green tea into a cup. He told his companion that there were not many demons in the area. He had only heard of one. The old man looked angrily at the protagonist and asked if he had anything to say to him. Chin looked at the hunter with great attention. He studied him carefully. Chin looked at the old man with great attention. He noticed that the old man's aura had become stronger. He realized that the hunter might have decided to make a direct confrontation. A huge green demon kicked the door open. He asked the warriors, how on earth could they let the horned devil finish them off like that? The demon regarded the protagonist with amazement. He called him by the name Da Wa. Chin turned to the monster in surprise and asked, didn't that one die? Chin thought to himself that after visiting the labyrinth of space and time, he had become much stronger. The members of his race were aware of that. The warrior ran up to the demon Boka and wanted to explain everything to him about the current situation. The monster shouted angrily to the warriors that the guy alone could handle them all. One of the fighters demanded from the demon to avenge them. Chin looked at the green demon with great attention. The latter remained silent in response. The monster waved his hand at the warriors and said he had some business to attend to. He wanted to leave. Chin approached the demon from behind and grabbed him by the neck. He wanted Boka to tell him how he was doing. The protagonist looked at the demon with great attention. He studied it closely. Chin rubbed the monster's head in different directions and demanded that he call him daddy. The old man cheerfully told the guy and the demon that they already knew each other. The hunter asked that Boke introduce him for the main character. Chin released the demon from his arms. Boka prepared to tell the old man who the guy was. The demon told the old man that the protagonist was his former boss. He had fought with him against the humans. The old man told the guy in a calm voice that they could help him, and it didn't matter at all what side he was on. The main character smiled at the hunter and said there was no need for help. He explained that he was a great demon of desire and a demon of decapitation. Chin held out his hand to the old man and demanded that he pay him. He explained that he didn't work for nothing. The hunter replied to the guy that he would pay him if he helped them carry out their plan. The old man told the protagonist that the demon Boka would be able to show him around. Chin and the monster headed for the exit. The main character was walking with his companion. The countryside was all around them. Chin looked around with great attention. He noticed that there were no people around. The main character was walking down the street with the monster. No one got in their way. Chin glanced to the side and noticed the silent people. He thought it was the work of a soul hunter. The protagonist stopped in the middle of the street. 
he knew that the only way to kill the Soul Hunter was to kill everyone present. Chin took the phone in his hands. He decided to report everything to the Academy. The guy hoped that someone would help him understand the situation. The commander was hiding in one of the houses with his soldiers. The teacher was looking carefully at the street. There were young boys beside him. Out of the blue, a man got a text message on his phone. He decided to look at it. The commander tells his men that the situation has changed. They are trapped and must retreat. The guy told the teacher that they had just arrived. The man yelled to the guys to run, and they could discuss everything on the way. The commander went to the door. That's when the lightning flew inside the house. The teacher covered himself with his hands. Magic pink balls were flying around him. The master activated his skills. A blue defense against pink lightning appeared around him. The man was standing outside. He was in a blue dome and defending himself against enemy spells. The master sent huge chunks of blue debris against his opponents. The sniper was frightened. He looked around and saw dangerous debris flying at him. The demon angrily said it was a nasty ploy. The sniper sat fearfully on the earth. The monster noticed as shards began to slam into his body at full speed and wound him. At one point a wall from the house was knocked out and clouds of dust rose up all around. A man ran out of the hole along with the soldiers. The sniper angrily shouted to his associates to rush off in pursuit of the boys. A man, accompanied by his charges, was speeding through the woods. A huge crowd of demons ran through the forest after the boys to catch up with them. The teacher excitedly shouted to his students to keep going. The man noticed a bullet flying at his head. He figured he wouldn't have time to worry about his students anymore. The man was startled to see a bullet fly straight at his head at the last moment. To save himself, the teacher activated a skill called Mind Defense. For further battle, the commander activated a magic skill called the Thousand Feathered Bird. Little blue birds appeared in the sky. They flew off in different directions. The teacher stood in the center. The magic power scattered his opponents to the sides. The students looked around among themselves in surprise. They noticed the beaten demons lying around. The man shouted to the students not to turn around and hurry up and run. The teacher stayed behind to continue fighting against the demons. The boys were running away at full speed. A student yelled that they couldn't let the teacher down. Another guy said they had to go back to the academy and report what had happened. The running boys noticed a suspicious figure in the woods. They stopped. The main character watched the students with great attention from behind the trees. The guy shouted to his friends to defend themselves. Chin came out from behind the trees and told the students his name. He said that he was on their side. The guy looked at the protagonist with surprise. He repeated his name to himself. He repeated his name. A student told his friend that the protagonist was giving an embarrassing speech to the freshman. Chin told the disgruntled guys that he was leaving and that they could get out on their own. The student held out his hand after the protagonist and demanded that he not leave. The main character told the guys that he was very hurt by their words. He demanded that they comfort his heartache. Chin demanded 500 per person from the students. The boy answered him with a smile that he agreed. The main character got the money into his email account through a transfer on his phone. Chin ran forward at full speed. He called his new acquaintances with him. The protagonist stopped. He heard something suspicious near him. The students saw the teacher beside them. The man was standing and leaning on his sword. The protagonist demanded a thousand for saving the teacher. He charged five hundred for the students. The man asked the students who it was in front of him. The guy replied that a freshman representative named Chin Yu was standing in front of them. The master bowed to the protagonist and said that he had heard a lot about him. Chin replied with a smile to the man that money speaks much better than words. The students looked at the teacher in amazement. He staggered the guy with his knife. The master shoved a large blade into the back of the protagonist from behind. The man held his blade in his hands. He explained to the students that the Chin Yu in front of them appeared to be fake. Instead of the main character's body, there was a multicolored monster lying there. The teacher explained that the real Chin Yu was elsewhere at this time gathering information. A student picked up a man. He said they could only rely on themselves. The guy suddenly pulled out a blade and stabbed the teacher in the front of his chest with it. The students in the back were frightened. They fearfully called out to their teacher. The boy angrily thanked the teacher for the valuable information. The man shouted that the soul hunter in front of him was a soul hunter. The students around them were frightened. They didn't know what they would do without a commander. The guy turned angrily to the students and said, The protagonist accompanied by demon was walking down the street. Chin looked at his phone. Chin read the report that the advance team had been completely destroyed. The protagonist looked away. He noticed that the number of demons that were following him had doubled. His identity had been revealed. Chin steps to the side. He thought to himself that he had gotten hold of key information. He needed to wait for an opportunity to escape and let the academy handle it all. Half an hour later, there was a huge explosion. It was a military convoy moving. Military vehicles were driving along the road. Armed soldiers were in the front. 
There was a powerful explosion. The protagonist ran frightened away. Other demons were fleeing all around. Chin received a message that the village would be destroyed. He needed to find a safe haven. The protagonist looked away with great excitement. He noticed the demon decided to hide in the hatch. Chin ran at full speed to the hatch where the boca was about to descend. The protagonist strictly commanded himself that he could not give up. Chin prepared to go down the hatch. There were explosions and destruction all around. There were bodies everywhere. The soldiers ran forward. Chin managed to take cover just in time. The main character was walking through a dungeon. It was lit by torches on the walls. In front, Shigal Bo Ka. Chin presented the knife to the demon's throat and asked him what he was looking for here. The demon told the protagonist that he had come here on his advice. Chin had told him himself earlier that there was a secret passage in this place. The protagonist was surprised. He didn't remember telling the demon about it. Chin hesitated. He suspected that someone was controlling the green monster. Chin rushed towards the demon with his knife. He shouted that he was about to put him out of this torment. Boke stood very frightened. The protagonist felt that Boke's body had become emotionless. The protagonist was surprised to feel the green demon's body begin to fall off. Chin heard something suspicious from the side. He turned to the side. The protagonist noticed the soul hunter approaching him from behind. The hunter asked with interest to the protagonist, did the man pretend to kill the demon just to lure it out? Chin looked at his opponent unhappily and said that this was exactly how he had planned it. The hunter looked at the protagonist and said that now they could reveal the cards. The protagonist looked at the hunter and asked if he was the one who wreaked havoc upstairs and killed the people from the academy. More monsters started to come around. The hunter smiled at the protagonist and said that he had no intentions of fighting the people from the academy. Gradually, more and more demons began to approach. The hunter told the protagonist that an idiot had put them in danger because of his actions. The hunter shouted angrily that he had a chance against his opponent. The hunter explained that if he gets the main character's body, he will add his abilities to it. After that, he will get himself a place in the devil world. Chin's body was wearing protective armor. He told his opponent that he disapproved of his desire for his body. The hunter told the protagonist that he was purposely stalling so that reinforcements could arrive. He added that he would not wait for them. The protagonist was surprised. He looked around with great interest. Chin noticed a bright purple glow appear under his feet. The hunter told the protagonist that he had prepared a special magic circle for him. It would speed up the enslavement of his body. The protagonist realized it was pointless to wait for rescue. He decided to start fighting. Chin rushed to attack the demons and began to scatter them in all directions. The hunter looked at the protagonist and told him to become one with him. The protagonist pounded his opponent with all his might with the claws on his hand. Half of the hunter's body was left. He told the protagonist excitedly that he was an immortal. Chin noticed with great excitement how he was surrounded by demons. He was very scared. The protagonist threw the monsters apart with a very powerful magical blow. The monsters tried attacking the protagonist. The hunter shouted to the guy that his skills were much stronger. He demanded that Chin surrender. The protagonist looked angrily at his opponent and asked what the latter had said. Chin squeezed a few monsters with his hands and asked the hunter, Would it be enough? The hunter looked angrily at the protagonist and said that he was liking him more and more. The protagonist struck the demons around him with powerful arm strikes to the sides. Chin swung around and attacked one of his opponents with a powerful sidekick. The guy stood looking at his hand. The hunter asked him with interest, had he killed all the demons? The protagonist didn't realize what had happened. Suddenly he hit himself in the face with his own hand. The guy got worried. He realized that one of his hands was no longer obeying him. Chin looked at his hand with excitement. The hunter asked the guy, has he lost control of his hand? The protagonist excitedly noticed a purple outline appear on his hand. Chin looked at his hands with excitement. He asked the hunter, What is this ability? Suddenly his hand stopped obeying the protagonist and began to twist in all directions. Chin felt very exhausted. He told himself that it was all tiring for him. The protagonist's whole body was pink. He felt his strength leaving him. Chin saw the outline of the demon in front of him. He felt his eyes darken. The protagonist collapsed exhausted on the ground. He was lying in a pool of blood. The hunter angrily shouted to the protagonist that he had finally gotten his soul. The hunter started draining energy from the guy's body. He said that after capturing the soul, Chin's body would also belong to him. The protagonist was lying in the center of the room. There were demon bodies all around. The hunter said that he was about to see what Chin feared more than anything else. The main character opened his eyes. He felt he was alive. He didn't know where he was. Chin abruptly jumped up from on top of the bed and shouted about the soul hunter. The boy looked around in surprise. He realized he was in his own home. The protagonist was groping his body. He realized that everything he'd seen was a dream. Chin turned around and heard some noise outside the door. The woman was yelling for someone to stop! The guy listened. An unfamiliar female voice was shouting to the man that she shouldn't have married him. The system reported that no one is born stupid and no one is born evil. In a house where there is no love, 
Only quarrels live. Chin stood by the door and listened. The woman shouted to her husband that she wouldn't live with him if it weren't for the baby. Chin shouted to the system that he wouldn't read her messages. He thought he didn't have an unhappy childhood. The door suddenly opened and the protagonist's mother appeared on the doorstep. The woman grabbed the guy's arm and told him they had to leave. She pulled him behind her. Chin stopped. He said judiciously, this is all soul hunter tricks. The main character was holding his mother's hand. He told the hunter that his memory is very fuzzy. It seems to him that everything that happened was a dream. The boy is not sure if Aunt Yuna and the others really exist. Chin gripped the woman's hand even harder. He decided to stop Yi didn't go any further with her. The woman turned around and reminded the protagonist that she was his mother. Chin said angrily to his mother. He remembered well those who had called him trash for years. The woman completely froze. She was looking somewhere off to the side and didn't see the guy. The protagonist was surprised to see the world around him begin to shatter. He stood and held the hand of the soul hunter. Chin looked angrily at his opponent and said that he had caught him. He held his hand up to him. The hunter inquired with surprise at the lad. Is the latter not afraid of him? Chin swung around to strike his opponent. He didn't like that the hunter was using him. The protagonist knocked his opponent to the ground. The hunter couldn't understand why the guy wouldn't obey him. The hunter realized that his strength was almost at an end. He decided that he needed to retreat and come up with a new plan. The evil spirit emerged from the man's body. The spirit began to rise up. The main character remained seated at the bottom along with the hunter's body. He told the protagonist to calm down because the soul hunter was no longer here. Chin looked at the guy's battered body. He asked grudgingly to the monster, had the hunter escaped? The protagonist turned to the side and asked grudgingly to the demon. So why did he let the hunter get away? Bokeh looked at the guy and told him reassuringly that they were all in on it. The protagonist rushed to the demon and said that he was his worst enemy named Chin Yu. The monster was surprised when he heard Chin Yu's name. The warrior told the woman that three squads had searched the place, but none of them had seen Chin Yu. It looked like the boy wasn't here. Yuna asked her subordinate to look around again. The female students walked around looking for the guy. Xiao Xiao kept shouting the main character's name loudly. Yu Li turned around and asked excitedly, Will everything be alright with Chin Yu? Tian looked dreamily in front of her and said that the main character's body would belong to her. The girl turned to the side. She saw a nurse helping some injured guy into a car. The nurse was helping the guy move. The warrior was barely on his feet. Tian ran up behind the nurse and threatened her with her huge knife. The girl angrily demanded of the nurse that she let the guy go. The nurse explained in a frightened voice to her interlocutor that she had only been invited here. A woman approached. She asked the girl what was going on here. She replied thoughtfully that something was wrong. Yuna explained to the warrior that she's a member of the Mantis tribe. You can trust her when it comes to intuition. Tian pointed her weapon at the guy. She said menacingly for him to put down his weapon or they would shoot. The nurse told the girl in a frightened voice that she had finished her training and was here for an internship. The thrust girl looked at the guy with a very angry and studying look. The girl swung around and stabbed the warrior through the back with her sword. The warrior didn't expect to be attacked. He turned around and asked angrily to the girl, so why did she hit him? The Tian looked angrily at the guy and said he should have given up. A spirit came out of the guy's body. He told the girls that they were even willing to sacrifice their comrades. The thrall supported the boy with her hand. She explained that she had missed a bit. If it wasn't for the bystanders, she wouldn't have let the hunter get out of here alive. The hunter spirit angrily looked at the girl and said that she was as ruthless as Chin Yu. The woman got very excited when she heard the main character's name. Yun inquired angrily to the spirit, Where is Chin Yu now? The protagonist was strangling a demon in a cave at the time. Girls appeared at the side. They demanded that Chin let the monster go. Yuna came closer. She examined the protagonist with great attention. Xiao Xiao came over and hugged the guy. At the side of the protagonist came Tian Liang. The battered Boka said in a cheerful voice to the girls that it was very good that they had come. The demon wanted to tell how the protagonist had beaten him. At this time, from the side in flight, his foot tapped Yu Li. The girl shouted at the monster to be quiet. The main character was standing next to a woman. They watched as a white car pulled up next to them and arrested the demon. Yuna told the guy he did a great job. Chin replied grudgingly to the woman that it was a very weak compliment for his contribution. Yuna turned aside and thought. She was deciding how she could thank the guy. The woman took the hand of the surprised protagonist and said it was all for him. The main character was traveling with his companions on a bus. The woman told the guy that he was following the fights closely. Chin looked at his hand carefully. Two small clots of red and blue energy floated above it. Yuna gave the main character two energy lightning bolts during her farewell. The woman explained to the protagonist that demons are grown on these energy clots. She got them just for him. The protagonist was overjoyed. He rushed with open arms to hug the woman. Yuna stopped the protagonist with her hand and demanded sternly that he stop. Chin clenched both energies in his hand. 
he decided for himself that from now on, Yuna would be his biological mother. The protagonist looked at his hand. He had soul erosion and flesh transformation in the palm of his hand. Chin looked at the system's message. The guy thought that he was now invincible in terms of parasitism. The protagonist had a sly thought. He decided to try soul erosion on himself. Chin activated soul erosion. He noticed a strange image of a woman in front of him. The guy thought frustratedly to himself that he didn't need to do that. Chin looked away. He realized that he could find another purpose for training. The guy looked at the girl in front of him. He decided that members of the warrior races must be resistant to mental attacks. Chin looked at the throng carefully. He decided to himself that he was choosing this girl. The protagonist launched a mental signal into his girlfriend's head. Chin concentrated. He decided to see what was in store for Tian's soul. The protagonist distinctly saw the girl sitting seductively and calling to him. Chin opened his eyes very frightened. He didn't expect to see such a thing in his girlfriend's soul. Tian told the side disgruntled guy that her husband was very impatient. The girl turned to the guy and said she wasn't really interested in that sort of thing. She promised to support him. The main character gently shoved his girlfriend away from him. He explained to her that he'd seen it all in a comic book. Chin turned to the girl and wondered, how on earth did she figure it out? Tian looked at her knife. She said that the Mantis tribe had been practicing spiritual training since childhood. Suddenly the bus came to an abrupt stop on the road. Strangers shouted at the passengers to hand over all valuables. Armed men in fighting vehicles were standing in the street. The soldier shouted to the people to get off the bus while he counted to three. The fighter began to count. The soldiers were armed and had masks with smiles on their faces. The woman told her subordinates that they were facing a team of smiling masks. Everyone needs to prepare for battle. Chin looked anxiously at the street. He asked the girl who the people in front of them were. She explained to the boy that they were a rebel organization. In addition to smiling masks, there were also crying masks. The main character heard the count of three. At that time, someone grabbed him by the arms and pulled him outside. Chin was frightened and surprised. He noticed an unfamiliar soldier pulling him along by his clothes. The fighter carried the protagonist over his head in his arms. He said they were about to deal with one. Chin turned around and pointed the powerful photon weapon in his hand at the soldier. There was a very powerful explosion near the bus. The soldier was killed instantly. Chin looked at the warrior's body. He said in a joyful voice that he didn't plan to kill anyone today. The soldier raised his hand up. He shouted to his subordinates to all go on the attack. The commander instructed the soldiers to grab the protagonist's hands as quickly as possible. Chin found himself surrounded on all sides. The protagonist noticed soldiers with masks and weapons crowding around him. One of the warriors shouted grudgingly to the protagonist to move. Chin turned around and inquired with a smile to the soldiers if they were done. The protagonist suddenly grew a few extra arms. He started using them to fight off the soldiers. Chin had a huge flamethrower in one of his hands. He prepared to kill his opponents. The protagonist looked angrily at the soldiers and told them to never loosen their grip. Chin began to burn his opponents with fire. He used the human vortex against them. A pillar of fire appeared around the protagonist. The soldiers looked at him fearfully. The girls on the bus watched the actions of the protagonist with excitement. The woman offered the student a chance to try her hand at it. She replied that she would not kill without money. Yuna looked very carefully from the bus to the street. She noticed something interesting. The woman said excitedly to the girls to get ready for the second lesson. Yuna told the excited students that there was a level 6 master among the soldiers. Girls watched the battle in the street with great attention and consternation. A huge and predatory tiger appeared. He threw the protagonist into the sky with a powerful paw. The predator was armed. He was heading for Chin to finish him off. The tiger looked at the protagonist lying on his hand on the palm of his hand. Chin, very scared in return, also looked at him. The protagonist looked away excitedly. He realized that the girls were coming to help him. The girls stood side by side and got ready to fight. Yuli said it was time for the second lesson. They would engage in real combat and work as a team. Chin raised his huge demonic palm. The tiger told the girls that he would see if they could stay alive. She yelled at the predator. She yelled at him to keep his mouth shut. The predator looked calmly at his opponent. He defended himself against her attack with a special field. The tiger threw the girl far back with a very powerful kick of his leg. The tiger swung around and finished the girl with a punch. Everything around him burned with bright flames. Chin looked fearfully at his girlfriend. At this time, the other girls rushed to help Tian. The predator thought the kid's abilities were strange. He decided to deal with the girls first. The tiger snatched the stick from his rival's hands and shouted for her to attack him. The predator threw the girl aside with a very powerful leg kick. The tiger jumped up high. He noticed that another rival was sitting on the ground below. The predator prepared to attack. Xiao Xiao sat at the side. She shouted to her opponent not to even think about it. The raptor tore forward and punched the wall with him as he attacked. Greenish lightning bolts appeared around the raptor. A woman ran from the side and shouted, She's got it! The predator hesitated. 
He realized grudgingly to himself that he might have walked into a trap. The tiger decided to retreat. He kicked his foot off the ground and started to back up. The predator noticed a thrall standing across from him in the distance. There were green lightning bolts around the girl. The protagonist appeared at the side. He shouted to the predator that he was waiting for him. The tiger silently turned to the side. The protagonist prepared to attack it. The protagonist jumped up above his opponent to chop him over the head. Chin sliced the predator's body in half with a powerful overhead kick. The tiger had no time to defend itself. The main character was standing next to his girlfriends. There was a huge explosion behind them. Chin turned around and asked, Where did the explosion come from? She told him it was her doing. The woman looked at her satisfied charges. She told them cheerfully that it had gone well. Chin stood on the stage with his girlfriends during the award ceremony. The instructor said the students were able to foil the enemy's plans and break through their ambush. The main character stood on the stage and looked in front of him. He said to himself, Does he really need all this? A group of students said grudgingly that the freshman appeared to be very brash. Three days later, the protagonist was walking near a fence. He noticed strangers in front. The guy looked at the protagonist and asked angrily if he was going to accept their challenge. The main character looked in amazement at the beast-like people in front of them. He asked one of them what kind of animal was that. The dogman got very angry. The student told the guy that the main character likes to piss everyone off. You can't fall into his trap. The protagonist looked at his opponents and said they'd have to pay to fight him. The student said cheerfully, His name is Kun Chi from the Peacock Tribe. He is a level 4 warrior. Chin examined his opponent with surprise. He knew that all of Kun Chi's peers were at the third level. The student thoughtfully told the protagonist that they had come to him to ask for advice. Xiao Qi said grudgingly that if the protagonist had abilities, he should accept the challenge. Chin asked his companions, do they want to meet him in the ring? He thought to himself that the students had come to restore their reputation. Kun Chi looked unhappily at the protagonist and asked, did he get scared? The protagonist exhaled disappointedly. He decided to agree to the students' demands. Chin told his interlocutors in a disgruntled voice that he would not be able to pay their medical bills. Students were surprised to hear from the main character that he had no money at all. Xiao Qi was very angry. He angrily lunged at the protagonist. Kun Qi told the guy judiciously that they would fight to the death. The student told the protagonist that the first to get rid of his opponent would win. Chin replied thoughtfully that he would have to fight to the death. Kun Qi revealed that the academy had dangerous missions for students to hunt orcs. Such missions would be perfect for battle. Chin was interested when he heard about the hunt. He asked his interlocutor who would be the target. Kun Chi replied to the protagonist that he could ask his teammates about it. The protagonist looked at the students. He said he would only have to deal with them. He wouldn't need partners. The students were very angry. They were unhappy because the main character didn't understand them. Kun Chi said unhappily their freshmen were not only strong but also cocky. There were many people on Hanmu Street. The announcement was made that the target of the hunters was a martial arts master. He was last seen at the Redwood Bar on Hanmu Street. The narrator said that the owner of the bar knows the protagonist well, so he might have the right information. Chin went into the bar and asked if there was anyone alive inside. Chin opened the door wide. There were no people inside the bar and there was complete silence. The guy excitedly demanded a bottle of vintage water from the bartender. Raven behind the counter poured water into a cup and told the protagonist to leave. The bartender handed the guy a cup and told him this place wasn't right for him. Chin picked up the cup. He told the bartender that in this world, not even women's restrooms and bathhouses would stop him. The raven looked angrily at the protagonist and told him to get lost, or else Chin would be in trouble.